Perf, 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 Hello? Huh? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. 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 Nice. Can go fuck yourself. Okay. Mr. No Signal. Okay. Fuck you. Bitch. Your skin looks really healthy today with all those colors? I don't know what that means. I don't know what that means. I lotioned my feet today. <laughs> the no signal screen. It was a lame joke. That was a joke? Minecraft villager trading noises. Have you spent more time playing while or coding a tool to play optimally? Okay. Th okay, that's just an attack on my integrity. Okay. Um, I I play video games and enjoy them. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I missed yesterday's stream. Did we win yet? Yeah, we absolutely won. We won so good. We're so smart, chat. Min-maxing, what's that? I don't know. <laughs> mm-hmm. 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 Jan, pull up. You had to be a snuff. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. 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 What? How did that how did that remove itself? Well that sucked. I I said that's a shame. How did that happen? 
How did it remove itself? That's 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 an interesting uh nature of that script. <laughs> <laughs> That's a that's an interest that's a new one to me. <laughs> RMRF included. Hmm. I see the star there. That's not that's not great to be honest. How did that script work before? <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What do you think about Concolic Execution? Eh, I don't know. I've been pretty underwhelmed with most of it. Um, I think it's fine. I don't know. It's okay. It's passable. Are you a five start programmer? Uh, I don't know. Wait, how is that? How is that failing to build? Oh, Depths is its own folder now? I see. Ah. Ah. Okay. Uh. Home. Pleb. Snuffles. This is dot dot slash. And this is probably dot dot slash. Pretty sure you're missing a plushie? I did. I did. Um. Hmm. That's back two directories. All right. That means that uh, Neon, you get to be a cinnamon bun. <laughs> Are you a five star programmer? Five start programmer? Like, do I, do I define five entry points to my code? Something like that. <clears throat> What's happening right now? Someone wanted this WoW replay thing, and then I just deleted the whole thing on accident. Have you started using mold? Yeah, although it doesn't work entirely with incremental builds, which is strange. Um, yeah, let's just do non... Beautiful. Okay, let's uh, switch the map. Um, enough dependencies to make NPM blush. <laughs> it's pretty fucking true. Uh, what do I want? Where is the dumps? No. Uh, find dot dot slash. Grep on garage real time data on. Ooh, which one is it? Is it the temple? I think it's the temple. Find grep. What, what else should I do? What's wrong with find grep? Find grep is perfect. Do you have any opinion on Neovim? I I don't see a strong use for it over um over just Vim, but I'm I'm sure there's good reasons if you customize your editor. But I don't customize my editor, so it just doesn't really matter. Uh, molten molten core. I don't know how to spell this. There it is. Find name? That's literally more typing. <laughs> it's literally more typing. <laughs> what about rip grep? I mean, rip grep is hot shit. Rip grep is the hottest shit. Okay? 
Where's the map? There it is. Uh, and I think we did it. Beautiful. That looks pretty good. Um, kind of wish that I didn't delete the other version because I lost like six months of diffs. I, I don't even know how I fucked that up, to be honest. But I don't think I even have a saved version of this. I could try and undelete files. Ooh, I have Git. Okay, when was the last time I updated Git on that? Probably forever ago. Git log. Mm-hmm. 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 Uh, looks like never. Okay, that's good. I could try and undelete them. Uh... Let's see. Let's see. Hmm. Hmm. Reminds me, uh, I need to commit before I doze off. Hell yeah. I can't believe that script failed. Oh, we'll try foremost. Rip all my code. I think mold only makes a difference for large executables and object files. Yeah, so it's actually really huge for anything that uses Wujupu, WGPU. Uh, it's like pretty mandatory for anything that uses it. But let's see if we can find this code. I, I bet this doesn't do shit, dude. These forensic tools, they like never work. Uh, dev nvm e o n one p. I don't know, probably p p three. Mhm. Mm okay. Mhm. Mm I see. I see. I see. Mm hmm. Okay. Why does this just not run? Configuration file? Do I need a configuration file? Well, this, well, this blog is useless. Do these even work on SSDs? Probably not. Um, let's see. Does it need a configuration file? Why do Why do you need a configuration file? That's That's dumb. Dash I. Hmm. Yeah, I think this just doesn't work. Uh, <laughs> image deselect that. Okay, that just that just requires some complex stuff. Uh, let's try another one. <laughs> I doubt it will work because I'm using XFS. All these things probably only work on like ext4. It's really only one file that has all the code in it. I got absolutely scammed. Absolutely scammed. Where's the undorm command? WGPU users in Windows suffer? Really? Why is that? Oh, because uh, you have to use the built-in linker or whatever it is. Okay, let's try test disk. Test disk. Uh, pseudo test disk. Uh-huh. Uh, okay. Uh-huh. Hmm. Uh, GPT? Mm-hmm. That's gonna recover partitions. That's useless. Uh, okay. Hmm. Mm 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, that just doesn't support XFS. Okay, I guess we lost that code. That's fine. We'll just rewrite it sometime. <laughs> uh, you know, if you really want to undelete something, you should really unmount the disk. XFS undelete? Ooh, what's this? What's this? Uh, get clone this. Okay, let's try this. Uh, uh, hmm. Okay, it's a script. Uh, okay, I'll just run it. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Uh, can't find package CMD line. What is this? What is this language? T TCL? Hmm. Uh, TCL SH. How do I install a TCL package? <laughs> Who writes things in Tickle? <laughs> Who the fuck does this? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm, sudo emerge ask TCL lib. Okay, that's a thing. Let's see. I think that just installs packages. All right, we're going to do that. <laughs> Back to the 80s. Yeah, dude. What the shit is this, dude? Every FPGA and ASIC design is uh, tickle environments. Yeah. Yeah, this is kind of this is kind of unpog. It needs TCL lib. Okay, we're getting TCL lib. <laughs> You can give it a time spec. You can give it file types. Dude, I'm curious if this shit will work, dude. Back. Got work to do. Please specify a block device. Uh, uh, we can do T minus one hour dev NVMe O N one P two P three P three. Uh, permission denied. This isn't an XFS file system. Hmm. Uh, hmm. Ah, that's true. That's VFAT. Okay, okay. It's P2, P2. Woo! Woo! Uh, your output directory is this. Mm, what is this? What is this shit? Uh, it's this. Undeleted. This isn't feasible, as it would overwrite the deleted files you wanted to recover. Oh, and another file system? Ah, I see. Temp, uh, mooses. Hmm. Is that not what I told it? Uh, okay. Oh, it's the ordering probably matters. Dev NVM E O N one P two. Uh is temp Oh, is that not temp? Okay. Pseudo mount T tempfs tempfs uh mount mount two. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's so picky. P two Temp. Will this work, chat? Raise your poggers if you think it'll work. Mount, mount, two. Oh. I don't want to, though. I don't wanna. I, I, want, I wanna do that. <laughs> I don't wanna do that. You have to reboot to a USB? That's a scam! <laughs> Oh, no remount read only? Oh, fuck yeah. That's what I like to see. Uh. 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 I understood that. Let's see what we get. Let's see what we get. 
I said minus one hours. Oh, there's an LZ4 in there. And before it nukes the file system. Dude, I'm, I bet this is going to work. I bet this is going to work, chat. 100% this is going to work. Uh, uh, what am I looking for? CD mount, mount to uh, <laughs> RG for uh, dump units. This is, is this the, is this the make file? No, I don't know what this is. Oh, that's a history. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I like it's doing stuff. I said minus one hour. Now file system is corrupted. I bet this will work just fine. I don't know if it will know what a, a rust file is. Oh! What's, what's this? Oh, that's, that's looking pretty good. That's got, that's got Wujupu in it. <laughs> oh, is this the Cargo Tamil? Yes. That's why replay. Okay. <laughs> Woo! Uh... <laughs> Wow, replay, uh, wow, replay. Uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. Uh, okay, uh... Yeah, and this is the Tommel. Yeah, this is definitely the Tommel. Uh, make their source. Okay. So now we need to get the main. Come on. Oh, one second door. Okay, okay. Did it work? Did it work? 
It'll work. Where's my, where's my code? It says it's done. Where's my code? <laughs> Shit. Did we get scammed? I'm going to get rid of the T minus one hour thing. Let's see what happens here. I don't think it knows what a C file is. Or an, uh, an RS file is. Understood. Now let's see if we got more shit. Come on. Come on. We're getting scammed. I'm getting scammed. Uh, 2060p isn't ideal for the encoding setup. Is optimized for 1080p screens. Yeah. Should look fine on 4K. Yep. RG FN main. I mean, that's gonna that's gonna have like a million things. I should have dump units. Maybe I don't. I I told you there'd be a lot of FN mains. <laughs> uh, what I probably need is hmm. We did update it to have that file name, right? So this would be in there. That's pretty. That's pretty unique. Uh, hmm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I think also it would have a folk VBO. Oh, here's the make file that deleted everything. I guess full... Oh, it's because I had spaces here. I see. We had spaces here and here. I see. And the existence of those spaces means that there's a space here, and that was actually delete star. Ah. The more you know. I see. <laughs> Sick. That's a good one. I like that. That's a fun one. Mm hmm. Bash be like that is technically a make file, Omaheath. Yeah, fucking dunce. <laughs> but yeah, I would have this or Folk VBO in it. Well, we're running it without the T one hour because I don't think that one hour thing did anything. So we'll see what happens now. And maybe we get a slightly older one. <laughs> Make me smart. It's smart. It's loyal. You know? All right. Uh, let's see. So I guess that's going to take probably forever to run. Uh, chat, let's get an over-under on whether or not that's going to work. But we did get the... We, get, we did get the Cargo Tommel. That's definitely the latest version of that. I mean, it still doesn't change much. I don't know what I was using Saturday for. Oh, I think I do know what I was using Saturday for. Uh, we got the make file back. And this was the... Oh, this is a slightly older make file. Because uh, it had a different date in here. But, uh, you know. But yeah, that's... It was copying in that, so this file has to exist in the... In the rust. Do a dry run just in case. Well, it's running. It's at 12% of checking inodes. I don't know. This script actually works pretty well. I mean, there's a... I don't know. We just wrote to that file. I don't know if that helps or hurts. Let's make a channel poll. I want to gamble, gamble some of my hard-earned points. Uh, okay, we'll say... Uh, it's a prediction. It's not, it's not a poll. It's a prediction. Start a prediction. And it's gonna be, uh... Okay, we had a, we've done a lot of predict. This is will I get my code back? And we'll have yes and no. And you got five minutes. <laughs> gamble, gamble away. <laughs> all right. Uh, Let's make a deal. One of us takes all the points and makes him rewrite something. Oh my god, dude. I really don't want to rewrite that code. Even, well, I really do, though. <sighs> Chat? If... What do you mean, don't vote yet? We have to make that deal. I'm not gambling my 71k... What do you... What do you... What do you, what do you need those channel points for, Tilted? You should gamble them. Like, you could... You could double up. You could double up on that. A lot of people saying yes. It's a lot of confidence. This is this is what's happening right now. Um. 
So we'll, we'll see. We're gonna let that run until completion before we uh, before we rip grep for it. Okay. <laughs> We're gonna edge. <laughs> I don't know if this is like the modification time. I went all in with 10k. Oh my god, edge monkas. Did I say edge? Ah, shit. That probably shouldn't be in my vocabulary, but uh, I've been saying that for a long time. I mean, it's very fitting. <laughs> Let's see if I can cue something up on the playlist here. I've never tried to add things to a playlist. Let's learn how I use this tool. Uh, I can, there's like space, backspace is play, P is pause, S is stop. Um, uh, answer is play selected item, C is clear playlist. Move selected item, add item to playlist. Cap A. Uh, okay, let's try that. Bam. No, I don't want it. No, what, what? What? Lowercase A, add it to the end of the playlist. Oh, I did it! I did it! How do I remove above in the playlist? Uh, mm. You're missing out on all the fun. Uh, let's see. I want to do... Keys playlist. C is clear. C is clear except for selected items. How do I select items? Can I select more than one? Keys playlist, keys global. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Hmm. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh, set priority. I don't know what that does. I can do delete, delete selected items, jump to current. How do you think I select? How do you think I, s I hold shift? I'm guessing those are selected. Uh-huh. Delete. Ho -ho -ho -ho! Ho -ho! Okay. Okay. We're queuing up music now. We're basically a DJ. Uh, we'll throw in some image and heap in there. Add this to the end of the playlist. Ho -ho -ho -ho! Oh, uh, okay, okay, okay. And then some catatonia. We'll do great cold distance after that. Bam. Bam. Look at that. <laughs> Look at that, dude. We're, we're DJs. We're literally DJs. DJ Gamozo. Is that NCMP? <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what it is. It uses MPD, so I can like close it, and I can play win. I can play music like when I exit the program, which is cool because it's just an interface. Um, I use the the fancy new interface. There's like I think I compiled visualizations in here. There's a tag editor visualizer. Hmm. Does it not work? It doesn't look very visualized. Okay. Uh, space is toggle the type. Sound wave. Mm-hmm. 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 Uh, yeah, I don't... I wonder if it has to go to the next song. Did I not build it with that? Mm. 
No, I built it with visualizers. Well, that's just a scam, okay? That's just literally a scam. We'll see if that pops up. It should visualize instantly. Yeah. Yeah, so that's a scam. Literally robbed. I've seen it and it's pr pretty. I've never seen it. I'm pretty sure it doesn't exist. It's written in C. No, I'm pretty sure it's written in C++. Hence the C++ in the name. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Cat scam nub. Aww. If I remember, you had the, a special configuration stuff to enable. Yeah, and 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 uh, Gentoo should do that. Did it work? No, we are. We're still waiting for it to complete. We're at thirty-seven <laughs> percent. I don't know what it's doing, but we're at thirty-seven percent. Okay, so you know, just. Stop being so fucking impatient, chat. Just because it's a slow-ass script. No, it's actually pretty fast. I'm pretty impressed with it. Check those eyes, brav. Who you calling brav? Brav. All right, so what do we want to do today? Uh, there's a couple things we want to do today. Uh, one of the things that... Here's what we want to do. This is, uh, this is plans. Uh, we want to add support for non-eye size references, okay? We want to add mutable support for uh, uh, local pools. Um, I have that offline, but we're just going to rewrite that. We need to write a, uh, a uh, thread safe um, type database. We need to write a uh, type database um, trait so we can disable type databasing uh, at compile time. And then I also up here, this is going to be crazy, we're going to add, um, add minimum alignments of objects as a const generic. Now create Jira stories for all of them, put in estimates. Can I ban him? <laughs> I've been exposed as a doubter. Doubters in chat? We'll see how the prediction goes. Uh, DJ scammed. Do you have enough space for all those files? I mean, I'm putting it on a tempfs. So it's just going in a RAM. Yeah, it's fine, I think. I don't know. I don't know. We got a pink bar. I don't know what the pink means. But we got pink now, so that's good. I don't know. Oh, wait. No, we ran out of space. Hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. <sighs> Can we ban that person too? I'm really sick of this shit. We'll put it on an external device. Shut up, chat! It's not funny! <laughs> We're freeing up RAM. The RAM is getting freed. The RAM is freed. We reclaimed all of our RAM. Uh, okay. Now we can do this. Uh-huh. And then we can do pseudo mounts dev SDA mount mount. Uh make dir mounts mount uh recovery and DHD uh DFH. We have oh we only have 263 gigs on that? Oh my fucking god. Can I free up any space on that? Oh cringe! Uh, mm. I don't know if that's going to be enough, chat. What are this 1.6 Terra? 
Uh, a lot of stuff. Take out the furry porn, that shit free enough. <laughs> it's not that much furry porn. You you think I could fit that on a two tera drive? Just do an arm RF again and then use it. <laughs> uh, let me see if I can find a big drive. Okay, 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 okay. Let's see what we got. Let's see what we got for our selections today. Uh, we got a 500 gig SSD. We've got a... We got a 50 gig SSD. That's not bad. That's a good deal. We got a terabyte SSD. We got a 500 gig SSD. I didn't know I had this many SSDs in storage. We got another Terra SSD. Okay. Uh, we have a 10 terabyte platter. Uh, okay, I have a lot more drives than I thought I had. 
I didn't even know I had all these SSDs. I had no idea I had this many SSDs. I guess we don't need the 10 Terra. I think a 1 Terra SSD is probably sufficient. So we'll grab a 1 Terra SSD. I had no idea. Like, dude, I keep buying SSDs. And I, sure enough, I have like fucking four terabytes sitting around. Okay. Uh, yeah. So we'll, uh, we'll wipe this quick. Let's grab, uh, power. Alright. 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 Do I have right block on? Right block is on. I gotta turn off right block. How do I turn off right block? Which which switch is it? Is there not a label that tells me? Really? Okay. Uh, almost did anything. Oh, wait, right block is off. Right block's on. Right block is off. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, we got this, chat. We got this. We got this. Easy peasy. So for SATA, are you supposed to plug in power or the other one first? Off. So we got DC. They're both plugged in. Turn it on. Let's see what happens. Come on. Detect it. Detect it. Detect the drive. It detected it. Okay, okay, okay. We got this, chat. We got this. 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 Uh... Hmm. Let's see what's on here. Oh, I used this for my mirror for a while. Huh. Yeah, I've got my rust mirror and stuff on here. Cool. Interesting. Okay, we don't need that. BD, IF, Dev0, OF, Dev, SDA, BS1 Meg. There we go. We're wiping it. We're wiping it. Nice shirt, bruv. Hell yeah. Ross mirrored the language of the pa both. Both. Uh, wipe FSA that shit? Nah, nah, nah. DD that shit. SATA should be fully hot pluggable. Yeah, I mean, it should be. <laughs> uh, you mount, mount, mount. Okay, let's see. All right, we're good. Okay, uh, all right. So this is what we want to do. Uh, this minimum alignment thing will be really cool. Uh, so basically the idea is that we could make... Um, 
we could potentially make it so that you can specify a minimum alignment of objects. So if you're going to store like a bunch of U32s, if you say the minimum alignment is four, then you would get uh, two bits back for the, um, for the index. Does that make sense? So basically, it would, it would specify like the shift for the indices, which means that for a U16, you could store 64,000 in 32s, right? Instead of only being able to store uh, that divided by four, 16,000. I don't know why, but I've been hearing the word alignment more often than I used to. Is there a place where I can read issues related with it? Um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. In the case of Apocalypse, you'll still be able to compile its programs. Yeah, exactly. Except, except when I delete all my code. We got scammed today. We got very scammed today. Chat got me flustered. There's a good stack overflow answer. Is it answered by the one dude, Peter Cords, or whoever answers all of the things? All of the assembly or like low level related things? Literally has a monopoly on all of them? Alignment issues? That's a Namacon's job? I. <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. Okay, let's go and figure out how we want to do these generics. So what do we want to add for generics? We want to add a generic. We kind of want to do maybe these three in parallel. Because all of these require adding a generic. We're going to have a lot of generics, okay? But I like generics. I think generics are fantastic. And if you don't like generics, then you're just objectively wrong, okay? Literally your fault. It's answered by Josh Perry. I'm not familiar. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to go, it's really just local pool, Numa pool, and the accessors that have the generics. Uh, so local pool, we're going to give a, uh, a type and this is going to be like the index and this is going to be an indexer. We'll have to make that trait. We'll make the trait right now. Are you ready for this? Trait indexer done. Okay. Hacked. Then, um, We'll say uh, index represents the type to use for uh, references. References pointers, right? Um, you should uh, use the smallest type that allows you to, and we should make these uh, markdown. You should use the smallest type that allows you to index what you uh, allows you to index the mm, I don't know index the number of objects you or I don't know the index the size of the pool you plan to use for example. If you will never exceed four gigabitos, you should use a U32 for an indexer, <laughs> an I32, uh, instead of an I size, as this um, increases the density of the objects in the pool. Does that make sense? I think that's great. Uh, number of bytes the pool can hold, and then we'll have a uh, shift. Okay, and this is going to be, um, is English your first language? Yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he learned C first. That might be true. I wonder how fast this will DD. Host device, data device. That can do IDE as well. It's kind of kind of nifty. Um. Okay. Then we have shift. Uh. This is a uh a shift amount applied to indices. Um. 
for example, if set to zero, all um, uh, objects will have one byte alignments and all bits of the uh, index will uh, must be used for indexing. Um, if set to two, objects will have a four bytes alignments and thus you can index more objects as the index will be shifted by this amount, right? Does that make sense? Basically, the, the goal of that shift is that it allows us to use, like, if we're mainly storing four byte objects, if we're mainly storing like U32s and stuff, which is honestly most use cases, if we set that to two, then we 4x the size, the, the potency of our index, which means that we could index four billion object, four billion U32s with our index compared to being only able to index uh, 512, no, 1024 million objects, right? Okay. So that's basically that design. Um, and those are just constants on that. And what else do we want? What, what else do we want? Anything else we want here? Scammed. Uh, you should. How do I? How do I reformat this? This is gonna suck. Uh, I'll just say. Use the small. There we go. Smallest. <laughs> Bam. I don't need the. You should. It's redundant. Okay. Um, index size and shift. Does that cover everything? No, we also want the database trait. And that has to be here. Uh, okay. Um, uh, TDB, type database. And this is the uh, type database. And then we'll call the other one like a sync type database or something like that. Um, TDB. Uh, the type to use for the type database. Um, a type to use for the type database. Um, if you specify, uh, null DB. Then... Uh, type storage will, uh, type, yeah, type databasing will not occur. Saving some perf if you don't need it. Okay, thoughts? So I'll do a uh, trait type database. We'll have to get rid of this. Uh, okay, and then we'll fill in these traits as we go. Type database, this is just going to be a T. Then you actually specify the size of that database, which is nice. I like this. Uh, so this is TDB. Um, and then this is TDB new. We'll just make it so that's a required method for the type database. Uh, now we have to pull in all of these parameters, and it's about to get wilder, okay? Don't, th don't think that this is like, uh, don't think that this is simple, you know? Uh, because this is about to get very, 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 very generic-y. But I like generics. I think generics are underutilized. I don't think people use generics correctly. Okay, so here we go. Uh, for a local pool with an indexer, a type database, a size, and a shift. Okay. Nice. TDB new, so that will create a new... We'll probably just say TDB default. I think that makes more sense. Um... 
We'll just say that this requires defaults. Well, we'll get to that when it complains. I, I kind of want to see that warning. I like hitting the issues before I add stuff. Uh, then I don't end up leaving stuff behind. How to use generics properly? Uh, use them to generate really good code that's optimized for a specific use case. I use it basically to as like a macro almost. What did I get? Uh -huh. Okay, then the local accessor. Okay, this is about to get exciting, okay? It's about to get very, 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 very exciting. We have size. Uh, okay, so we have index and indexer. It's fine, chat. Uh, we're going to put this size here. We have indexer. We have type database. We have size. We have shift. We have nodes. Okay. This is a local pool of TDB. No. Index, TDB, size, and shift. <laughs> <sighs> I love it. I love it, chat. Do you love it? Do you love it, chat? See, you love it. It's great. It's great. It's fine. Honestly, I might even like do this. Because we have so many fucking generics. I might actually do this. <gasps> Munkas. And pull this. Uh, okay, so then we have index, TDB, size, shift, numa size nodes. I love it. <laughs> Go crazy.org. Uh, risky click of the day. Oh, oh, it's go. I thought that was going to be like fun. I got scammed. Uh, oop. Uh, so. <laughs> Uh, so the new mag, okay, then we have this, uh, index, TDB, size, uh, shift, numa size nodes? Yeah. Yeah, that's simple. It's just that. It's okay, we're not done yet, don't worry. Don't worry, we're not done yet. Um, hmm. Oh, boy, how many things take accessors? Uh, Numa Accessor. Numa Accessor doesn't take more yet. Local Accessor does. The here now. I could maybe move these into their own, like, trade or structure. How do I want to do this? Um... I think what I could do is I could make a trait that contains all these generics, right? Like, that's something I could do. Then these wouldn't be as complex. Does that work? Does that work? It would basically I want to collapse down these. What would I do? I'd make a trait that would define all of these. What are your opinions of unikernels? I think they're great. I think unikernels are hot. Um Right, we can make one trait that then requires all these. Can we do that? Can you do a so with us? We would do it with associated constants and associated types. These would be associated. Can you have trait bounds on associated types? Uh, trait moose. 
And a moose is going to have like a const uh, nodes, const size. These are u sizes. Okay, so this, this will be fine. Yeah, we can definitely do that. That's basic. Then we can do a uh, type foo. Okay, can we say a foo that implements copy? Yes! Yes! Pleb. So if I do this now, um, so basically you would make your own structure, struct, um, params. So you make your own parameters thing, I guess. And then you impl moose for params. And then const nodes u size is four, const size u size is 1024 by 1024. Type foo is a, is a pleb, and this should fail because it's not copy. Yeah. Okay, we can do this. So we can basically make it so we just take in one generic. I like this. This will be way cleaner. <laughs> this will be way cleaner. And we'll probably over generic, like we'll use probably the same trait for both the NUMA and the local allocator. So we'll just have a collection of all the associated constants and types. And this works in stable, which is interesting. But if we derive copy here, this will build just fine. Clone and copy. Okay. You just can't set type foo as T. Oh, up in the trait itself. Yeah. But these are all user controlled things. These are basically the generics. Now, does this work the way that I expect? FN foo, uh, which takes a T that implements moose. Can I use these as constants? Const N u size is equal to t size right like i have to be able to do this uh oh uh oh spaghetti -o. maybe you can't do this can't use generic constants from the outer function let's see if nightly has anything it can do about this So in my case, I want this to be like struct node, which takes in these parameters. Which is moose. Yup. And then for a node, I have to be able to say like backing is a slice. We'll, we'll say like a box slice of u8 or a boxed array of u8 t colon colon size generic constant expressions so that's nightly that's okay we're okay with nightly aren't we yeah we're fine with nightly let's see if this works I'm thinking this allocator might be suitable for ECS. What's ECS? <laughs> okay, so that works. Um, wait, no, unconstrained. Entity component system? I don't know what that is. Where that... 
Unconstrained generic constant. What? What's what? Why is this not okay? Where that? That makes no sense, right? Does it? Let's, uh, let's allow this. Oh, that's not a feature itself. On 22? Missing nodes and size values? But I'm not. Um, T size. Is it like this? I think I know this error. Is this not legal? It's a bug. <sighs> the error message is fake? Really? Um, it's incomplete, blah, 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 would be to specify where that. Like, what is that even for? Like, what? Where that blank on the right? I mean, it tells me what to do. So I guess I do that on the on here. More specifically, I can just do T here. I mean, this builds. Okay. Can I also then do the uh, type DB is a uh, T foo? Okay. Okay. Does that mean when I do impulse, do I need to also do that constraint? T moose uh, node T. Do I need to in include the where clause here? Yes. But at least the user doesn't have to deal with this. I mean, I still think this is better. I think this is still better, right? I still think this is better than having five thousand generics so you'll basically specify the shape of your um you'll specify the shape of your the code you want basically so this is this is more like your this is the like parameters for the code gen which it's okay the user doesn't see the where clauses so that i think it's fine i think it's fine okay raise your hand if you think it's fine Lower your hand if you think it's not fine. It's fine? Okay. That's what I thought. Um...
Okay, so now what we'll do is we'll move all these things and this will be like, uh, what do we want to call this? What do we want to call this trait? Parameters? Is that too generic? We'll call it parameters. I think I'm fine with that. Uh, defines the trait used to generate the uh, um, code for a given uh, user's uh, parameters. Okay, struct parameters. Uh, trait parameters. So what do we need? Now we can just load everything up in here. Uh, const index. This is an indexer. We have a const size. No, that's a type. Um, this is a const size. Um, size of the local pool in bytes. This is the uh, type to use for uh, references, pointers. Uh, the smaller the type, the uh, smaller references are, and thus the denser um, uh, objects can be. Let's open, yeah, let's just do this quick. Git status, git commit, git add this, this, git commit am, uh, save me from my pain. Okay. Uh, all right. Then we're going to go here and we're going to say const numa size, u size, uh, size of the numa pool in bytes. Shift, uh, Numa shift. These are commas, I think. Um, this is the, uh, shift amount applied to indices. Specify this specifies the minimum alignment for objects allocated in the pool, allowing for more bits to be used in the index to uh to uh reference more objects so i have shift um we could do local size and local shift we'll have a local index We're going to have a NUMA index. No, these have to be the same. The shift and the index have to be the same. That makes sense. Uh, we can't have different shifts because we have to be able to just directly transform those. Yeah, I know it's... I know it's ES, okay? Fuck off. Not my fault, this language is a scam. So the index has to be the same size between both databases. Otherwise we can't do the weird overloading thing that we're doing. The shift has to be the same amount. Then we have a local size. We have a type database. Um, so we'll have a, a type local TDB. And this is a type database. Um, uh, type database implementation to use for uh, the local pool. Uh, if set to the uh, null DB, this will um, disable uh, type databasing for uh, this will disable type databasing for the, for the pool. Um, this is, yeah. Okay. Then I'll have a type, uh, NUMA TDB. This is like an atomic type database. Uh, type database implementation to use for the NUMA pool. If set to the 
atomic null db this will disable type databasing for the uh pool okay because those will be different one has to be atomic um basically this will this will require send and sync and this won't what else we have shift we have index uh sweet what else um so the local accessor should have everything id numa id and a indexer the type database the size the shift the numa size oh nodes const numa nodes u size uh number of numa nodes this defines the number of duplicated copies of uh allocations in the numa database and directly uh, and yeah yep numa size numa nodes and i think that covers everything now why does it have to be the same size the uh the shift amount and the index are basically what we use as pointers and you can have pointers to both the numa and local database that are the same type so it has to be the same size that's the only thing that has to be the same size the numa pools the numa pool and the local pool can be different sizes and that's intended such that you can have like a i don't know like i'll probably run like a 128 or like 256 gigabyte numa pool but my local pool will probably be like one gig Basically, the Numa pool ha the Numa pool has to be able to hold like every object I've ever deserialized and stored while fuzzing, and the local pool basically only stores the objects that I've deserialized during like an individual packet, which is like instead of living infinitely, it lives for like a couple milliseconds, and so that's why I want the user to be able to set the sizes of those independently. Can the pointers be shared between the NUMA and local? NUMA, NUMA refs, NUMA pool cannot reference local pool, but local pool can reference NUMA pools because a NUMA pool outlives a local pool, right? So local refs can index either the local pool or the NUMA pool, but the NUMA pool can only ever index the NUMA uh, things. Um, okay. uh that looks good now we have to pull this in uh mod parameters and this is a pub trait so users implement this trait so this is a trait which defines all of the properties that define the shapes um of the uh numa and local uh pool pairings or local and numa and local uh, pools. This allows a user to uh, tune the performance and shape of the pools based on their specific needs. Right? The smaller the pool, the smaller indexer you can use, smaller shifts you can use. Maybe the indexer doesn't matter too much. I mean, it depends, like, it really depends on the Numa pool. I still want to give the user control over that indexer and shift. Is that lifetime relationship between the Newman local pools held up by actual Rust lifetime bounds? No, it's not. <laughs> um, I have to handle that myself. It technically uses lifetimes, but it uses tags. I manage, basically, I manage those lifetimes myself. Okay, so now we have to do a lot, a lot of stuff. We're going to re-export this as well. Pub use uh, parameters, parameters. So that's the trait that defines all of those properties, which means that this now just takes the parameters. Um, a P that is parameters. And then this is the local pool size. So this is P uh, local size. Right? Elicado, what a nice name. I know, I know it's so good. 
Uh, it's gonna take a long time to get this to build. Okay. We got a lot of stuff we got to do until this works. P. I'm okay with P here. Normally, I don't like one-letter generics, but in this case, since it's our only generic, I'm actually okay with it now. Um, this now takes a P. And then this also takes a P. New ID that. This, all those collapse into a P. Uh, okay, that's I think I like this today Um, then we can align these there we go so it takes the new max it takes that both these are P parameters have to be the same between both the pools that like hard ties those together which is nice you gonna cut identifiers allowed in Rust? Yes, they are. Um, what is the mechanism for syncing both states? Shared and local? Uh, that is like the user has to push things from the local to the NUMA database. That's, uh, that's a user thing. User action does that. That's not automatic. All right, then uh, this. We have a P, that's parameters. And then this has a local pool, that's a P. It has a NUMA pool, which is a P. Um, 54. Oh, that's in prefix slice. I think once again, we're going to disable prefix slice. So we don't have to worry about that code right now. Just, I want to get this building as soon as possible so that we can start making decisions around this. Uh, P is parameters, P, P. This now is a P of parameters. We're going to have to add that where clause workaround in a second here, but that's okay. We'll get to that in a minute. Um, there's no reason to have the lifetimes in parameters. It just doesn't really make sense. So we'll keep the lifetimes outside. Actually, they have to be outside. Uh, NUMA ID A parameters. Okay. Then uh, we're actually probably doing okay here. Yeah, we don't have too many more issues to fix here. Uh, so in parameters, problem parsing. Oh, these are semis. Okay. As I thought. I don't know. I guess for traits, they're semis. That makes sense. Wait, what? Did I miss one? No, I didn't. What? 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 Did I? Oh, I did miss one. Aha! I see, I see. Is there a clock for sync? We don't, I, I, there's not, there's not syncing or state changes or logs. There's like no logging, there's no ordering. It doesn't really make sense in this context. I think you might be misunderstanding maybe what we're doing. We're just writing an allocator here. There's like time and logs don't aren't relevant in this case uh 46 tdb undeclared type yep this is now p uh local tdb default and then this okay Uh, 57, P already used. Yep, we don't specify P. P is already defined here. This is only bringing in NUMA ID. Uh, that makes sense, because when we make this accessor is where we finally introduce the NUMA ID to the local accessor. Uh, then we have 30. Type DB. Yep, this is a P, uh, local 
Uh, you say local TDB? What do we call it? Local TDB? Yep. Uh, then at 33... Cannot find size in this scope? Yes. Uh, this is now P size, uh, local size. And P local size. These assertions aren't really required. Uh, local size. Yep. Uh, what else? What's next? Size, size, 141. Uh, P local size. 165. Um, cannot find size in the scope. Here, P local size. And we got a 169. Got another size here, P local size. Uh, a couple more sizes down here. Yep, P local size. P local size. P local size. P local size. Okay, we're like getting there. Uh, indexer. Yep, those traits don't exist. So I'll put those up here. Um, these have to be pub traits then. Uh, pub traits, uh, atomic type database. They don't actually have to be pub. I don't know if they do. Um, okay, associated type bound. So there's, we're first hitting that for the first time, which is good. We'll just throw this in our list of things. Good. All right. We're getting there. Local TDB. Uh, oh, yeah, because that's the type. Uh, TDB. This should be index. And this should be NUMA TDB. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 21, uh, that is local size. Type provided? Oh, yeah, I guess we're gonna have to do some of these bad boys, I guess. Interesting. Interesting, question mark? Uh, oh. Generic const experts? Oh, fuck yeah. Let's keep going. Like, keep adding them on. Let's go. Let's go. Uh, local TDB 27. So these are now uh, local TDB. Local TDB. Local TDB. Um... And then we have to allow this, otherwise we're going to get that allow incomplete features. All right. All right. Now it wants a NUMA accessor. Um, okay. 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 Uh, okay. Okay, that's fine. So now we have to do the same thing for the NUMA pool. So we'll use create parameters. P, which implements parameters. Um, this is P NUMA size now. And then this is P NUMA nodes. I don't know if I need curlies on this bad boy. Oh, okay. So we're gonna do mm, actually that. I'm okay with that. Uh, then these all get to collapse. P parameters. P 
key on the Numa pool. Same thing here. P on this. Uh, P parameters. Okay. Uh, what's TDB in this context? It's the type database. It's where we store store all the different types we've deserialized. P numa size. P numa size. P numa size. This is P. Uh, how do I want to do this? Uh, move this down. Okay, I like that. P parameters. So now we can add more generics by just changing the parameter structure, which is... So, 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 so much nicer. Okay. Now we're going to have a lot of complaints. That's all right. Uh, this will just take some time. Uh, 80 size this. Um, this is a, a P Numa size. Okay. Then we have uh, 79. 84, 84. Oh, nodes as well. Oh, okay. Uh... P numa size. And then we have a P numa nodes. Um 124. This is a P numa size. Uh 151. This is a P numa size. This is a P numa size here. There's going to be a couple more of these. P Numa. P Numa. P Numa. P Numa. Whew! Are we getting there? 84. Expected one generic. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, because that's just a P now. Um, 151, local accessor, where, local pool, no, in lib, oh, we're at lib now, ah, look at that, progress, P, nice, nice, P, uh, parameters. P parameters. And a P here. Oh, fuck yeah. We're making some good progress now. Get your poggies out. This disc is still DDing. I wonder what kind of perf I'm getting through that on uh, USB 3. P, oops. P parameters. <laughs> this is interesting because I literally pasted that P. Uh, no data. Yep, no data takes a size. You size. Holy shit. We're getting there, chat. Maybe. 111. Uh, yep. Missed a couple of these. And we'll worry about formatting and stuff. We'll reread all this code when we get back to it in a second. P parameters. Oh! Oh, we're getting close. Oh, we're getting really close. Uh, 97. Uh, oh, yeah, that doesn't make sense. Um, unconstrained. Okay, so we only have to add these in a couple places. So in Numa pool, we have to add them at uh, where we define nodes. So here, and then any imples as well. We'll have to do it. So where... Uh, this. And we also have to do it for Numa nodes. Uh, 
But I think what we're doing is we're constraining it to an array. We're saying like this is this is valid to be used as an array index. I'm gonna put a space here. I like it. Uh, mm, where this? What? Oh, uh, there has to be a colon on both of those. Yep. Uh, unnecessary. Yeah, we don't need braces here. But we need braces in there, which is kind of weird. In here. And I don't know why. Like, if we get rid of those curlies, this fails, right? This fails to build? Yeah. Uh, turns a type into a constant. So 41, unconstrained. So anywhere now that we impl on NumaPool, we have to add these uh, where clauses. Okay. Uh, which is also here. Right? Because we're impling on NumaPool. This will complain. Yep, 45, same thing. Add the where clause here. Kind of want to tab that in one more, I think. Um, oh yeah. 87. Nice. Same thing on this, and then we'll have to do the same thing on accessors. Uh, is that going to bubble up to the user? Will the user have to do that? The user won't ever implement Numa X. I think we can abstract this away from the user. I don't want the user to have to do these where clauses. But we'll see. Local pool. We got to do the same thing in the local pool now. Uh, where... Um... Array P local size is a thing. And we got to put it down here. And we got to put it on local accessor. And then we also have to put that on here. That fits one line now. Ooh, we do need it up here. 110. No, 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 no. I don't like that. I don't like that. This will bubble up only if you're writing your own deserializer, so I'm okay with it. Uh... The upper right is there inside my mind. <laughs> Already have a wear clause. The Phantom of the Upper Right. Uh, we also have to add where claw. Oh, Jesus Christ. We're gonna have to go all the way down the stack now. Uh, Numa size and, uh, wow, and Numa nodes. Fuck me, dude. Because this refers to a Numa pool. And the nature of referring to a Numa pool means we have to go all the way down the stack. Now that's gonna push it up into those generics. Uh, nodes. Newman News! So glad they made a movie for this awesome song. <laughs> Fuck me, dude. Oh, this is so tilting! 
This is so tilting! Fantasy is new. A man a mystery. Is this scrolling off the screen? We have so much, so many fucking warnings and errors. Holy dick. So local accessor needs all of them, which means anything that takes the local accessor here. Yes, I am a God, her fucking voice, dude. Taria, I tell you what, dude. Whew. Okay, okay. Oh, we're getting there. We're getting there. Da -da 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 -da. One fifty seven. Uh, that's a semi. Sixty. Numa accessor. We don't introduce a P here. Oh. Yep. <laughs> it's fine, chat. It's fine. Oh. 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 Oh, now we're hitting these. Okay. Okay. These do matter. Uh... So anywhere that we have it in... Uh, those, I think we're gonna have to fix it, which is fine. 161. We got this, chat. We got this. This will work. Rip. Two thirty nine, uh, three seventy eight. Let's fucking go. Let's go. We're on to the new, the local pool. Let's fucking go. Dun, 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 dun. We'll let that complain. Um, types local side one seventy three. Oh, do you care? It's gonna happen, chat. I swear. It's gonna work. <sighs> Clear types. Insert, insert. 405. Raise your poggers. Raise your poggers. Holy shit. Woof! Woof! Now. Uh, type databases. Type databases, uh, local type database, has to implement default. There you go, now that's gone. Now it has to implement clear. The Scientology clear. Uh, uh, clear the database of all entries. FN clear. This takes a self. Um, type db clear. Okay, I have to pull that in. That's fine. Uh, clear that of all entries. 
Um, type database used for the local pool, which is uh, which does not have to be uh, send or sync, allowing for simpler data structures and resizing. Right. FN types. Um, uh, return raw indices to types of a uh, given T in the database. Right? Um, and I think, yeah, we're going to make this return a numa ref. Oh, fuck. We can't ID that. Okay, that's fine. We'll do this here. Uh, that. Um... And then I think we have to say, it's kind of weird, because it's actually expecting unsafety of above us. Um, oh, and this is an option. Um, do I want to return an empty set if it's empty? I think so. Uh, it's just an A, uh, self. Beautiful. Use crates. Coolable. So return references uh, to types of a given T. Um, and this is indices. And I think what we have to say here is that the I, uh, I sizes must be valid uh local refs uh or numeref um indices in the pool this type database is associated with yeah we don't know the lifetime of this type database here and then fn inserts oh we can actually do this uh, numa ref id t. And this is unsized. And then this is the same thing. Insert id t poolable plus sized. Where, uh, we are given a ref, uh, a numa ref. Which is the, uh, this is insert, uh, given numa, uh, insert numa ref into the database uh and this is a numa ref by consumption of that id so it's tagged with that that puts the ownership into us of that generic or of that lifetime so insert that into the database insert this into uh get retrieve from the database of that id okay Do users implement the type database? Usually not, but theoretically they could. Um, I will provide pre-made ones, but in theory, they might. <laughs> in the local pool, we have to pull in the traits. <laughs> Still DDing that drive. It'd be nice if I had a status. It'd be nice if I could control control T. Sig info. Sig info is the coolest part of FreeBSD or BSDs. I don't know why Linux doesn't have it. Oh, is there a way? You can send sig user. Is there a key sequence for sig user one? Or do you have to signal it? <laughs> One more life to give. Kill nine, send sig user. 
Sick. You have to signal it. Cringe. Uh, okay. Okay. Okay, can we solve this? Is this solvable? Dun, 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 dun. Um Let's call this one. That has two on the Numa Accessor. Uh, do we need to tie those? Signal or pain on Linux? Yeah, they really are. Um. Why did this work before? Because it did. It's not due to these, is it? It's not due to these lifetimes. I don't think. Is it those? I'm gonna get rid of these. Uh, type DB. So we'll just return an empty slice and we'll get rid of this and we'll get rid of this. No, okay, so it's not that. What has changed here? Um, This is on 73 and 74, so creating this accessor. We have a specific NUMA ID for that accessor. has type this is two do we need to tie those it worked before which is really weird like that's super strange i don't i don't think this would work maybe four <laughs> interesting interesting that 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 we could do outlives if we have to there but rush should be able to figure that out um but we can do outlives and stuff if we have to i don't know if this is valid we'll see if this builds and works in a real context um type database not used not used not used yeah, so we'll just nuke the type database and uh, we'll bring back in prefix slice. We'll get prefix slice working again. Edge case of lifetime inference. Yes, yes it is. Um, Anywhere that we have a local accessor, we have to do that. And was that the only place? No, 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 no. Oh, yeah, this is P, P, P parameters. Uh, we'll pull in parameters. Oh! I wasn't expecting no warnings or errors. Okay. That's that's PP, that's PP, pretty pog. So now let's try and make this do something. Uh, so this is just going to be uh, params. Params. Uh, 
Uh, yep. So we'll do, uh, struct params. Impl, uh, parameters for params. Deserialize. Or you just need to send the derive macro. Oh, can't find prefix slice. Ah, uh, yeah, that makes sense. Because this is, this re-exported. Uh, uh, constant expression depends on a generic parameter. That is in the deserialized macro, which is... Do I need these? Is that what it is? I changed it. Um, yeah, I think we did need those. We gotta pull in the wares. <laughs> Missing all of these. Reference constant has errors. Is that because they don't exist? I'm gonna assume that's because they don't exist. So this is where you define the shape of your allocator. Uh, shift of zero, we're not using that yet. Type database, uh, null db. Did you say null db or null tdb? Mm -hmm. Null type database. Okay. Uh, that doesn't exist yet, but that's fine. We'll add it. Local size at uh, 1024. Const numa size 1024. Const numa nodes. U size is one. Uh, type numa tdb is a uh, atomic null db. Yep, and then we'll uh yep we'll impl. Uh, that doesn't need to be pub, I don't think. Impl. Indexer for you size. Can't leak private trait. Okay, pub unsafe. Dun, 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 dun. Uh, null TDB. TDB. Chaz Q. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Should an index be constrained to certain types? Yes. Yeah, exactly. Um, okay, not found in these scopes, so we'll add that. We'll expand this. This is a uh, type or traits to indicate types which can be used for uh, NUMA ref indices. We might have to get rid of that. I'm not 100% sure. Um, type database used for the NUMA pool. And this is, uh, this requires send and sync. 
which makes that a little bit tougher to implement. And then same thing. Right, so that's the atomic database. Works on numerous on that atomic database. Um, and then we have to implement uh, these. So we'll do struct. Um, null tdb. Uh, type database that doesn't store any uh, information and is used to disable type storage. Impl type database for null tdb, fn clear self, nothing, fn insert, uh, underscore on nr, does nothing, and types. This yields uh, numerf this, and this implementation uh, returns an empty slice. Drive default. Holy shit. And then this is the atomic one. Uh, impl atomic. Oh, honestly, we can just implement both on the same one. Null tdb. Yeah, 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 yeah. Fine. This. They do the same thing. They both take selfs. And, uh, that's totally fine. So you implement atomic. Okay, atomic null. This is just null tdb. It's the same thing. Woo! That's null tdb. This will fail because we don't pull it in. Null tdb is going to be pub. And then up here, we'll re export that here. Then we'll. Yeah, we just got it. Oh, fuck yeah, let's go. Okay, uh, lifetime issues. And that is on the LP accessor. Uh, FN accessor. What do we need? Uh, the NUMA accessor. It's so weird that this used to work. So, what would this have resolved to before? Um, oops. So, we have a NUMA accessor. Oh, and that has this. Okay. So, uh, requires that one must outlive two. One is self, has to outlive the NUMA accessor field, which is weird. Isn't that weird? Seems backwards. <laughs> That's... Uh... So these would be different lifetimes, right? It assigns different lifetimes to all of these. So this would be A, this would be B, and they're just disjoints. So let's see what we can do here. Let's let's add an A. Let's just do this first. Perfect. So B. Um uh, Where's that A must outlive B? Yep. A outlives B. And B must outlive A? Okay, let's give them both the same one. This is more accurate to how I use them. Do you need something else in your closure? Mm, 
No. Requires that self outlives A. That's true. B outlives A. And that's an A? I don't think this builds. Um, and we can't use B on that. Oh, we can. What the fuck? Why does this suddenly not work? I don't know what it was resolving to before. So, uh, the local pool, or B must, okay. Let's just do this. C must outlive B, right? The Numa accessor, since we're storing it in self, C has to outlive B. C outlives B, so B is a shorter lifetime. Um, and I think we want these to be different lifetimes as well. And, uh, D needs to, uh, that? A outlives D? Okay. All right, let's, let's just think through this for a second. Okay, we have self. We're gonna call self A. That's how long the self lives. The local accessor has to return things that live for at least as long as self. The Numa accessor lives for B, and B outlives A. Let's see this. Does this work? Add explicit lifetimes. I think I, yeah, I had those all being the same lifetimes. And for some reason that doesn't work anymore? I'm pretty sure these were all the same lifetimes the first time I did it. NA doesn't live long enough. Which is freed when it's still in use. Yup, so we create a temporary here. Has type Numa Accessor 1. This requires that the borrow last for 1. But it does. But it literally does. Um, dude, I'm so confused. Like, how did this work before the parameter stuff? What what would the parameters have mattered? So. We have a Numa pool that has no lifetimes. Then we have a Numa accessor. So this is an A ref. This is the lifetime of the Numa accessor. And then we have this. Are these the same lifetimes here? I think they are. Let's just explicitly lifetime this. So we create a new lifetime out of thin air called ID. Self, which is the Numa pool. And the Numa accessor will return references. So that A, this A ref here, is used, uh, well, it's used internally here for a reference to the Numa pool, which is how long the Numa pool lives for, and a reference to the Numa pool itself. So that all makes sense, right? Um, then we have A ref here. And that is used when we return values 
So when we return references to things, we're returning references to things that live as long as the pool does. Which is true. Um... Those should all be the same lifetimes. And then here we can just shorten that. We want the lifetimes of the things that we return to be shorter, such that we want all these to be the same. The references we return from a local accessor might live for this long, but we're intentionally shorting the, shortening the lifetime of that. The Numa accessor technically can outlive us. NA, mute NA. That creates a new accessor. Uh, mute NA. Doesn't live long enough. Requires that NA is borrowed for one, which is the length of... Uh, okay. So we can say this B, B outlives A. Dude, I don't get it. I should be able to shrink those lifetimes. That's literally what I'm doing here. Dude, this makes no sense. Like, this literally feels like a Rust, like, compiler bug. Like, this should be fine. This build is just fine, but when we use it, it's not fine. <sighs> it has lifetime one. We borrow it here. Argument requires that NA is borrowed for one. Which is technically the length of this accessor, but that's okay. And a drop out still borrowed. It's not though. I'm what incredibly stupid thing am I doing here? Local accessor. It should be ID, new ID, A, 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 A. Can you explicitly drop it? And this is only the LP. Oops. I missed. Yep, so that works fine. That's fine. Um... Our argument requires that N is borrowed for one. Whoa. Well, that's not, that's not supposed to be mute, but that's fine. I don't think that's, yeah, that's not the issue. Um, and I dropped while it's still borrowed. How? What if we allocate something? LA dot new five U eight.
How is it still borrowed? We borrow the accessor for A, which is the length of the pool. Well, the pool should live longer. B outlives A, but we tried this, I'm pretty sure. And like, I don't understand that. This is really, 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 really weird. And this is also fine. Like, B doesn't need to outlive that in this case. Like, I literally think there's a bug in Rust. Like, this is fine. Like, that's totally fine. Uh, let's just pull this. This is probably fine. Okay. Yep. Same thing here. Ref NA, ref LA. We create them outside. It has to be something with the parameters. I don't have to have two different parameter structures, do I? So if I were to go into a local pool and I were to change this accessor here and I were to pass in an A here, this should be the same. This should literally work. We put an A on literally everything. That's, a, that's this. There we go. And this should work. And it does. And that's what it was doing before. A, 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 like, it's totally fine. It's totally fine that they're all the same lifetime. Um, so it's the parameters. Um, and I think it's due to the types. I think it's the type database. And he doesn't live long enough. Um, okay, so this is the original issue. Lifetime might not live long enough. New accessor has two. And that's three. OK, 
Okay, let's try it. Let's try... A. Self. B. Atlas B. This should... Uh... Oops. Uh... Yeah, we can't do that. Um... Atlas B... Specify B before. Uh... The Numa accessor lives for C. No. Uh... Uh... Then we're gonna have... D outlives C. So... D is the longer one. The accessor. C is that field. This is the shorter one, which is B and A. So A lives longer. Um. What? What? A. A lives B. And it does. C. D outlives C, and it does. I need to associate D and A. I have to say D, uh, D outlives A. I really want these to be the same. I want these to be Ds. This literally shouldn't be a problem. Something is, something is happening. With P. <sighs> Let's remove all the types from P. It's only constants. Okay. So it's only going to be constants, and since it's only constants, it should be fine. No. <sighs> Krauzev, thank you so much for the prime. Hell yeah. Hope you're having a good day. Um, I think it's a bug. Uh, Something is happening with P. What is happening with P? A, 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 A. This is completely valid. And that builds, that's expected. <sighs> I think if I disassociate the Local parameters with the NUMA parameters, it will fix it. Let's for now, uh, let's do this.
We'll document that later. Ah, oh, that indexer needs to be the same on both. That's okay. We can do that with a runtime assertion. I don't like it, but we can. Uh, NUMA parameters. Still think it can be anyway. This needs a shift in an index as well. Um, so stupid, dude. Uh, you know what? I could just duplicate this. Let's try this. Um, local pool. Yep. Then we're going to have NP, uh, here. NP on these. NP, that's local stuff. Uh, okay, so we actually don't want NP here. Perfect. Um, NP, 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 NP. We don't need to constrain those here. Now, when we go to the NUMA accessor here, this is going to use an NP, and an NP is a parameters. Perfect. Um, I guess we do need an NP on the local accessor. On the pool, actually? Do we need it on the pool? No, just on the accessor. Yeah, we're fine. We're fine. We're fine. Um, just on the accessor. This will have an NP. Oh, no, that won't. This will be NP. This will be NP. Uh, NP is parameters. That's gonna fail on that. Local accessor now has NP parameters. These are now NPs. The NUMA accessor, anything NUMA related as NP based. Um, NP parameters. NP Well, everything's broken now. Uh 151 on lib. Okay, so anywhere that we have a local accessor, we should have P and NP. 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 Okay, Numa accessor. They should only have NP. NP tied to NP. That's created here. NP is created here. Okay, perfect. So then that should have problems when we go into here. Anywhere that we have a local accessor. Uh, does P equals NP? In this case, yes. P is NP. Uh, NP, NP is parameters. The constraints have to be on NP. Uh, 151, NP, NP parameters, uh, 165, uh, NP, these have to be NPs, if they're not, that will fail to build, NP parameters, before the take of a uh, lin sensitivity. NP. Parameters NP. 61. Unconstrained. P numa size. That's on local pool on 61. Yep, that's okay. Uh, 
Uh, this is Numa size constraints, and we need to add a Numa nodes. Then it's all for the best person is. That shouldn't satisfy constraints. Let's see what happens. Uh, 21. In what? Uh, oh, this. Um, NP parameters. These are now NP constraints. These have to also exist down here. What the fuck? Is this font? I don't know. Oh, the DD is complete. Yay. Um, Well, I think we just have to undo everything we just did. Um, fuck me, dude. Uh, well, now we have another one hour of doing that again. Um, I think it's just a bug, man. Fuck it. Guess that has to go away, because that doesn't work. Woo! Is it because they have the same parameter struck? They don't, so no. Uh, all right. Fuck me. <sighs> Numa size, you size. In main, in this? No. 
Um, new size, new nodes. Uh, okay, so we got the new size, new nodes. Uh, is that all we need here? I think so. So fucking disappointing, man. So unbelievably disappointing. Well, code's gonna get really ugly real fast. Hope you're excited for ugly code. What's this mad about? size uh you can get rid of these uh accessor that back trees id this is new accessor actually has to take in the index at this point mm, that should be on the pool Uh, index. I'll pull up index here. Hello? Hello? ID index that bam. 68. This. All right. What a fucking tragedy, dude. What a tragedy. Local pool. Who knows? Who knew those weird wares break borrow check? 
Yeah, we can also get rid of uh, these. Maven. Yes, be friends. All right, local pool index indexer. Uh, local size, U size, const. Uh, yeah, the others can come into the picture later. Add it all. Gonna be like this. Uh, oh, yep. Yep, we gotta add those in a second as well. Okay. All right. Uh, then we have index local size. Uh, okay, so we have to go back up into Numapool. This has to get a type database. Um, Numa TDB is a uh, atomic type. DB, which is in parameters. Okay, and then we have uh, Numa TDB is atomic type DB. Uh, Numa TDB. Oh, we also need shift. Uh, const shift u size. Const shift u size. Shift. Um, const shift. Uh, we need the Numa TDB atomic type DB. Uh, Numa TDB shift. Same with down here. This needs an uh, Numa TDB atomic type DB, a const uh, shift U size. Um, this is a Numa pool with an index, a Numa TDB, a shift, a Numa size, and a Numa nodes. Chirp Chase, how's it going? Thank you for the subscription, you know. Uh, Numa TDB, atomic type DB, uh, con shift, U size, uh, for this, Numa TDB, shift. Na 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 Beautiful. Okay. Where are we feeling now? So anyway, we have P. This fits on online now. Size this. Okay. Progress. We're gonna, once again, we're gonna keep disabling the uh, prefix slice. Just makes life easier. Okay. Um, nice. So then up here, we're gonna have an indexer, a local sized, a shift. What else? Uh, uh, local TDB type database, type database. Okay, uh, local TDB type database, uh, const shift u size, 
That's how we're doing it up here, right? We're putting the shift before. Shift then size. Yep. Okay, the wear clause can go away. Anywhere that's P can change now. Okay. So the wear clauses go away, so that's nice. Then these collapse. Okay. All right. So then the accessor. Parameter's not found in the scope. That's fine. If we nuke that, this should now complain. Uh, so then we have a Numa accessor and a Numa accessor. A Numa accessor takes in a. Uh, Numa ID, the A ref. We can get rid of this A ref because Rust will be smart enough to figure it out now. Um, these, this. Uh, so that's the A ref. Then we have an index, Numa size, and a Numa nodes. So this needs const Numa size, const Numa nodes. Um, Numa accessor. Actually, that's wrong. This needs a Numa TDB as well. Uh, and a shift. The type database is already defined there. So then this takes in a uh, Numa TDB and a shift and a Numa size. I think. Okay. And then we have a local accessor, and then a local accessor will take in a ID, Numa ID, an underscore, an index, a uh, local TDB, a uh, Numa TDB, a shift, a uh, local size, a Numa size, and a Numa nodes. Okay. Be really cool if there's a way to make a shortcut for that. Wouldn't that be nice? All right, and then we need to get that ordering correct. Otherwise, it's broken. Uh, so Numa accessor is correct. Index, Numa TDB, shift Numa size, Numa nodes. Boom. Uh, then the Numa accessor in this case, so this is a local accessor, and a local accessor will take a index. It will take a local TDB. It'll take a uh, Numa TDB. It will take a shift. Um, it will take a local size. It'll take a Numa size. And it'll take a Numa nodes. There we go. Uh, do, 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 do. Okay, and then that will reference a local pool and a local pool take an index, a local TDB, a shift and a local size. And then the Numa accessor will take the Numa ID A with an index, a Numa TDB, a shift, a Numa size, and a Numa nodes. Um, all right. Okay, and then we can change this. We're going to implement this for a local accessor. 
Uh, with uh, ID, NUMA ID, A, index, local TDB, NUMA TDB, shift, local size, NUMA size, NUMA nodes. Missing const, I am. Uh, that... That's what we're implementing on... There. Uh, these are const... Const... Const, const, bam, bam, bam. 446, missing a brace. That's going to be right here. Knew it. Okay. We need to pull an indexer and atomic type database. Uh, okay, uh, 155, that is on lib. Okay, are we already in lib? So this goes away, and now this takes in deserialize ID, that is the pool, and then we need to grab the parameters here. So everything except for ID. I don't know if I need ID there. Well, that's where we have it, but that's something we can look into. I don't know if we need it there. Um, this, this, this. So there's the, the generics, and then we have the arguments, which is going to be index local tdb numa tdb shift local size numa size numa nodes my frame where self is sized is that required i think so yeah, because we're returning a self directly. Okay, that makes sense. Um... Okay, so we'll put this now. So anything that implements deserialize, we can just steal this. That. And uh, uh, do a curly on the next line. I'm okay with that. Um, then deserialize here. We're gonna have to tab it in, so we're gonna have to find a new shape for these parameters. Can't wait. Deserialize here. Bam. Paste this. Okay, fits. Okay, same thing down here. Uh, we're like getting pretty close now. Um, pub use type database, atomic type database. Uh, 150. Where do we have the where clause? Here? Oh, okay. We gotta grab this deserialize and pull it up to here. Delete, delete this, tab this in. Uh, okay, 
Did that build? No. Indexer is not in lib. Okay, we need indexer here. Uh, still failing. Numa TDB not found and local pool 61. Yes. Numa TDB atomic uh, type database. Uh, shift we already have, I think. Uh, 166. Lib. Unresolved imports. On atomic type database. Create parameters. Oh. Is that what we use? Nope, okay. All right, we'll pull that in. Is that new pool? Okay. Uh, now we got some of the ordering wrong. <laughs> Didn't we fix this? 167? That's the traits. Oh, we didn't save that. Okay. Uh, okay, now we're really close. Let's see if there's any errors up here at the top. Uh, no parameters and parameters. Yep, that's fine, because there isn't. Oh, now we can do uh, null TDB. Okay, now it's just the ordering of these is wrong, I think. Uh, type database. Oh, yeah, this is local TDB. Sixty-five. And this is just wrong. What's a local accessor? On 65, a local accessor is an indexer, local TDB, a NUMA TDB. Not const. Oh, uh, local pool, 33. Expected for. Yep, Um, this is index, local TDB, shift, local size. Unused parameter, index in the NUMA pool. Yep. And that's fine. And then they want these to be camel cased. Numa TDB Numa Okay, okay, now we're getting close. Uh, just unused index and unused NUMA TDB, and that's okay, because we're not using those yet, so let's go and add those. Um, so, uh, type DB. So now, the NUMA TDB will be specified up in here, in the pool. 
so this is a uh, Numa TDB. And then we have 17. Index, yep, indexer is not used yet. We'll get to that in a minute. Let's actually plumb through the type database. So everywhere that we use it in local pool, we have to use it here. Uh, so type DB. So we have a type database there. Uh, obviously we need to create it here. So this will be type DB, uh, Numa TDB default. So that will create it. Then when we make an accessor, we actually don't want to clear it. So we actually don't need the clear implementation for that. Because we'll never remove things. Um, the atomic type database is insert only, insert and access only. So that makes sense. Uh, type DB uh, types in the NUMA accessor, which is here before alloc raw. Get references. And it is pool. So get the types. And ID in this case, yep, that's the correct lifetime. Perfect. Then we have to insert. So this is on anywhere we do init. Um, this doesn't yield. That's unchecked. This creates numera. Anywhere we create a numera, which will always be this. So here's a numera creation. Let ret is equal to this. Um, uh, register it in the type database and then return it. Okay, and then we'll create one down here. Let ret equals this. Uh, okay, ret. And register the type. And this should be slice. Yep. Okay, so anywhere that we create a numa reference, we uh, insert it into the pool database. That is now done. Now index needs to be used. And uh, okay. Fuck yeah. Let's just con uh, let's just make this work real quick. Um, temp. Uh, this is gonna be a uh, well. So the way that this will work is indexer is yeah. This actually is going to be um, index. Uh, phantom data index. So indexer type to use for references. And then we need to pull in phantom data. Uh, use core marker phantom data. I'm going to separate these at this point. Okay, beautiful. Now that also has to go into local pool. Perfect. And I might have phantom data here. I'm not sure. If I don't, we'll pull it in. I don't. There we go. Uh, okay, atomic DB needs default. Default and send and sync. Which means that repper's default. Perfect. We need index for these. That's, uh, this is at 50. Uh, phantom data. Uh, same at 64. Unused accessor. I guess, yeah, that's not used. Yeah, we don't allocate things for base types. So that now builds. Does this build? No, of course it doesn't because now we have to fill these in. So what is a NUMA pool? We have an indexer. We have a atomic type database. We have a, a shift. We have a NUMA size. We have a NUMA nodes. We'll say four. Okay, then we have a local pool. And it's an indexer type database shift in local size. So a U size, a null TDB, a shift, and a local size. Uh, prefix slice. 
Let's just not use that right now. Wow, look at that. It builds. What are the odds? Huh. It's almost as if there's a bug with that stupid ass thing. We're going to turn off uh, the... Actually, we can just do cargo run. Just so it builds a little faster here. Size is not used. Perfect. Okay. And now this should work. Uh, let ref is equal to this. Print the ref. And then we'll print uh, la.getRef. And then we'll print, this should fail to build na get ref because it's not from there. Yep. Na get ref doesn't work because that's the wrong lifetime. There we go. So that's the value. That's the five. There's the index. Okay. Woo! Why are awesome? that? Is that a game? It is, but uh, no, it's a programming language. Um, what are you doing? We're, we're deserialized. We're writing like a, a fuzzer mutator sort of thingy. Uh, so it's a really, really fast allocator for storing types that you deserialize. So you can deserialize types in real time to this heap, and then it allows you to basically access those. Uh, you found a bug in standard? No, I found a bug in the Rust compiler. Um, but that's okay because it's like a, it's a new, it's like a bleeding edge feature. <laughs> like it's, it's fine. So we're using new uninit. That's easy. Uh, we can get rid of that now. Uh, we're using new uninit. We're using maybe uninit slice and slice pointer get. All these are totally, totally fine features. So this is now way, way, way more relaxed. Beautiful. So that builds. Everything is good now. We can pull in prefix slice now. Um, there we go. We'll pull that in. This is not going to build. Uh, we have to pull in a couple things here. So, really, we just implement deserialize, which is this. This is the prototype. We just have to replace the deserialize prototype with this one. And I think we're good. Uh, yep. Type database, atomic type database. LA66. Looks like I bound that as LA, so we'll just say accessor. Indexer. Uh, accessor. Beautiful. So now you have prefix slice. This will build. Everything is good. Could it have been that the FN1s missed the bounds related to the constants? Mm, shouldn't be. Because we're doing the exact same thing. Right? We're doing the exact same thing we did before. Right? We don't have any bounds on it. Um... The, the same constraints would have been applied here because we had the P constraint on that. It's just a bug. It, like, that, we were already using, like, a really bleeding-edge feature that is not complete. And we had to turn off warnings for using an incomplete feature. It's just probably an edge case they literally don't handle. So, we just, we just don't do that. Uh, okay. So, it's a little bit uglier. It's not terrible, because you don't have to deal with the accessors, which are, like, the massive things. But if we were to say U32, this would now fail to build. Because these are incompatible. Well, indexer's not implemented for that. Uh, but if we were to implement... Let's go do indexer now. Uh, so let's implement it for i8, i16, i32, i64, and i size. We'll probably make a macro for defining this in a second. Um... Yep, this fills, um, oh, indexer, yeah. So if we said i32 and i size here, this will fail because they mismatch. So they do need to match, which is good. So that is compile time checked that they match, which makes sense because we use the same indexer for both. Uh, these sizes can differ, though. You can have a larger NUMA pool than the local pool. This will succeed. You cannot have different... 
uh, you can't have different um, shifts. That makes sense. And then these TDBs, you can have different TDBs because those are in different things. So everything should be good. These basically have to match between the pools because that defines uh, basically how the indexers are defined. So now we have to implement indexer. And the way that we have to do that is we have to go into Numa pool. It's yeah, it's not really a bug. It's a working process. Yeah, pro uh, progress. Yeah, I agree. Going to report it? No, because it would take me probably eight hours to make a min set case of that. So I'm just going to I'm just going to assume that they probably already are working on it and we'll run into it in the future and, and report it if we have to. But it doesn't really make sense to report it yet because they probably are well aware of that limitation. Like, it's probably very obvious. Uh, yeah, I don't think... Yeah. I don't think it's really a bug yet, so... Uh, okay, let's go grab this drive. I got pretty impressive performance out of this, uh, this SATA thing. Okay, that looks like that is set up. Um, okay, so uh, what we should be able to do is sudo, uh, do you message? sudo wipe fs a dev sda. Yep, that's the 840 evo. Uh, sudo make fs xfs dev sda. But this is a one tera drive. This should be fine for the recovery. Come on. Come on. What's the game about? This is not a game. Really? Input output error? What? Uh, okay. Okay, weird. Let's see if that comes back around. Come on. Let's see what happens. Yep, we can DD it. I don't know, we can EXT4, see if that makes a difference. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, yeah, okay, so, weird. And that gets stuck then. The fuck?
I wonder if this will get mad unless I partition it. <laughs> Which really makes no sense, but, uh... There it is. Uh... Hmm, parted. Uh, dev SDA. What? What? I wonder if it's the USB port. We'll see. Uh, okay, I can DD it now. Can I part it? it? No. What the fuck? Is it just a bug of my SATA thing? Why can I DD it? Oh, uh, oh, I, I think I know what I did. Uh, I think I created SDA. I think I've done this before, and it's jabated me so hard. What the fuck? What the fuck? Well, I think this thing just doesn't work. I think literally this fucking sad thing just doesn't work, I guess. Unless I have like we like it's pulling up that just fine. But that doesn't work. Let me see. You know what? Maybe that's the switches in there. Um Let me see what switches I flipped. Maybe I flipped enough where I can like DD it or something, but I can't. Uh, I think it's a T that. Uh, switches. Uh, default setting is off for everything. No, I have it in read-write mode. I don't... Report write protect, and I don't report write errors. <sighs> what the fuck, dude? Device ID okay, driver okay, illegal request, sync, like is sync causing it to get mad? 
What the fuck, dude? This makes no sense. Let me, hmm. I have another, like, SATA drive thing that I could maybe try. Um. I've had many issues with this device before, so I'm just assuming it's the device that's bad. Uh. uh what a piece of shit, dude. What an absolute piece of shit. Um, I wonder if there's, uh, like, latest firmware. Three hundred meg installer, fucking cringe. Um, and they do a lot of updates. Uh... Ah, there's nothing very recently. I don't see any bug fixes. I mean, would I have gotten this before 2020? I don't know, I can update the firmware on it. <laughs> oh my fucking god, dude.
Alright. Um, did I plug that in? Easy. Okay. Do 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 do. Come on. There we go. All right. <laughs> uh, no remount read only to mount mount. Uh, dev NVMe. Uh, yeah. Let's try it. Understood. Okay, so now that's running. <laughs> We're back. Easy. Easy. Okay, that'll take a while. Um, my poor terminals are cluttered. All right, what were we doing? We were implementing uh, Indexer, I think. Yeah, so we have to figure out how I want to implement that. Um, everything's built, everything runs, everything works. We just did the type DB in here. Uh, we create it, we return types. That's init, and then we have init slice. So those all get registered in the NUMA pool, and then in the local pool that also happens. Local, yup, clear, good. Okay. Uh, yeah. So I think this now is correctly implemented for what we want. So what we need to do is we need to implement... Um, we need to implement indexer. And to do that, we need uh, numerefs. These need to take an indexer. And this is index. Can we reper transparent that? It's going to break everything. Um. And I think I'll actually do this at the end. Yeah, no. No, we'll do it first. Uh, index, indexer. Index, indexer. Index. Self.index. Index, indexer. Index. Index, indexer. Transparence. Okay. Now, basically, anywhere that I use numeraf, this has to take an index now. But I think this will work. I'll take a little bit of boilerplate. But this actually isn't nearly as bad as the other generic those other generics are brutal dude i uh, like i'm gonna need to like play some fucking zoonotic or something to chill because i that sucked doing those basically two rewrites felt like shit good uh these will have numerefs 
These should all have uh, index and scope here. So these should be pretty easy. Index, 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 stop, index, index. Woo! Did we make it? We're like probably pretty close. Probably a lot of issues here. Are these all in lib? Yeah. Uh. Um, these we can actually just do, uh, the hard-coded one. Well, mm, now I actually have a generic I pass into these. Feels bad, but I guess I, I'm gonna make it so this can be generic. Um, index, index. Does this break anything? I don't think so because I can't create these reference. The ID and index are associated. Uh, we should be good. We'll get rid of. Oh, we'll keep this. We're gonna have to update our macros. We're gonna have to update a lot, 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 a lot of things. Uh, lib uh, two fifty four. Yep, this is not happy because of the multiple lifetimes. Uh, and these are, I guess, comma-separated lifetimes? Okay. Kind of didn't want to start with the macros, but uh, I guess that's where we're going, isn't it? Um... This comma separated. Woof. 274. Uh, 282. No matches for poolable. No rules match index. Oh, it's not a lifetime, it's a generic. Okay, we're, we're gonna do that later. I really don't wanna worry about that yet. So we'll just say that these are I32s, are the index types used for these. Um, Prefix slice, once again, we're gonna comment that out. I don't wanna work on implementations until we get everything working. Um, index already used. That makes sense. So we're gonna have a couple of these where I overdid index. Yeah, like here. Don't need to specify indexer. Um, I actually do. I need to not specify it here. Uh, 452 in local pool. Uh, this takes an index. An index? How do we miss that? 
How did we miss that one? That that's kind of a surprise. Um, twenty one in parameters. Yep, these take an index, and we'll say index here is an indexer. We'll just pass it on this. I don't really want to make the type database itself. Well, technically these should never change for a given type database. But, uh, we also have to do it here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Nice. And then the actual implementations. I really hope that we got all the fields that we wanted uh, or all the generics that we wanted but I think so I don't think we have any more to add 48 index so I really don't want to keep adding these this really sucks dude this is not fun Copy. Uh, and that's because, yeah, sweet. That's great. Because index has to be copy. Perfect. No problem. We can do that. Indexer is requires copy. Done. Uh, pullable index cannot be shared between threads safely. Oh, yep. Copy, send, and sync. No problem. All right, now is the actual implementation. So this is basically anywhere that we do like dot zero to actually access these fields uh, or dot index, so dot index. Um, so like this. Okay, so what do we need to be able to do with an index? We have to do math and this we pass it. Actually, we can just look for eye sizes for a while. Um, this is an index. We're not going to be able to do that. But that's okay. We'll let that fail. Uh, this as well. Uh, this as well. And this. Okay, so we have to be able to cast these. Um... And index. And index. Okay. I like how it complains that an unsafe code block cannot be safely shared. Yeah. Uh, it has two type parameters, but its trait has three. Uh, 172. That is this. Um. Do I need to shadow this? How do I do this? Do I have to move it up to here? I mean, it can. Hmm. I was complaining on the 155. Okay, I guess deserialize has to take an indexer. Does it? No, it doesn't have to. 
But it shouldn't have to take that. Right? So if you get rid of this... One seventy two deserializes two type parameters. Can I shadow it? Already used. Um... So I need index in scope by here. I mean, I could, I could bind this like index two. Uh, uh, which is kind of weird, but I can, I think this is, I don't like this. Uh. I think this is fine. Okay. It's fine. Chat. Relax. It's fine. Junior web engineer having a hard time understanding anything that's going on. Me too. Uh, this is very, very, very difficult stuff. Uh, expected two for types. It needs an index and a T. Looks like that index two stuff didn't work either. Uh, cringe. U size is index. Yep. Yep. Can't do the cast. 122 in local pool. Let's do this now. Okay. So, uh, we need to be able to do this. Um, I guess we'll have end. So we have U sizes. We have atomic U sizes in use. And I think what we'll do is we'll have like two from U size, maybe. And that has to be a try into. Um, I think I might do the math as U sizes and like the in use as U sizes and then I guess we'll do like a lossless conversion to a U size and vice versa. So we'll do U size into that. Um, okay. Associated type for atomic variant. I don't, I don't think I want to do that. I think I'd rather just convert tune from U sizes. Um, I mean, I could do that. This does have an index. So this could be like a, this could be like an index, uh, atomic, but then that is, let's see what happens here. Uh, atomic. Uh, I guess an indexer will have a 
Yeah, but then this has to be like an atomic indexer, and then we have to implement functions on that too. I mean, we can do it. It's probably more correct. Um, atomic variance for this indexer, and this little atomic indexer. Mom. But mom. The <laughs> senior Spider-Man. Oh, okay, so we can do that. Uh Type atomic is atomic I32. Use uh, core sync atomic atomic I32. Okay, okay. Uh, unsafe ample atomic indexer for atomic I32. Uh, copy's not implemented for that? That's fine. Do you ever get your code back? We don't know yet. We'll know in 49%. 39%. Okay, uh, 66. Uh, I guess we'll just do new. So this is index atomic new zero. Mm -hmm. Which means that this has to be new. It has to take in a value. And this has to be referential to the other thing. So type... Uh, what's the opposite of atomic? Um, um, new Samoda sick, 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 uh, impl, um, indexer, I 32 atomic, I 32. Uh, macro rules, simple indexer, uh, TY, ATY, uh, unsafe, ample indexer for TY, unsafe, ample atomic indexer for ATY. I really wish Rust had better generic support for um, integers. Uh, self val. Uh, the non atomic. Honestly, we don't even need that. Do we? We do. The non atomic uh, version of this uh, indexer. This is the atomic variant of this indexer. Okay, there we go. Uh, creates a new atomic value. This returns a self. And then we'll do fn new here. Val. Uh, type. Val. Uh, is a, uh, this is tie. And then this is type atomic is ATY. Then we have new. Um, which we can say is uh, tie yields a self. ATY and we can say ATY new val. Yep, and these bad boys.
Okay. We won't need ordering either. Wish you could coerce U32s into U64 implicitly? Ooh, gross. Gross, 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 gross. No, no, no. Stop. Gross. Stop. No. 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 You're just wrong. You're just objectively wrong. That's fucking terrible. Gross. Stop. Just, just stop. Just, just stop. Uh, fetch updates. Ordering, ordering. Um, so I guess we'll implement fetch updates. Uh, fetch update. Let's see. Set order. Uh, self. Set order. Fetch order. Uh, F. Yields the results. Uh, ATY. ATY. And then... Fetch update, set order, fetch order F. Uh, where F is uh, funmut, uh, oops, tie into tie. Um, update anatomic value, and this is on self val, self val, self val, self val. <laughs> While we're at it, let's coerce floats to ins. Yuck! Evil. Lit literally evil. Uh, use core sync atomic ordering. F. Scroll, 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 scroll. 66. New. Mm hmm, mm hmm, mm hmm, mm hmm. Come on. Come on, big money, no whammies. Why have ints in the first place? Floats have plenty of bits in the mantissa. <sighs> New val. Okay. New tie. Uh, this tie. Uh, yeah. Index zero. Mm-hmm. What's wrong with that? 
What's wrong with that? Found index? And it wants a uh, val? Oh, it doesn't know that's the same thing. Monkers, uh, new zero atomic value. Mm hmm. 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 Scroll, 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 scroll. All right, we're getting there. Check dad. Uh, on Val. So the value, the indexer. So the indexer needs to implement fetch add. Because of this, or check dad. Okay. Wouldn't it be cool if these were implemented as traits on integers? Wouldn't that be cool? Yeah, that would be really cool because then we could use an integer trait, but we can't. Uh, self RHS, self yields option, self. Self checked add RHS. That's atomic. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm mhm. Mm mhm. Mm mhm. Mm mhm. Mm mhm. I checked integer addition. Mhm. Mm uh, one forty one expected associated type found u size align mask. Align mask is the Lay a line, uh, I see. Um, 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 so we need a way of converting a U size. Into and uh, uh, yeah, U size conversion into an index. This is kind of why I wish I just did the math on the U sizes and then just converted, you know? You know, you're picking up what I'm putting down there. Um, alignment mask. Well, we've already commit, I guess. Uh, this is going to be... Try into... Map, uh, okay, or error allocation failure. Uh, that's a result. Um, map error. From U size not implemented for this. Yep. So um what we'll do is for an indexer, this has to implement uh try from U size. Right? Can't use the question mark operator. And a closure that returns this. Function. Re uh, 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 uh. Checked add is an option.
What? Doesn't fetch update. What? Oh, chat, why did you make me do this? This sucks. Uh, fun moat. Option bull. Oh. Where FN. This returns an option. Uh, option. I was about to say, like, that should just work as is. Uh, can't unary invert that? Okay, now I'm really regretting doing this stupid, like, actually having the atomic and... That was a stupid idea, chat. This is dumb. That was a stupid idea. Um, that's chat's fault. Chat told me to do it, and they were wrong, because they're dumb. Okay. Decoin. <laughs> uh, Okay, D colons, D colons galore. You can't D colon me. It's not legal. Uh, one for one. Uh... Okay. So this we need to convert into it. Um, let uh, end index is equal to end dot try into. All right. So we try to convert that, and then we'll say if end index is greater than or equal to zero, and end is less than or equal to numa size. So we have to be able to convert that correctly. Um, so if there's truncation there, so we're using use sizes for all our math and stuff. We make sure that the end index is greater than or equal to zero, which makes sure that there wasn't any truncation or conversion issues. Uh, I can't use question on that because this needs to be, uh, okay. Raid, hell yeah! Oh, M MT Taggart, how was your stream? What were you up to? We're, uh, we're in the middle of a refactor and we're hating ourselves right now. Uh, try into. I think this is fine. I don't think we need that anymore. Um, if end is less than or equal to the numa size, then this, uh, I'm guessing try into, uh, it doesn't rec doesn't allow overflows, right? Ooh, this is done. Okay. Uh... Nope, nope, it's gone. Rip. Okay, um... So, uh, yeah, you got fucked. N nice try with your predictions. Uh, choose outcome. Uh, no. The answer is no. Uh... <laughs> you get fucked. <laughs> Redistribute. 
the Ode. Okay. Uh, so uh, let me check this. I'm guessing try into uh, works the way that I expect, which would be that uh, like uh, 128 try into uh, uh, an I8. This should fail, right? Right, that'll fail. Uh, try into, uh, let foo i8 is equal to this. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna see if this works. I think it does. Beautiful. So, uh, we're gonna try to convert the end of the allocation into an index, and if that fails... Then we know that it goes out of bounds of a signed integer. Uh, then we make sure is the end in bounds of the numa size. If so, then we're good. Okay. Right. Brav. Uh, and then. Uh, right here. Right here. There's going to be a try into unwrap. Because that, that one can't fail. You're right, right. Numa. We got the Numa here. Get the allocation base, which is a U size. We convert that. We make sure everything fits. Or why? For now. Uh, okay. Unwrap. Yeah. It's Tuesday, eh? For God, keep going, mate. Can't, can't stop, won't stop. Then, uh, right fucking here, we're gonna do the same thing. We're just gonna convert it into, uh, into, into, uh, you shies. Oh, fucking hell, mate. Tag it, Raid Poggy. That has one way to immediately lose Raiders. <laughs> <laughs> oh fucking hell mate chat wins a little money and immediately blows it all like sailors coming to ashore yeah right it's no good 170 oh is this okay must be equal to zero which means that we should be able to do this conversion, right? Right, brav, keep going. Oh, fucking hell! You fucking chavs! Oh, I fucking hate you all, you know? You just. You, you just. Some right wankers, yeah? Or oh, try into. You size, right? Some some good trait bounds, some tra trait with a she h, you know. You got an h there. Or oh, convert that. So this should uh, unconditionally work. Greater than or equal to zero. It should be smaller than a u size. Oh, not necessarily. Or oh, try into dot unwrap. You having a laugh, mate? Yeah? You fucking having a laugh, mate? Okay. Convert that into a U size. Let's, uh, let's say this is U size. Make sure that converts. Um, okay. So this doesn't work on 32 bit anymore. If it's 32-bit, then, uh, then, well, we have, it technically does. Fucking hell, mate. Uh, 249. We got a U size. Uh, dot try. Try. With a CH. Try. Try. Okay, unwrap. Convert the index. You taking the piss, mate? <laughs> Uh, all right, uh, let index is equal to, equal to, uh, elements, 
As you shies. Why is this... You're taking the piss, mate. Our uh, pool index. Uh, let the pool index... Uh, index is equal to... Uh, pool index... Dot... Try into OK unwrap. And that can't fail. I don't think... Uh, oh, val index. Val index. Ah, <gasps> oh, you taking the piss, mate. Uh, this is val index. Val, I think it's been three minutes. You fucking chavs. Val index is he, uh, this is a u size which is equal to val.index. Try into dot okay dot unwrap. God fucking damn it. You fucking taking the piss, mate. Oh, fucking hell. Thought this would be a fun stream, but no, instead, this is just a fucking ass stream. Cry into unwrap. Okay. You think we're out of points? Yes, <laughs> Uh, are you shies? Index try into okay dot unwrap. None of these things should be failing. Everything should be easy. Uh 115. Uh what? local oh, oh mate, we're in the local pool, yeah? Yeah, we're going for a swim. Going into the local pool, yeah. Brav. Oi 64. Nice size. No, uh, uh, just ice size. We uh, we won't fucking implement uh, an i64. That doesn't really make any sense, right? If you want to do an i64, you're gonna have to be on a 64-bit system anyway. So just use an i size, you know, mate, brav. Uh, okay. So what's what's going on here? Is it the semicolon? Yeah. Uh, more, ah, um, uh, more curly braces? Add uh, curly braces? No, no, what, what's going on now, mate? What's the problem? Brav? <laughs> oh, I just, okay, I just made a copy of this? Okay, cool. Okay, okay. Okay. Okay, that's all it was. All right, all right, all right, all right, 210. Uh, uh, Jesus Christ. 210, uh, so we got the allocation base here. Too much to accent it hurts my brain. This isn't, oh. Well, we're right back into it, mate. Get fucked. Cheerio. Hope you're enjoying that fucking accent. Yeah. Yeah, fucking chavs. Eve. Oh, let's see. Let me see what time the pub closes. I was thinking about maybe going out for the pub, you know? Maybe you go to the pub. Oh, let me check. One's... Oh, let's fucking see here, yeah, mate, you know? Mmm, let's do a little scan, little scan, zoom, a little zoom in here. I see. Open until 2200. Uh, yeah, so right now what we're doing is we're making it so that you can use references of any index of any type so that you can have smaller pointers than pointers uh, because that's better for perf, you know? So we're looking around here. Uh, we're looking at some eye sizes. So anywhere where we have maybe a U size, that's a bad. We don't want we don't want a U size. Well, U size is okay here. So we're just going through, we're making this real easy. Nothing is too difficult about what we're doing. Super simple coding practice stuff. Pretty basic stuff. Uh, get the end. Uh, we're gonna convert that into an index. Uh, in index, uh, we're gonna do a conversion here. 
pretty pretty straightforward stuff. Really nothing too hard here. Code's compiling just fine. Everything's working great. Try into, okay, unwrap this. Make sure that that fits inside of a sign type because we're working with an unsigned thing. Then we want to make sure that that is in bounds of a local U size. Yeah, yeah, right. That looks good. Okay, then we return this. Okay. Okay. Uh, that's fucking great, mate. You know, everything's, everything's hunky-dory. Uh, going to here, getting 100 errors. That's great. It's fantastic. It's just a refactoring. Just a small little refactoring. Get a point with the mates. But <laughs> took a point to with the lads. <laughs> Oh, uh, oh! Uh, I'm glad we can all take the piss out of the Brits, you know? Them fucking, fucking knackers, you know? <laughs> Taking the piss. All right, all right. You ran out of that. You ran out of that. Refactoring. <laughs> okay. Index. I'm really scared this code's gonna be just very wrong, okay? Where are we at now? 162. Uh, wants an index? Gotta- that- we should be able to wrapping add that min. And we should be good. That sets the top bit. No. Uh, no, that's not okay. Oh, this is so difficult, chat. Why do we do this? We're always gonna just do an eye size anyways. End index. Make sure that the end doesn't overflow the bounds of that. Yup. Now I feel informed because I fed the information in a British accent and I'm sure it was accurate. Well. The Brits are known for their intelligence and their teeth and their, uh, you know, you know. Uh, okay. Indexer. That returns an index. Because that's a super, super, super negative number. And we need to wrapping add the, uh, mm, uh, we got to convert it and then like, we'll, okay. Okay. Relax chat. Relax. We're going to do elk base dot try into dot. Okay. Dot unwrap dot, uh, Set top bit. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. You like that? Okay. Okay. The Brits are known for the imperial system and Mr. Brightside pretty good record. <laughs> uh, really? It needs type annotations for that? It probably needs type annotations because we haven't defined set top bit yet. Unfound. Yep. That's great. Then here. Uh, convert it to a non-negative index. So we'll do let index equals index dot clear top bit, uh, and then we'll convert this into a u size. You're picking up what I'm putting down, chat. Clear the top bit. 
Convert it into a U size. Set clear, clear. Uh, this comparison can't be done. I don't know. We can just add partial ord with itself, right? Yeah. Partial ord with itself. That'll be fine. Then we can do less than zero. Uh, and it unchecked. 359. Uh, that's just pool index. Oh, wait. We got to do math now. Val index. And val is, uh, ba okay. Yep. So, mm-hmm. Uh, yes. So, that is the, of bad, good, not good. Yeah, we're doing a lot of math. Uh, the odds that this code works after all this refactoring is basically zero. Um, so what do we need to do? For each of the elements, go through, get the val index as a size. How did that work? How did that ever work? That never worked. Right? That would have never worked. How would that have worked? Um. I mean, it, it would have worked because it was a use size. Layout, get that. Blah, blah, blah. Base. You know? Um, this is tough. Uh, let's val index u size is equal to val index clear top bits dot try into dot unwrap dot okay. Bam. And then we have to convert it back. I don't like that. I don't like that we got to convert it back now. Try into. Okay. Unwrap. Set top bit. Um. Uh -huh. This. Get uncheck slice index uh, dot clear top bits dot try into dot okay dot unwrap. Mm-hmm. Right? Uh, yep. Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. Set the uh, toggle the top bits of uh, the index. Looking forward to August. I think I remember hearing Russell get a neat feature at it. Yeah, there's no way we're getting safe transmutes in my lifetime. 
what else do we want on this uh plus partial e uh partial ord against itself Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. Uh, and then we can just do, uh, const zero, tie is zero. Uh, const zero, uh, self, uh, zero. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Mm-hmm. 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 Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. How do we do this? Do we just manually implement it for all the indexers? I think so. I don't like this, but uh, I think we have to do it. Uh huh. Uh... Um, okay. No, we can't do that. Well, wait, can we? No, we can't. Shit. So I guess we have to add index to deserialize. Okay. Index, indexer, here we go. Holy shit, it doesn't end! Fuck, dude! This code literally hasn't built in like five hours. <sighs> Hate this so much. I just want it to be done. <laughs> okay, it builds. Prefix slice.
Holy shit, did I get that first try? Holy shit, I'm brilliant. I don't think this is going to work, though. I think we broke it. Yeah, it works. Let's try an I-8. Yep, that's negative 128. That's correct. And then let's see if we can do a NUMA reference. Uh, NF is NA.new6U8 uh, unwrap. Okay, so we should be able to do a NUMA accessor on that. Um, NUMA accessor should be able to read NF. Yep, and that's 6. And then we should be able to do an LA get. Not We can't LA get NF. Because that needs to be converted. Uh, so what we need to do is we need to convert that through NA. So NA dot localize, I think is what it's called. So localize an NF. Localize on local pool. Oh, LA get LA localize. So we localize that and that works. Shit. Did we get everything right? Did we actually get everything right there? Because now we can print the size of that reference. Uh, size of val rf. That needs to be a reference, I think. Yeah. So this is the size of a reference. In one byte. Yeah. So we're using one byte references now. Uh, so that's really good. <laughs> okay, let's read through all this stuff then. New, uh, make sure new size, new size, alignment is max align, blah, blah, blah. Impl accessor. Um, kind of, oops. Uh, yeah, and let's see. So let's allocate. Too much. Let's do that. For let's allocate four blah in zero to one twenty eight. This should work. Oh uh, no. Um. Okay. Nuke that. That fails. We can make one hundred twenty seven. I don't think so. No, we can. We can make one hundred twenty seven of these. When we go to one twenty eight, this fails. And it fails because we just failed to do our allocation because uh, we can't encode that. Is that true? That should be on end. No, that's good. So what do we do here? Alloc raw. We return an index. We do our allocations. We make sure that the end of the allocation, which is... Um, okay, so this will make sure that it fits in that boundary. How can we do 127 allocations? Oh, because in, okay, yeah, this is fine. Yeah, we can do 128 allocations. Well, we can do 127. We make sure that you don't overflow when you do the size arithmetic. Uh, okay, and then that has to be less than the size of the actual pool. That makes sense. Um, allocation failure, blah, blah, blah. Go through here. Now we're working with index again. We just convert it into a U size. It has to be a positive index. So this is just fine. We just convert it directly. Um, then, uh, let's see. Initialize new, get unchecked. Once again, it has to be positive, so we just convert it directly through and use it. Then here, for initializing a slice, we convert it through to get that base. This doesn't need to go through that conversion stage anymore. 
Um, one line, one line, one line. No. Uh, okay, then we compute that index. And then here we convert it back into uh, the actual index type, which is fine. Uh, here, when we're getting unchecked, do the same thing. We just get the U size. Now everything from this point is U size based. So that's all good. So the hard part is local pool. Um, of course Miri passes. How would Miri not pass? My code's fucking perfect. Um... Do, 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 do. Okay. Here we do the same thing. We make sure that it fits. We're doing all unsigned arithmetic here. We make sure that it fits in bounds, uh, which is good. Yep. And then we try into, so we convert it on the alloc base. And then we toggle the top bit to set that it's local. Because it was, we're all U sizes stuff here, and then we toggle the top bit, and now it is no longer U size. It's now negative. So then in this situation, convert the index to a non negative index. So this is init unchecked. We toggle the top bit, then we convert it into a U size, which is correct. So we clear the top bit, we convert it to a U size. Now it's the U size index. We're basically undoing this. So we toggle the top bit, it undoes this. Then we convert it back to a U size, which we know we can do. Uh, then init, all of this stuff is fine. All these things are working with these indexes that we get from there. Get unchecked, this is going to toggle the top bit. It has to be negative. We toggle the top bit, we unwrap it to get that U size. So that looks great. Here, if it's less than zero, then it's a local, otherwise it's a NUMA. Um, here, that's fine, doesn't do anything. Okay, this is where it's tough. We take it, we toggle it. Once again, we undo that, so now it's positive again. We convert it into a U size, which we know it will fit inside of a U size. Um, and then we compute the index for that pool index, which is positive. Uh, we then call in it to get that temporary value. We then convert it back by doing pool index, try into to convert it into an index, which is now an unsigned but positive, and then we toggle it again to make it negative when we do that. And then new slice, here's the same thing. We get the U size, we undo that, convert it to U size. I think we actually just did everything right the first try. Uh, check for less than zero uh, for local versus NUMA, and yeah, I think we're cool. So uh, cargo Miri run. And of course, this is just gonna work. Yep, no problems, it's perfect, there's no flaws. Um, yeah, and then if we were to do, uh, wow, I think we're good. And then we should be able to localize things in here. So even though we've done all of the allocations we can do, now I can do an L, I can still print line of the, um, la.get la.localize of nf so i should still be able to access that six even though we've consumed everything in the local accessor uh which makes sense uh let's make sure that we can actually access all of these fields make sure that that is working as well um but yeah there's no reason we shouldn't be able to rf here so this is uh we'll just do um ii as i8 Yep. Yep. So we allocate 127 values, 0 through 126. We can't do 128 because, similar to Rust, we enforce that you're able to go one index out of bounds. So Rust requires, um, it requires that you can add the length to a pointer without overflowing, right? And that's kind of what I'm doing. Well, it's exactly what I'm doing here. Um, because 127 plus 1 is 128, which does not fit in a I8 positively, right? But yeah, we can access all those fields. Oh, the Primogen coming in with a big raid! 
Didn't you? Did you stream twice today? Did you stream twice today? Did Primogen stream twice today? That's that's something I need to know. Because if he streamed twice today, then then we that's yeah we Primogen, are you okay? He got two buns. Two X back to back champs. Hell yeah. Wow. Huh. So were there like two separate events? What were the two streams? How are there two streams? Like a Moses stream has been a hot minute. Then we're streaming all the time now. Kind of. Maybe not. Thanks for all the followers, everyone. I appreciate them. I see all those followers coming in. Uh, Prime has lost it. Can't even curl. What was, uh, what was going on with uh, curl in Primogen's stream there? Holy shit. Um, this is great. This is fucking awesome. Streams resulted in a final score of Bun 1, Primogen 1. You're telling me Primogen beat a Bun? Bun's got him excited. The two time. Hell yeah. Thank you so much for the follows. I haven't been streaming too much in the past like six months, but I've been trying to more regularly stream, I guess, question mark. Uh, all I know is I'm rich in Prime's channel now and Tej is poor <laughs> is right in the world. Oh, was there a gamble? Was there some gambling? We did some gambling today. <laughs> we, uh, what was our... We gambled today on whether... So I ac I accidentally deleted my code today, chat. Now, luckily, it wasn't my important code, but I did accidentally delete quite a bit of code today. Uh, and there was a bet of whether or not we'd be able to recover it. We couldn't. We couldn't recover it. We tried. We tried. We did this. We did some recovery stuff. Uh, like, even dump units. We recovered some stuff. We recovered some things. But we didn't, we didn't recover everything. We got our Tommel file. We got our make file that was broken. Uh, but, yeah, we didn't, we didn't get our code back. No source can... No, of course we don't do source control. <laughs> no, uh, not for that project. That was an unrelated thing. It was just kind of a funny thing to start off the stream. It doesn't actually really matter. <laughs> Our, the real code is absolutely source controlled. Win 18k, only noobs bet for first time success. Uh, something beautiful and believing. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Appreciate the streams. You got me through a very rough pandemic. Aww. Job loss, career change, and job success. Well, okay, you got a fucking roller coaster of a life you've been going on, bearded wench. Well, bearded wrench, but we're just gonna call you bearded wench here. Um, <laughs> huge controversial gamble outcome. It's not the first time. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, okay. So chat, uh, it looks like we've been very productive here because our code builds, but you missed out on about five hours of refactoring and our code not compiling. So we we literally spent. We literally spent five hours refactoring your code, and then we tried some features that are, like, not complete in Rust. And then, chat, what happened when we used incomplete features in Rust? <laughs> oh, mamma mia! Ah! <laughs> it was absolutely riveting! But we got the pasta, we got the meatballs, we got the strombolis. I'm gonna make a spaghetti and a meatball tonight. <laughs> Max, we going to make a spaghetti and a meatball tonight. Maybe a tortellini. <laughs> Doesn't the world blow up? Yeah, they, they worked until they didn't. It did work great, and then we broke lifetimes. Borrow check ruined our lifetimes. It really did. So now, you'll see, if we run this, the code does compile now. We're actually gonna say git commit am. Code actually compiles now. Okay? Uh, history C, cargo watch, clear. Uh, yeah. Oh, Buff Seagull wants a Pluffy. Pluffy. A, a Pluffy. A Buff Seagull! Uh, you're gonna be the taco today. Uh, compile, ship it. Exactly. Uh, let's not light these on fire. That would be no fun. 
So we got uh, that and uh, this and a uh, taco out front. Going for the romantic candle at stream vibe. Is the candle still in frame? Barely. Where do I frame the camera? Or the, the candle? I want to not die. I don't want to like catch these on fire. Cause I don't, I won't read Twitch chat and I know exactly what would happen. Twitch chat would be like, yo, your plushies are on fire. And then I would literally like not read chat. <laughs> Taco because Tuesday. Yeah, exactly. Uh, okay. So, uh, okay. We can bring you on a little rundown now that we have a bunch of people on what we have now accomplished. Uh, we've used a lot of generics. I know, uh, I know as, as, as Go programmers, you don't really know what generics are. <laughs> so uh, we've been working with some generics, and this is like a super, super, super duper fast allocator. Um, wait, Taco Tuesday is a trademark? Really? Really? How do you trademark that? Okay, that's gross. Uh, anyways, so we've been working on an allocator here that's called Alicado. And Alicado is a super, super fast allocator that's meant for deserializing and like fuzzing and putting things into object pools and stuff. Um, so let's see if we can actually get the object pool stuff. Uh, we're going to skip it for now. So basically, we made a really, really fast thing. So um, uh, we added a bunch of generics today. And so we have the size. This is basically the size of a pointer. And we can change the size of a pointer, which is nice. Potato Olays are really good. Uh, this is the type database, which right now we're using the null type database. Uh, the shift stuff we actually haven't implemented yet. Then this is the size of the pool. So let's do like, uh, I don't know. Let's just do size. And we'll do con size, u size is equal to, I don't know, a gig. We'll make a, no, we'll make like a 32 gig pool. And then, uh, check this out. So what we're going to do is we're going to allocate a bunch of values in that pool. So we're going to say local accessor dot new 5u8, right? So we're just going to, uh, we're going to allocate a bunch of these. How many of these do we want to allocate for this in zero to, uh, a gig? Let's allocate a gig of one byte allocations. How does that sound? Um... Okay, so that should, yeah. Cargo run release. This is going to take long to build because we have an LTO on and stuff. Uh, okay, and then IT is standard time instance instance now. And then we'll do let's elapsed is equal to IT elapsed uh, uh, as seconds F64. Prints. Uh, this is going to tell us our allocations per second, uh, or like, the, mm, uh, yeah, this is going to be million allocs per second, number of allocations per second, and then we'll do elapsed, and we did, how many allocations, this, uh, this, as F64, uh, divided by this, uh, divided by 1e6. So number of allocations that we did uh, divided by a million and then elapsed. So this will tell us how many allocations per second we can do. <laughs> Long to build five seconds. Okay, so we can do 2.2 billion allocations a second. And I think that's still just warming up caches. So let's just put this in a loop now. Uh, loop this uh, here. Okay. So this is the number of allocations we can do per second. Come on. Let's see. Let's see what we got. Okay. Uh, so we can do... Wow, you can see system noise on here. I'm going to do uh, task set C1. Uh, actually, what's the NUMA control? NUMA control... Uh... How does this work again? Uh, man, Numa CTL. Uh, okay, Numa CTL. We're going to say 
allocate memory from nodes. We're going to do only execute command on the CPUs of nodes. Uh, and... No, I don't want that. I want... Try to allocate on the current node of the process, but if it can't be allocated, fall back. Ooh, I actually want to... Can I do stricter than that? Preferably allocate on node, but if it can't be allocated, fall back. Hmm, hmm. Strict. Uh, what's this? Strict. Uh, gives an error when a page in the policy area in the shared memory segment was... Uh, but no. No, no. Hmm. Uh, inter we don't want interleave membind. Only allocate from nodes. Allocation will fail if there's... Okay, that's what we want. Uh, so M0. So we're going to allocate from that node. And then we're going to bind the CPU. Only execute on these CPUs. So we'll say... Uh, we'll do four. Uh, cargo run release. And then hopefully we see a lot of CPU usage on that. On four. Yes. Nice. So now it's way more stable. Oh! Oh, yeah. So let's see how much slower it is if we go to a different node. How many cores do we have? We have 48 cores. So let's go to, like, uh, this is probably physical CPUs. If we go to 12, is this slower? Look at that! Look at that! Fuck yeah! Let's go! Let's go, baby! Um, so you can see if we go to 11, this is faster again. And that's because it's node local. It's very important to use lo node local stuff. My tablet won't let it play 2160p? Really? Weird. Um, is it possible to compare it to a trivial allocator? N there's really no reason. It it's so much faster. It's just not even fair. <laughs> but yeah, so yeah, we can, do about, uh, we can do about 11 billion allocations per second on a single core, uh, which is pretty good in the grand scheme of things. Um, I mean, if you want to see what it looks like for, like, a libc malloc, we can do that. Uh, okay, um, let's just replace this, and we'll do, uh, uh, four blah in zero to this. Uh, we can do, uh, libc malloc, uh, unsafe on all this. Uh, let pointer... Then we have to initialize that to a five for it to be fair. Allocate one uh, as mute u8. And then we have to free it. Technically, mine doesn't free it until the very end. So we have to do the same thing here. Uh, so we have to make a list. Let mute elx is vec new, uh, which we can put up here. We can do elx.clear. And then we can do push pointer and then uh for all of the allocations for elk and elks uh then we'll do an unsafe libc free of elk uh and then we have to do uh, cargo uh dependencies libc is star okay Uh, okay, uh, semi, yeah. And I think this is now basically the same semantics, uh, as mute blah. Okay. Uh, I don't even know if this will finish, to be honest. <laughs> will malloc be more than a millisecond? Yeah, it's probably like five millisecond, I would guess. Won't the push allocate too? It will, but eventually it will stop allocating. So the first one will be very slow, and then it will get faster and faster with time. But this just might not even complete, to be honest. This just might not even complete. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. <clears throat> the first one's going to be slow. Don't, like, the first one, it's warming up all the caches. It's warming up the allocators. It's, like, doing a bunch of stuff. So the first one's going to be slow. That's totally fine. Um, there it is. 25 millisecond. The next one's probably going to be like double or 4x that. Unlucky.
But this should be basically the exact same semantics as mine with Malik. Now mine's a bump. Yeah, double. And it will now probably be relatively stable at this. And we're doing uh, core 11. Yep, that's good. Yep, 55. And it's probably going to be 55 again. It's probably going to be like right there. I doubt it. 58. Yeah, that's like noise, basically. System noise, effectively. Um, yeah. So we're a little bit faster than Malik in that regard, I would say. Um, and Elks. You can get rid of that. Yeah. And then here's ours. Same, same thing. And we get, yep, 11 billion per second. So how much faster is that? Python. Python. This divided by... Let's grab this one. It's the best one. Yeah, we're like 200 times faster. That's not bad. <laughs> That's not bad. That's not bad. And then uh, what if we change it to a U128, right? So now we can do it in like megabytes per second. Uh, so now these are 16 bytes each just for funsies. Uh, that's going to overflow. Uh, U64. How many megabytes a second of allocations can we do? And this is not MIBS uh, 1024, 1024. So now this is benchmarking how, how many megabytes a second of allocations we can do on a single core. First one's slow. Oh, it's about the same. Oh, oh, okay. Uh, yeah, let's let's do some math, chat. Um, chat, are you ready to do some math? Because <laughs> I think I'm ready to do math. Uh, what do we do? We did that. We didn't do that. We did that. We didn't do that. And we didn't do that. Okay, okay. Uh, uh, let's do some math here. Um, uh, how do you get the, uh, what's the LS topo? So we are running on these cores, right? We pin to core 11 actually. So we're pinned on this core. So we're running on a physical core and we're allocating out of Numa node zero, right? That's those arguments we're passing. So Numa node zero core 11. So we are specifically allocating out of this node on this thing. Uh, but let's take a look at our hardware. So this is a cat proc CPU info. It's a Xeon Silver 4310. Let's see what we got here. It is a 4310. Uh, which is... Uh, we have... Eight memory channels of 2667. Okay. Uh, what's 2667? What can this do? I don't know how DDR works. I don't know what this means. I really should understand how this works. Um, how big is a transfer? 64 bits? Uh, cause that's mega transfers per second. Yeah. Mega transfers per second. Um, no, 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 no. Oh, here we go. Data rate. Peak transfer. Okay, what's that math then? Uh, if we were to take uh, 2666, peak transfer is this, divided by... That's 8? Oh, it's 8 bits per? That's it? You're only doing 8 bits per mega transfer? That's easy math. <laughs> that's really easy math. Yeah, it's 8.00. That's not a coincidence. Um, so,
Oh, yes, it's eight bytes, 64 bits. Yes, correct. So we should be able to get like 21 gigs a second. And I guess you just can't saturate that on a single core. Is it just not possible? Really? Really? What if I put this into uh, L1 territory? So we'll do like 32K. Um, uh, and we'll do U8s again. Test size. Test size. Yeah, and there's just too much spew. I need to average this, that, this out now. Um, so what we'll do is we'll do like four blah in zero to 1,000. So we'll run this a 1,000 times. Actually, 1024. Compilers like powers of two. Uh, so then we can get rid of the one of the divides. So we're going to run the test 1,024 times to average it a bit. But we're only doing 32K of allocations and then freeing. Okay. Okay, I guess we will do a meg of these then. I just not divide it down. Wait, no. Wait. Uh no. Yeah, this is correct. Uh okay. So are we bottlenecking on RAM? Memory channels. How does that work? So what is this? What is this number? Uh, so let's compute theoretical for uh, L1 cache. So you can do a... Ooh, do you think we get a speed up if we do this? Uh, Rust flags, C target, CPU is native. Probably not. I don't think this will change anything. It might even make it worse. Oh, nope. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, so we can, do a, we can do 164 billion allocations per second. So that's pretty good. Raise your hand if you think that's pretty good. Can one core only use one channel? I don't know. m is native. Yeah, that's effectively what we just did. Um, so this is pretty fast. Um... Yeah, uh, const test average, uh, u size is 1024 times 1024. Uh, this is test average. Uh, and then this is going to be bulk. So there's a billion allocations per second. Test size times test average. That's the number of allocations that we perform. Then we'll divide this by 29 and then per second. So this is not megabytes anymore. This is just per second allocations. Yeah, so we're getting about 100, 173 billion allocations a second on a single core, which is pretty, it's pretty good. Uh, <laughs> that's pretty good. <laughs> uh, we could do the same thing now with um, Malik, right? So we'll do the same thing with Malik. We'll allocate an outside loop. So we have an inside loop of test size. And then we have an outside loop of uh, test average. So now this is fair because it's going to be in cache. So allocate and then free it all. So it's all in Ellen cache. Let's see what this is. So 172 billion is the number to beat. Mm, double free. Oh, yeah, we got to clear up here. There we go. <laughs> there we go. Memory corruption. That's how you use Rust. Shit, we are in Rust. <laughs> Is allocating U8s faster than I sizes? No, it's meant to be like a worst case scenario. PGO can increase these numbers? No, it definitely can't. <laughs> it, definitely, it definitely can't. <laughs> Not, not in my case. Maybe, maybe in Malik's case, probably not. 
Just making sure it's extra free. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so 70, 172 billion is the number to beat here. Uh, this might take a minute. <laughs> it's a fair test. I'm going to go start reheating my food. Be right back. Okay. It, oh, it's not done yet. Well, I think we're faster. If you listen closely, you see uh, Libsy screwing in the background. We might need to decrease the number of runs, uh, the number of averages. So this is fair. We'll just drop it down to like 32. It's still averaging on that, so it's still fine. We just need this to complete in my lifetime. Did I break something? Nope, there it is. Oh, there we go. Okay, it did, uh... Okay, it did that many. And it will now probably be twice as fast on the second iteration. Maybe. Hmm. <laughs> Mamma mia! The pizzeria! We got the alligator here. We take the allegations and we put them in the pasta bowl and we stir it up and we put the we put the anchovies in there and the olives and the olive oil. Not for <laughs> Mamma Mia This is not a good uh, bad bad uh, perf. Uh we're gonna make a save of these uh Oh there we go we got the big speed up now we can go back to mine. Now we, we make an apples to apples. We'll probably bottleneck on printf. <laughs> Frep. Okay, okay, there we go. So the apples to apples comparison is uh, this divided by this. Mm hmm. I think we have a slight speed up over Malik. <laughs> yeah, of course it's not fair because it's a bump allocator, but yeah. Um, yeah. We could do Bumpalo again. I know we did that Bumpalo last time. Um, here we go. So here's the Bumpalo allocator. So I'll grab this. So, so we can we can do an apples to apples against uh, Bumpalo, right? So we'll comment mine out. We'll use Bumpalo now. Let's make sure it's doing the same thing. Five U eight on an internal of a test size. It resets inside, and then we have an averaging of test average. And then Bump uh, will just allocate this ahead of time with the same size. And we don't need size to be that big. We can just do a gig is fine. Um, so now it's fair, right? Uh, this is literally comparing to a bump allocator. Right? 
Um, so that is test average, internal loop test size, reset each uh, iteration. All we do is we allocate a U8, and that's it, right? So this is, I would say this is a fair comparison because it's doing literally the same thing, and they're both bump allocators, right? Uh, what's our speed up on this one? Uh, bump. Uh, okay. Uh, use bump below bump. So same thing, same argument, saying everything's set up. 170 billion is the number to beat. This will probably be up there. Yeah. Yeah, this can do like 362 million a second, which is pretty good. That's pretty good. Uh, but yeah, we're still faster than that, I think. We were like 172 divided by this. So we're still about 500 times faster than what's considered to be the fastest allocator in the world. Uh, so yeah, we're doing great. <laughs> you saw you saw it here first small improvement yeah um yeah and that means that our null type database actually works fine which is pretty cool um i kind of wasn't expecting our our null type database to work but it did numa magic it's not numa magic is it's just because it uses indexes instead of uh so okay here's gonna be an interesting benchmark uh let's go back to a bigger average so we don't bottleneck on printf again um just finished water world for the first time is great oh interesting okay so yeah we're getting about 172 billion allocations per second and let's see what happens if we change this to we can use, let's see what happens if we go to an I-32. Do we get a speed up here? No. We get hit for that. Why? Why? Those try intos must not be optimizing correctly. Those try intos must be really breaking things. Whoa. Like, this still works, right? Yeah, it's still running. Um, wow, that's. Okay, we might have to rethink how we do that then. Um, kind of surprised. What about eye sizes? That's what we did. Um, let's see how that's not optimizing. Uh, can I, uh, no mangle this? Can he no mangle main? No. Uh, okay, that's really weird. So, let's see why this is getting mad. Really bad code gen. I am disappointed. What what happened? Did I move the wrong window? Where did where did I move that window to? Where did that code go? Oh, I switched it. There we go. Uh oh shit. Now we got to do this. Ah damn it. This this this. Yeah. Open. Yes. I'm really curious. Something is really catastrophically failing here. Um.
Oh, God. Huh. Okay, so that's the way that we're doing those generics. So, really, anywhere that we're using index... I'm really surprised that's not optimizing out. What what do you think is hitting us so hard here? So the only code that we're hitting right now, so we can work on optimizing only the code that we're hitting, which is just uh new. Right? So we're calling new, which is new init, new on init and init. So new on init and init. And this is Alec Raw and init unchecked. There's really nothing else that is happening here. So it's just these two functions. Alec raw and init unchecked. So we're not doing slices. We're not doing anything like that. So we can really see what's causing this problem here. Um, so we have toggle top bit. And that should be effectively free. Is it try into? Um, so there's this check here to make sure it's inbounds and index. Um, I got to think about this. So this is a problem. And this is a problem. I think I'm going to drop those try into's. And here's what I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to make it... Well, I'm going to keep those so the code continues to build. But then we're going to make an alternative implementation here. So if we were to... If we comment this out, does that... First of all, does that just get us our perf back? No. Um, okay. So then here we'll do ret try into. Here we'll just do dot into. Or uh, I don't know, like fucking. Is try into introducing branches. Yeah, I think that's exactly what's happening here. So elk base. Um. We need to convert this into an index. And we need, uh, I guess, let's add into self. Uh, okay, we'll have to make our own, I think. Um, here, impl uh, from u size for indexer fn from val u size yields self uh, or for um ty um and then we'll just i don't know if we're able to do this i don't think rust will allow us to build that yeah because it's not in the current crate so what we could do is just make our own function and we'll just say uh, fn from u size val u size yield to self. And then here we're literally just going to cast it, right? Just to be simple, uh, val as ty. This is not correct, but um, that's okay because we can make this correct with some other checks. So this will be, um, we'll do uh, ret. Uh, index from u size rets toggle top bit. Uh, elk base is it? Yeah, elk base. Um, okay. From u size, we just have to put it up here, and we're mainly just trying to see if we can get that perf back. But this is actually really good because we just added this code. Um. I don't know if this is our bottom. Like we have to go to the other use of the try into's as well. 
Actually, let's just, let's only allocate here. So let's do new uninit U8. So this won't have to do a getter on it. Uh, okay, that just, that code gets fully deleted. Okay, so if that code gets fully deleted, let's see if this is okay then. Let's see if we can use the old version that we had which is this, right? So this is the original version. Let's see if this can, can get deleted. If it can get optimized out, then I don't think it's, yeah. So then is the problem on the init side? Nevertheless, let's go to this. Go back to new. Um, okay, so we got rid of that bounce check. That's a problem. Then init unchecked. So this is going to, now we're up converting um into u size so this one we can make as well so this will be into u size uh this will take self by ownership by move return a u size and this is just basically the same thing we'll take self and we'll say self as uh, u size well, let's see if that fixes our perf issues No. Wow. So interesting. Are we getting fucked by LTO or something? No. Hmm. Hmm. From U size toggle top bit, toggle top bit into U size. Am I just op not being able to optimize through these traits? Like, are the traits killing us? Because this is really slow now. And it unchecked. Alec Raw. So here, we only did that conversion here. Otherwise, it's the same as an eye size. So is the presence of a cast causing those issues? Like literally just casting is a problem? Let's try let's try like a toggle from you size or let's make let's make um from and into we're going to make those auto toggle. Right? Um first of all let's see what this should crash. It's literally seg fault. No. What? Ha what? Oh. Uh. What the fuck is going on? What is going on? Main, main, this, here. Unwrap, failed, that is on get time. Here's the outside loop. Or no, there's the inside loop. Compare with this. What the fuck is this? Let's figure out what it's doing. This is bound checking with the size of the pool. And ink RSI, shift left move or? Shift left move. 
shift left. Move or... <laughs> what? What the shit? LVM is drunk? Yeah, this code's very, very bad code, Jen. Um, I don't think it's really my fault, but the question is, can we coerce it? Um... Let's make sure eye size still works. Let's make sure we haven't, um, broken that. But, yeah, I think LVM's trying to do something smart. Yep, so that's fine. What about I-16? Let's try the other eyes. I think anything that casts is going to be a problem. Let's do 64. Can you get rid of the use size conversion entirely? I might be able to. I-16 and I-32. What the fuck? LVM, dude. I don't support I-64 because there's no reason to. Um... So it's bound checking against the size of the uh, the pool itself. So I do an into U size here, and then there I do a toggle top bit. So we're gonna do toggle top bit is just gonna return a zero, and into U size is just gonna return a zero as well. Okay, let's see if that props. Okay, that's a good sign. So this means there's there's something going on with, uh, I think, just the existence of a trait. We're just not optimizing through those traits. Uh, nope, here's the core loop. Okay, oh, no, it's, uh, okay. So that optimized through, it's just writing five in a loop. Um... Okay. Um. Hmm. Self as you size. This wrapping ad. Okay, I'm going to. I'm going to try this. So we have a from U size and we have an into U size. And there's no reason to mark these inline, right? I don't think you can even mark these inline, can you? Okay, I can. Let's mark these all as inline. We don't do checked ad anymore, do we? I don't think so. Um, inline always on all those. So, I, I don't know. Let's see if that does anything. No. Um, is it this wrapping add? Or equals... Uh, or this. Type min. Uh, or XOR, I guess. Let's see if XOR helps. Dude. Oh, we're not even using toggle top bit anymore. So we're just using from and into. Which is technically the wrong logic. Let's see what we're getting here. I don't know how this is not crashing, to be honest. I guess we're going out of bounds behind us, but that's okay. Um, but it's still generating shit code, so... Yep, it's still doing this. Okay. 
Trades can't be optimized through a cast. Yeah, something's going on there. It's entirely a casting problem then. Let's try this. Let's try inline never. Uh, we do know the wrapping ad is fine and the correct logic. Uh, so we'll say inline never on both of these. These are the only ones we're using right now. I don't know if that will actually make them inline never, to be honest. This might be faster, potentially. No. Uh, let's see if this is inline never, though. Yep, there's the from use size. Okay, let's see what it's doing. So where's the hot loop? Here's the hot loop. From use, what's this? What's this shift left or? Or with 256. I, this shift left or stuff is the problem. Move eeks that, compare that, is making sure that's the bounds check that we normally do. Uh, so there's the conversions, and the conversions are literally just moves. Uh, move SXD, and this is move, uh, yep. So those are fine. So what are these shift lefts? So we get the result, and we shift it left by 20. Index. This could be because we're not doing the uh, correct conversion. So we want to flip this toggle top bit to make it the correct logic. So now we're doing the correct logic, right? Okay. Still slow. That's fine. That's what we expect. So, uh, like, am I do is is my implementation just wrong? Indexer from u size. Then we XOR with the top bit. Yep. Why do we shift that by thirty two bits, and then OR in two fifty six? Or with two fifty, or with a hundred. Then we, what do we do with that? We then truncate it. We shift it by thirty-two bits to the left. Then we or it with a hundred. Then we discard everything we just shifted up, which is the from u size value itself. <laughs> um we do a h up here over here here we shifted again by 20 so we shifted by 20 for 32 then we shifted by 32 so it becomes zero then we xor it so it's what the fuck is this Um, let's make sure it passes Miri. Let's make sure I'm not doing something really dumb. But yeah, it would have crashed by now. 
Like, if we get rid of that toggle, this will probably fail, right? This will probably crash Miri now. If we get rid of the toggle. Yep. Which makes sense. That's expected. Dude. I think it's trying to be smart and then it's undoing itself. Let's get rid of March Native. Shift left, then shift right. Oh, yeah, it's getting it back. So it's like trying to do an optimization that it thinks is smart, but it's actually really bad. Um... Okay, uh, so let's try toggle top bit and uh, TY. Uh, can we do this? No. Um, let's see if we can into U size. Self is U size and OX71231234. So we're going to clear the top bit on into you size there. Let's see if this does anything. Maybe that's the OK and Enum air packing. Oh, holy shit. If I don't unwrap it, what happens? Well, if I don't unwrap it, it should delete it, right? Oh my God. Is it the results? No, still the same issue, but it could be. Um, holy shit. I think it is the enum. Um... <sighs> this is why bubbling up air sometimes hurts. And this is why I kind of like panicking at the inside of allocation failures. Um... <laughs> Two nine elk base. Bam. Okay. Um. Uh... Forty one map. Uh, this is just a uh, dot in it. Straight through. No results. Always success. Why would it only slow down uh, if the type is not I size? Because it only tries to pack it if it's not I size when it has other bits in a register. And I, I entirely think that's what's going on here. Uh, X, not found in the scope. Bye, sorrow Oh, 
for all eternity Second I felt some No. And are we getting the same shit? Oh, well, there's also uh, the inline stuff. Let's do this Not sure. Let's look at the code gen. Did main get inlined? No. Oh, that's... Holy shit. Oh, I got rid of like the prints. Fuck me. Okay. Get diff. What have I changed here? Only the playing around with this, right? Yeah, get reset hard. So this will be shit again. Um Do we use these two from U sizes? That wasn't tracked, okay. Uh, cargo watch. It should build, everything should be fine. Um, okay, so, um, I mean, I could drop transparency on these, but I, I mean, this might lead to undefi undefined behavior. Let's see what happens here. Yeah, Rust will still recognize that these are transparent. So, um... What do I do? Do I just, uh, do I just get rid of fallible uh, allocations? Been diffing one health here. I know exactly what it's doing. Um. These are lying items. Would it optimize a custom enum? Mm, no, it wouldn't. Well, Maybe. 
I'm not 100% sure. Uh, Obrick, you're brilliant, though. That was a really good catch. What about re-implementing result? Yeah, so let's see where I use results. We only ever use results for allocation failures. I suspect I would get the same behavior on an option. I'm alive. I'm alive. Why is this a result? This can't fail. This can never fail. Nor can this. At some point, that probably could have failed. But now it can't. Above me. I began to oh, I do a question here on nodes get. Can you tell the compiler that they're aligned? Well, that defeats the entire purpose. They have to be the so they have to be transparent. Um. This doesn't need to return a result, but not that it matters. Doesn't really matter too much here. No diff. Perfect. Um. Hmm. Hmm. Um uh disable um uh what is it even called disable uh you know what i might be able to get it by changing my results my error type foop Uh, I guess it still optimizes in the okay case. What if error types have bogus values? Let's try that.
Nope. I think normal enums will also get optimized out. Can't unwrap. Yeah, I'm missing like a lot of stuff here. <sighs> Do I just make allocations panic on failure? This is one of the reasons why having like air stacks hurts. That being said, this doesn't really matter because. In reality, you're never going to be allocating this fast, but... <sighs> this cannot fail. Uh, this one can fail because you get an invalid node. Uh... Yep, 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 yep. Okay. So we can make Alec uh, Raw just panic on failure. Does it inhibit vectorization? Basically, it ends up adding a branch, and that branch catastrophically just ruins everything. Uh, checked add. Um, expect uh, allocation failure due to uh, alignment overflow. Allocation failure due to a uh, size overflow. Failed to, um, uh, failed to, uh, convert U size into index. Failed to convert uh, U size into index once again. This one actually never can fail. That one we can just unwrap. If N doesn't, if end converts, then this has to convert. Uh, panic. Allocation failed out of uh, out of storage, out of space. I feel like there should be a way to not lose perf, but I mean, if an allocation fails, you're gonna panic eventually. Yeah. Um. I mean, any ideas? Like, cause I don't have any. <laughs> You know what? I think I got it. I think I got it. I think we're good. Wait, no. No, no. 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 C 
God, that's so frustrating. Um... Disable, like, uh, a result, uh, low memory encoding. Uh, I have a small, uh, code base where the, um, use of the top bits, e.g. 32 to 64, of a result on a value which, uh, on, on a result which holds an i32 leads to catastrophically bad code generation is there a way to disable the compiler uh, from uh doing bit magic on the unused bits of a register is there a way to disable the compiler from doing bit magic on the unused bits of a register on uh, unused bits of a register to encode the uh, results information? What if the values for the error you know I'm stored at U64? That's what I tried. Like I did that. Let's do allocation failure. Let's explicitly give allocation failure a U64. Okay. Niche optimization? Yeah, that's what I thought. Um, No. And I, I, I don't even know if it's necessarily related to the result. Like, directly. I think the presence of a result is killing us in the first place. But yeah, same absolute garbage code, Jen. Like, look at this shit. Test this. Uh, it's no longer doing the shifts. So now it's just... Here's the actual store. There's checking the top bit to then determine if it needs to go to the global pool. Which it never will have to. Something is basically preventing optimizations here and I, th I think it is results. I think it's like early returns and re uh, reasoning about results, I think, is killing us here. Like, I, I legitimately think that's what's happening here. It's some something with that. And this is why it's like abstractions are very dangerous, right? When the second you add abstractions, the second, like, the second a single branch goes in, you can terminate the optimization. This is tilting as fuck, dude. God damn it!
Dude, I'm telling you, I can't fucking stand Clang, man. LVM's cogen is so fucking bad. So frustrating, dude. So, uh, Ross. Well, he wouldn't like ghost code gen. Yeah, I'm sure it's terrible. Hmm. Go. Lol. I think we just make it panic and call it a day, man. Like, I can revisit this shit when... In the future, but like, I'm just gonna panic anyways. Like, I'm just gonna unwrap this 99% of the time. Uh, could not allocate due to invalid, uh, due to, um, uh, layouts. Uh, expect. We'll even see if this fixes it, though. Uh, could not allocate due to a line overflow. Uh, expect, or uh, could not allocate due to, uh, layouts, uh, due to, uh, size overflow. Um, expect, uh, could not convert, um, a U size into index. Then this is going... That will always succeed because elk base is just less than that. Uh, this is going to be a panic. Could not allocate due to... Um, uh, oh, out of, of memory for allocation. Panicking is good enough for now. Yeah, I know. I, like, dude, we've had like four things that have gotten in our way that are not our fault today. Like, things that are really good designs and theoretically would work fine that literally, like, Rust and LVM have let us down on. And we keep having to refactor shit around their fucking shitty limitations, dude. Like, I don't even think my optimizer would fail at this. And it's garbage. Um... Two nine. No longer fails. No longer yields results. This accessor. I know we keep changing this, but we keep reverting past this point. This one doesn't need a result, but we'll do some result cleanup here. Basically, anything that doesn't need a result is gonna lose its uh, results. Uh, self dot new on in it val. Stand you be still. Expect layout after factoring in metadata uh, is invalid. Uh, expect. Fuck it. We don't need a user to be able to return an error anymore on that API. We we also could try an option instead of a, of a result.
But yeah, this is why panicking on allocations is actually pretty important. Um, because it allows you to basically, like, terminate things inside of a function and not have to, like, bubble very, very complex things up. I seriously think that LVM has been getting worse at optimizing lately. I do too. I think it has put some things that explode in early passes that make like common cons propagation literally pointless. Writing a good optimized error is really hard. It really isn't. I think rewriting LVM is the solution. I already think it's a bloated piece of shit. Um, someone needs to write an optimizer that uses threads. <clears throat> Damn it. Um, all right, I need more water. Are you supposed to thread an optimizer? Optimize different functions at the same time. <clears throat> optimize blocks internally in a first pass and then optimize the function as a whole. Constant propagate and fill in things with unknowns if they're out of the scope of your threads area and then fill them in uh, when you do a final last pass and you've like optimized things very close to the final product. There's a lot of things you can do. It's not easy, but there's definitely a lot of speed ups you can get. Especially for larger, more complex, like, LTO'd functions. Um, this. There are some. Uh, Val? What? Where? How? What? Huh? 75? Expected PT? Found option? Um, <clears throat> uh, 
Oh, shit. I might need to be able to... I might need a way to bubble that. No, 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 no. Expect. Ah, no, I have to be able to pass that through, dude. I have to be able to pass that through. Fuck! We'll do this for now. Just to see if it fixes it. Um... No semi. All right. <clears throat> See what happens. Uh, okay. 28. No one wrap on uh, this one. Hmm. Maybe it didn't work. Looks like it didn't work. God damn it, dude. Huh. This is terrible. This is terrible. This doesn't look right. But also, this is terrible code gen. Like, why? Like, dude, I don't get it. How would you generate this code? How the fuck would you ever generate this code? We broke LVM, dude. Now just te test EAX again, yeah. Like, if it got rid of these branches, all of this would optimize away. I don't get it, man. I don't fucking get it. Like, this is failing for so many things. This should be a test EAX EAX with the sign comparison rather than immediate 32. Because that's way more shit, way more bloat in the pipeline. It tests EAX a billion times. I guess it adds a different amount. What is this unwrap? None value. This is... Ah... This is, um, <clears throat> to be, no, uh, line 43. And I know what line that is. It's the second one that we know will always succeed. Oh, no, 43. Okay. No, that's not the line. Unwrap on in local pool. We only unwrap in like a couple places. Oh, uh, uh, hmm. <clears throat> Got paranoid that EX could change. 
I hate this so much, dude. Like, what is this, dude? You know what's even better about it? Is it starts the loop by zeroing EAX. And here it terminate. Okay, okay, here's another thing. It starts with EAX as zero. It then checks EAX a billion times. And then here... The loop never gets to the point where that bit can be set because it increments by eight. And then once it hits 32,768, the loop stops. So literally like there's like eight different optimization passes that could fix this, but none of them do it, dude. None of them do it. This is a catastrophic failure of LLVM in so many ways, in so many ways. Jesus Christ, dude. Last time I tried this, it didn't work. <clears throat> Crane lift doesn't do many optimizations, but maybe it isn't that stupid. Yeah, so this is a perfect example where I fucking hate the academic bullshit of Clang. Because you have all these, like, fucking academics adding these, like, theoretical optimization passes that ruin the most primitive, basic optimization passes. So fucking tilting, dude. So tilting. LVM does this over and over and over again. I reliably see LVM like using registers and then never using them. I put the blame on Rusty for emitting so much shitty IR. Yeah, that's definitely true as well.
Wonder how much it's improved over the years? Ah, uh, I don't know, dude. Um, okay. Why do I need LLVM? Oh, for compiler RT. <laughs> what R and D in software engineering? <laughs> the way it works is none of the companies do any interesting research. A bunch of a bunch of open source people get so fucking frustrated that they come up with their own thing and then the companies adopt that thing. That's how it works. <laughs> it's literally the cycle. Companies produce shitty enough code that people get frustrated enough to bother making open source versions of that stuff, and then the companies just take it. <laughs> it's great. It's great. Love open source. Fantastic. I love giving companies things that they would refuse to make themselves. Is this going to work? This is a way different build setup than before. Didn't Apple write LVM? It was a university project originally. Mm-hmm. 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 Um. Mm-hmm. Put your path to the custom build of that in there, okay? How do I build it? How do I build it? How do I build it? Apple is an early contributor, but they contribute. Uh, they don't contribute much anymore. Yeah. What am I supposed to do with this? Put the path to your custom build a GCC jet. Okay. <clears throat> I don't know what to do with that. <clears throat> I have a GCC. I could build this. I don't know if this is going to build GCC JIT though. Hmm. There we go. There it is. I see it. Mm-hmm. Host. Mm. Um.
We're just getting their M68K or whatever. Don't all the companies have their own internal proprietary compilers? <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. So we're building this. There was prefix, so make install should work. It'll install it to that prefix. Do you think GCC should implement its build system? It's already a compiler and linker, and every <clears throat> new language has its own build system already. I brought this up in a Discord server, and everyone thought the idea is dumb. Yeah, people hate that, dude. People, like, hate the build system stuff. People just want to make files. Well, they want 50 different tools that generate incompatible make files. Back when I was a fresh-faced kid out of uni, I was looking for dev jobs and an interview at this place. They made automated voice response systems like press 1 for whatever, <laughs> press 2 to go fuck yourself. Place looked like a shithole. Everyone looked miserable. Came to find out that they invented their own do domain-specific language and compiler for building this voice response thing. Yeah, someone's probably bored. About 50% of their dev work was maintaining the tool chain. Yeah, that sounds about right. Hmm, okay. Okay, that's nice. Um. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. They want me to follow these instructions? Mm-mm. No. 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 No, no, I'm not doing that. No, 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 no. <clears throat> All right. No. All right. We're back to air reporting. Code's just going to suck until client gets good. So it'll just always suck. And yeah, that's, uh, that's good. If they used Lua, they'd save millions in dev time. Yeah. Panic and ship it. Unfortunately, I can't panic. That didn't work either. <laughs> um... Wrapping result types.
Yeah, like that makes sense. I mean, I, how hard is that for me to do? Hmm. Hmm. I have a terrible idea. Let's hear it, Desu. Is it rewrite all of LVM tonight in Rush? And that's who I want your idea. Rush Trepper range. Does this shit work? <clears throat> Is it Rush Trepper range? Yeah, I forget the naming as well. It's fucking impossible to find. Uh, you have to go into, uh, like, non-zero U8. Forget where it is. Uh, rapper... Here we go. Uh, layout scalar valid range start. That one? That one? Oh, that open SSL bug. So good. Let's go. Let's go. Clean, dude. Clean. Clean. Clean code. Good shit. That one? I laughed my ass off when I saw that one. Yeah, it was, it was great. Pretty classic. Uh, what's this? Do I have Rust checked out? They have one job? Mm, not really. Uh, <laughs> uh, Val, this. Um,. Um, can you use these on enums? I don't know if you can. Uh, oh yeah, like negative positive, yeah, um, for negative and piece of shit, how, uh, what's your hypothesis of how this would do anything? In that panic case, cause, we're, ha, uh, god, it's just like 50 band-aids. <laughs>
Ross would only emit local refs and the conditions would go away. <sighs> Monkas. Dude, but it should be able to see. It should be able to see that shit. Right? It should be able to look that deep into the code and do some basic optimization passes that you can do in like your first year of college. I hate code, dude. I hate code. That shift is definitely because of that, though. Test with this sign extended. That that makes sense that that sign extended. Let's see what uh, pseudocode it looks like. <laughs> Still a panic in here. How is there a panic? What is this? I robbed on that song. Do this. This is the 32 case. Uh, so this is the inside loop. Where are these panics even coming from? I do have an unwrap here. That's another thing. What happens here? I doubt that did anything, but let's see. God, the like code completely changes shape. If it's greater than that, then go to 60 and panic. That is. Did I panic there? Maybe I panic there. This. Um. Okay, or error. Allocation failure. Honestly, having a mix of both errors and panics is really, 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 really bad. So let's see what happens here. Let's see if we get an improvement by getting rid of panics. Um, There's a chance this does it, man. I mean, it's like 0% chance, but there's a chance, you know? Sometimes you just got to get desperate. What is this panic? What is this panic? If that is uh, positive, then panic. Uh, what is this panic? Unwrap and local pool. Where's the line? 43 is the length of the string. Called unwrap on a nun. Where do I unwrap in here? Oh, this. Okay, so that's an it unchecked. Um. Uh, this one we can actually... Okay, we can do this one. Um, we want to do into you size.
or or more specifically we want to do this fn uh into u size um self uh u size self as u size right this is always a fine conversion right um because we're going upwards and since we're going upwards we can do this uh now we can do into u size that's where that unwrap was and this will help this is a a one fewer branch no. okay now it's gonna work now all of it's optimized out no wait yeah that's not bad it's definitely an improvement let's see where we're at now we should no longer have any panics in there there should be no panic path should be impossible to panic in this yeah so there's no longer a panic here's that do while loop uh, go to 18, that's breaking out. Go to 20, that's not breaking out. 18's breaking out. Um, 27, that is inside. Okay, so... Let's see what's happening here. Uh, V21 is V20 plus 1. So this is the current, like, index. If it's not equal to negative 1... And it's less than the size. That's kind of weird. What's that? If it's not equal to negative one, break. Okay. Okay. That's not a bad loop right there. And is this the, uh, what is this? Decrement by two on rdx that's the 32768 why do we have two hot loops why are there two hot loops all right all right all right all right all right, all right. i don't know if this works does this just work does that actually make that size of U64? Mm. Oh, did that hurt perf? How did that hurt perf? Or is that just noise? That might just be noise. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Nope, that radically changes perf. Okay. So what's going on here? Why do we have two loops on RDX? Jump zero and then do it again. Like what? What? That breaks out. These are, okay, these are conditional if we're out of bounds. This is bounds checking for an early exit. This is, this is checking if it is uh, a local reference or not. So maybe the Desu local ref thing would maybe work. Because this, this check here is um, negative one. Negative one. This is the size of the allocation of the pool. This is the actual store. This is the sign extension of EBP. Oh, oh, oh shit. Oh, baby. Oh, oh, shit. Let's try this. Uh, let's. Uh, okay.
Oh, that's even faster now. <laughs> this is gate. This is gate. This is gate. It's gate. It's gate. It's gate. Oh, now it unrolled the loop twice. <laughs> Aha, nice. Yeah, now there's two, two copies of the same code. Okay. <laughs> Woo! You know what? I think it's time. I think we're going to switch away from this negative thing. I think... I think the sign conversions is really confusing Rust. Or LVM or something. So what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of the sign thing. I thought it would have been faster, but apparently it's not. Um... That'll add zero. This is just wrong, but it's okay. Um, it's just wrong, but it's fine. Okay. Okay, maybe not. Well, I'm not doing any more signed conversions. This code is not correct, by the way. High D word. Less than equal to that. Okay. Uh, this is going to be check top bit. Um, bits. Uh, self. Zor equals. You know what? I'm going to do this. Uh, one shift bits. We're going to do set top bit. And we're going to get rid of the toggle. We're going to decrease like XOR. Might be very confusing. So we'll do, we'll clear the top bit and not. Okay. Do you even need bits? No, not necessarily, but I like it more than doing like things with U size and stuff. Or with the size of the values. 8, 16, 32, 64. Oh, that, uh, okay, maybe. Yep, never mind. Um, yeah, we'll do, uh, one shift by size of self, uh, eight. Times, uh, times eight. Minus one. Check top bit. Bull. And this is not equal to zero.
We're gonna get this code to generate decently. Yeah, and this can just be tie. Size of that times eight minus one. That's fine. That'll all get done at compile time. Hopefully, I mean, who fucking knows? Maybe Clang will emit some shit for that code too. Uh. <laughs> This is going to set the top bit, right? We're going to set the top bit when we allocate. We're going to clear the top bit when we take in an index. We're going to clear it when we get. We're going to clear it when we get. We're going to clear it when we get it. Nope, nope, that sets it again. Right? Because this is then calling init. And then init will clear it again, which I kind of don't like that round tripping. Uh, this is taking it in clear. Uh, use core mem size of. Okay. Uh,. And then less than, gotta fix that. Um, parameters, yeah. So we don't want try into u size, and nor do we want partial ord. Copy send sync try from. Perfect. Now we broke Numa pool. Uh, 170. So when we're converting into it, this is just going to be, uh, just as U size, I guess. Not into U size, but as U size. Um, right. That conversion is, is free and fine. Um, what else do we have here? What do we got now? Try into. Uh huh. Bam. Just convert it. Literally self as you size. That's it. Uh, 338. Val is the index. Uh, val dot index. Dot as you size. Two fifty five in local pool. Clear top bit as you size two eighty five. If top bit set, I think is what we did. Uh, check top bit. So if the top bit is set and that is not equal to zero, then boom, then we do that. 352. Val index, clear the top bit as you size. So we're making it way more explicit. We're not doing the toggle anymore. I wouldn't be surprised if the toggling scares the shit out of LLVM. 
as you size. 440. Um, check top bits. We can now get rid of zero. I don't know if this is right. Might be full of bugs. One point one four. Um, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. This is kind of what I was scared of. It does almost look worse than the negative stuff. Okay, now. <laughs> Now that we've done all of that, now can we repper this as U64 or some shit? Uh, let's, can we repper U128? Is that, is that allowed? No. Unstable. Repper U64. JP Amos, thank you so much for the uh, raid. Hell yeah, how's your stream? And now it's gonna be slow again. What the fuck is this fucking language and optimizer? Holy shit. This is terrible. What the ever-loving fuck is going on? What is this? If that shift 32? If that plus one shift 32? Like, what is that check? What is this? Uh, trying to get my head around Rust. Me too. Me too. <laughs> um. Else this. So if it's out of bounds, then what? Your indexer and main is I32? It can't be. It's U32. Can't be I32. Yeah, nice fucking try, Desu. Literally, it literally can't be. Because I32... Uh, indexer and main? What? 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 Um... Uh, I don't. Uh, I don't. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Compiler's getting confused. Well, yeah. I mean, we know that this works. We know that this is plenty fast. We know that this is a zoomy. This will be 172 billion in allocations a second. Okay, no. No, it no longer is. Okay, this sucks now. Ooh. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay, now it sucks again. Now it's bad for that. That's interesting. <laughs> what the fuck, dude? We are teeter-tottering on the fucking optimizer. Like, what? If V21, then set this? Like, this is checking if it's in bounds. I mean, maybe there's just a bug. Let's see if there's a bug. Uh, Cargo Miri run. I think there's a bug. Yeah, there is. Fuck yeah. No, wait, no, shit. That's just the time. <sighs> well, I wish this crashed in Miri, but it doesn't. Uh, release. Plus one. If it goes out of bounds, which it literally, it literally cannot. LP accessor. Test size. 32, 1024. If it's, 
but greater than that, which it, it just can't be. This masks it off. V19, uh, plus plus, and that. Like, how would V19 ever get that large? <laughs> like, like, how would it even get close to that? <laughs> what the fuck? Ah, woo! Then you can lose your sleep when you're dead. You can imagine what you're trying in your horizons. Smooth brained optimizer, damn fucking right, dude. Mm -hmm. I only have to wait until I die, but that's no time. And this is fine. What? How is this slow? Wasn't this fine? Chest average, chest size. That. This literally was fast. This literally used to be fast. What? This was literally fine. And that was on this commit. This is an update, Rust. <laughs> Uh, nope.
Dude, what is going on? What the fuck is what? Oh. Did you install something with, with the GCC? I don't know, dude. Whoops. Apparently that had my uh, rust up in it. Perfect. Uh... Rust up and knit. That's fine. We're purging everything. We're moving rust up. Rust up and knit. Uh, so this will not build, uh, cause this is not nightly. I wonder if it was like mold or something. I don't know, dude. But we're we're getting a clean slate. Perfect. Uh rust up. Uh um uh tool chain install nightly. Got the docks, we got the standard. Yup. Perfect. Uh, rust up uh, default. Nightly. Rust C version. OK. 
Okay, cargo clean. Nope. Ah, whoops. I guess I put Ida in there. Um... Is it unwrap? Yes, it's unwrap. Ignoring the results is more expensive. That did cross my mind earlier, but I thought it was too silly to even mention. It was too silly to even mention. I would have laughed at you. Uh... <laughs> well, now do we go back to the fucking unsigned stuff? Fuck my asshole, dude. I hate everything about this code base. Except for how dank it is. Clear, set, check. Confirmed. Trying to see you. Did you bury your precious, precious gold, gold bones, bones on the platinum headstone?
Building pies. I'm having deja vu here. Let's try it with an eye size. Let's see if we ruined it. Okay, it's not ruined. Um... Not ruined! Yay! Let's make these soft errors. See if that ruins it. We'll do that later. We'll do that later. I want to do it now, but we'll do it later. Those don't matter. None of those matter. Freedom. So all that matters is new, new uninits. So that can no longer fail. It clears local, and then it as you size this nothing here can fail anymore nothing unwraps nothing expects okay Whoo! then we set the local bits 
Did we ruin it? <laughs> it's not ruined. Okay, let's try an ice. Uh, a U32. Is it ruined? Uh... Holy shit! We did it! We fucking did it! U16? Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> oh, that's fine. Come in. It's not ruined. I don't know what Z-Bus is, but Z-Bus is, uh, pretty gross. <laughs> Fucking Z-Bus. Uh, about as fast as, uh, as chat's code. <laughs> Ah, uh, build, build, god damn it, fuck, what is it possibly doing, two minutes for that shit, fuck off, Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. works Woo! <laughs> let's go let's fucking go thank you morbius fan for the twitch prime jesus christ what if we don't unwrap it <laughs> fucking ass unwrap unwrap <laughs> unwrap uh new control there we go yeah 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 Whew. 
See? See, that's not bad. <laughs> that's way better. <laughs> that's way better. <laughs> <laughs> Why is it not using AVX, dude? Does it even matter? Does it even matter? What is this processor? Stands. Mm. Forty three ten was it? This is Ice Lake. This. Not CPU World, uh, wiki chip. Uh, I want the desk, the server. PCI 4, yep. Um, that's a Oh, it's a Sunny Cove core. Okay. Ice Lake client, Ice Lake server. Okay, so this is Sunny Cove. Whoa, there's two store ports? No way. No way! No fucking no, no fucking way! There's two store ports here. Ah, oh, and there's there's two load and store AGUs. Uh, okay. Whoa. Wait, what is this? You can push, wait, you push 96 bytes a cycle? Am I reading that right? How does that work? Wow, f how many robs? 352? Holy dick. New paired store capabilities. Yep, you're going to have more inflate stores, low stored bandwidth. They go into the store buffer, which is capable of performing forwarding when needed. Yep. I'm really confused. Is that 96 bytes per cycle of stores? Uh, let's see. What are we getting? So we're doing these ops. Uh, 172.5 billion. Uh per second and that's bytes um if i divide that by uh multiply that by billion 1e9 and then if i divide that by 2.1e9 i get 82.14 i'm getting that's ass that's ass 
It's ass. It's tr it's ass. The fuck? Uh, unsafe core arc. It's ass. Uh, this is just the same thing. Um, but now what I can do is, uh, 10.4, uh, bytes per cycle. Uh... Ass. It's ass. I'm only doing 64 bytes a cycle. Um. Because I'm clocking to 33, I'm guessing. What's my processor? I am on processor 11. Let's see what we're getting. Is that hot? That's hot. Uh, 11. 2705. Let's see if that's stable. Uh, yeah, I think it's at 2.7 gigahertz. And I bet if you take 2.7, you divide it by 2.1, and then you divide 82 divided by that, it's 63.777. We're getting 64 bytes per cycle. And then we're getting turboed. This code sucks! Let's see if KNL, let's see what KNL does. KNL is more prone to optimizing to use uh, AVX512 registers. Even though I'm not on KNL. No, 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 no. Uh, Rusty C target CPUs. Uh, Rusty dash F print target CPUs. Grep. I'm on either Sunny or Ice Lake server. Okay. That's what it should be picking up for native. Come on. Come on. It can do two of these per, uh, let's see. Move online pack D word. Unless you can only do 64 a cycle. Do you think that's the problem? Do you think it only does 64 a cycle? I don't know what this other 32 a cycle means. We are we are literally saturating L1 cache with their allocator. Which is that's a good sign. Uh yes. Yeah, what can L1 take in? 64 bytes and then 32 bytes. I'm really confused. Four units that can uh, move uh, DQU, yep. 
Well, let's see. Uh, KNL might have admit AVX512. There's a chance that it is 64 bytes a cycle. Let's see what this is. Because that did make a change. Blown our hands. I'm not in the right function. No, I am. Okay, yep, that's using Zims. Um... Yeah, I guess... I guess you just get 64 bytes a cycle. <laughs> um, what's interesting here is this is actually slower. Um... This is not 82, we're getting 79. I bet we're clocked a bit lower. Because we're using AVX 512. So we were getting 2.7 gigahertz, and now we're probably getting slightly less. Yep, we're getting 2.6 instead of 2.7. So yeah, technically, 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 uh, native was correct. It's just a mercy. I think it is from the descriptions I've looked at. Yeah, I don't know what that is. That might be like forwarding stuff, but... Okay, well, we're not going to get faster than this. <laughs> uh, we're not going to beat uh, 172 billion allocations per second uh, on a single core. Um, nice. Okay, well, that optimizes really well. Um, this was not working when we used the uh, uh, sign types. <coughs> Like, it was still broken. We did, like, I-32 tests um, before we did the uh, unwrap stuff. Um, back here. Unwrap. Okay. Uh, determine the layout of the slice. We use layout extend, blah, blah, blah. Unwrap is okay here because uh, as getting an uninit numeref for a slice requires calling new uninit slice. Okay, so we cannot get one of these, which is true, uh, on a slice. So this dot star slice, the, yeah, we get it from new uninit slice. And up here, we check it and we do the same logic. Uh, U size, layout T elements, extend, unwrap. Okay. Because of that, what we can do is we can actually do unwrap un unchecked. <laughs> Perf. Perf. Fucking perf. Still important. Where else do we unwrap? Here? This is converting a pool index. And follow some forget. We're gonna do a uh, from you size. What was that? Pool index? Um... Self. Val as, uh, tie. Okay. So, from you size... Will allow us to um, do that, and then we can get rid of try from. Check this out. Bam. So copy, send, and sync. Uh, what's this bitching about? Trying to? No parameters. 
You've been broken and abused. Any company would be lucky to have Gamosa as a softer dev. The shiz is wild. I really appreciate that. Thank you for the compliments. I try my best. I put a I put a smidge of effort into this. Um, make sure the allocation is inbounds. Okay. This is the only place where we actually have to check the bounds. Um, so what we're gonna do here is um um fn uh we're gonna call it u size fits do you like that do you like that um uh we can do we'll do try from u size uh self and then this is going to do val try uh, into, or we'll say, I'm going to do this, self try from. I like this as a bit, it's a bit more explicit, even though it does the exact same thing. Okay, so then this will do uh, index try... Index try from u size uh, end. Make sure the allocation fits inside of an index. This ensures that alc plus size does not overflow um, an index, right? Um, right. Then here we'll do, uh, okay, or error, uh, allocation failure, I think. Yeah. So now that we've computed the end of an allocation, we make sure that it fits. We then make sure that the allocation is in, in bounds of our pool. Um... More likely as a reverse engineer. Yeah, fuck yeah. I love, I love me some reverse engineering. Um, okay. And then that is result. Uh, we're just gonna say okay on this. Beautiful. Okay. So, uh, if that's, if the alignment's not equal to one, or the max align, or the alignment exceeds max align, that's a failure. Subtract one to get the mask, start at zero, get the base as the aligned up, so align it up to the nearest boundary, compute the end of the allocation, so then add the size, once again, checked adds on all of these, then try to convert the end, which is one byte past, it's the index that's one byte past the allocation, where you try and see if that fits in an index, um, and if it doesn't, then we return allocation failure. Then we check if it's inbounds of our actual allocation pool. Uh, we set the allocator to the end. Otherwise, we couldn't find room. There we go. Allocation failure. Return the allocation base. Now here, I can do... Um, this is now uh, from U size. This doesn't need to be try from U size. At this point, this is the only place where it needs to be checked because this is basically making sure that it fits in there. At this point, we can just truncate it because we know it will unconditionally fit in every situation. So we'll do index uh, from U size on this, right? So now these are not fallible like we had before where we did these like try into unwraps, try from unwraps everywhere. We're getting rid of that. Um, we're validating it in one place, the only place where they're like created. Uh, this is where indexes are created, indices are created. Um, so we make sure here that it's valid, and then we never have to worry about it again. Okay. 
Um, 138 can't be used in a closure. Um, yes. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's just a question mark. Bam. Um, okay. Then we're at 350. Uh, let's just read through the code now. It, like, it, it's time. It's time. So line it up. Compute the end. Make sure it fits in an index because we're using atomic U sizes and U sizes internally, and then we convert for the indices. Uh, then here, initialize the T at offset index uh, in all nodes with val. The color must ensure that index is validly aligned and exclusive, uh, and, and an exclusive allocation to a T in the pool. Um, it must be greater than or equal to zero. So since it's greater than or equal to zero, we know that we can just convert it to a U size. We can directly go from an index to a U size because it fits. Um, and I guess we're no longer doing that positive construct anymore. So let's start changing that. There's cargo asm. I've tried it, but it like last time I tried it, it sucked ass. Let's see if it has changed though. Last time I used it, it was like unusably bad. Um, but that was probably a year ago now. Uh, release. Default Intel, thank God. Oh, default release. Good. Um, print comments. Generates assembly with debugging information, even that's not required. Prints output useful for debugging. Debug mode? Okay. Oh, that's for, like, debugging this. Uh, let's just try this. Cargo asm. Uh, oh, it's not. It doesn't build right now. <laughs> Whoops. Okay. Uh, okay. Let's go through the code. Uh, let's do an audit quick. Um, well, let's get it building, then we'll do an audit. Think you're bottlenecked on the right L1 can spill onto L2? Shouldn't be in this case. Because we are using a... What are we allocating? We're doing 32k chunks? Yeah, so we shouldn't be hitting L2 at all. Like, in theory, here and there we might with a context switch, but not really. Uh, this is then... And it unchecked pool index... Um, we are converting into an index from a U size. Uh, okay. And the way that we do that is index from U size. And we know that every index is in bounds. Every index is always in bounds. So we can do this safely. Um, I would not rec recommend this, right? We're doing this because this code base is very, very perf. Um, here we go. Make sure the allocation is in bounds. So here we'll do index. Uh, try from U size end. Then, uh, this is an OK or an OK boomer. Um, uh, make sure the uh, index of the next bytes following this allocation is inbounds uh is um can be represented in an index okay um and then that try from is actually wrong um so chat remind me Remind me that the index is wrong. The, uh, once we finish this. So then return the allocation base. This we don't have to check. This we can do, uh, index from U size of alc base set local. Right? Bam. Okay. 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 Just 
Chat, why has no one re reminded me yet? So here's the problem. This is try from. This is converting a U size into a like U8. This will actually cause undefined behavior. Check this out. You ready? Uh, cargo Miri run. Oh, we don't have Miri anymore. Cargo install uh, uh, rust up components. Add Miri. Memory index is wrong. Oh, thank you. Got it. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I need to go down a version. What's the best way to do this? There's really not a great way of doing that, is there? Well, whatever. We just know it's wrong. So basically, um, what we need to do is we need to do our own check. And we need to say if um, this is the bit. If val is less than this. Then uh, val as you saw... Uh, val as ty else none right does that make sense so this would be uh let's double check our math here hex of one shift of let's say four times eight minus one yeah so it has to be less than that it cannot be equal it has to be less than that Right? Um, because we used the top bit. Uh, with the sign stuff, it was fine before. Try from was fine before, but now this is important since we're dealing with unsigned. Um, if val is less than that, and is that correct? I think so. Size of tie. So U32 minus 1. Yep. So 4 times 8 is 32, minus 1 is 31, 1 shift 31 is that, where the top bit is set. If the value is less than that, then we have successfully converted it. Otherwise, that top bit is set, and that's not valid. Okay, and then clear local will clear that bit, set local will set that bit, check local will check that bit to see if it's not equal to 0. Uh, and then from you size, we'll just do the direct cast. And as you size, we'll do the direct cast there as well. Okay. Um, <laughs> I feel like you're indirectly building Amazon Essentials. I read that as like Amazon Basics, like the, the like cheap, shitty Amazon stuff. <laughs> And I read that as an insult. I know it's not an insult, but I'm kind of laughing at it. <laughs> I think that's fucking hilarious. <laughs> uh, why not sign it from the beginning? Um, so we tried signed and the signed code gen was worse. Like, we tried it. That's what I wanted to do because it made more sense. But yeah, it didn't work out. Get status, get commit, am a uh, really good shape. Great commit message there. <laughs> basic coder. I'm going to have to start referring to code as Amazon Basics Edition. <laughs> okay. Uh, are we ready to audit the code? Fuck me. And extremely fast. Alloc uh, bump allocator. W uh, and it, yeah, we'll just start with that. Okay, uh, we go through, we pull in invariant ref. So let's take a look. Invariant ref. Invariant ref. Wrap around reference, a reference to make it invariance. Um... Wrapper on ID to make it an invariant lifetime. In this case, it's kind of complex. Uh, mute T is invariant over T, and thus our T in this case is ref ID Z, 
which thus makes the lifetime itself invariance. This invariance is critical for us to do, um, for us to do, oh, to do ID based equality comparisons. This makes it so that lifetimes must be identical when a function takes a lifetime in an invariant ref. This disables variance. So, uh, drive debug, um, repr transparent. So it has no cost because it's a phantom data. Invariant ref with an ID and a Z, which is a poolable type that's also unsized or maybe unsized. It's a phantom data mutable pointer to a ref ID Z. Okay. And then we implement invariant ref. So ID Z, uh, yep. So for all possible combinations, create a new invariant reference, and this is constant time. So pub const fn new self invariant ref phantom data. So that creates a new one out of thin air. Um, are we using this? Yes. Okay. Implement our own clone on invariant ref as all invariant refs are clonable regardless of Z. So this does erasure of the fact that normally clone to like derive clone, Z itself needs to be clonable and like the reference and stuff. In this case, word this is like a hack and like a syntaxy thing. So once again, pullable and sized, clone for invariant ref, IDZ. Um, we implement clone where clone just creates a new one but it matches the lifetimes. An invariant reference has no uh, size, so we should just implement copy as well to, cons to help the compiler reason a bit better about it. So IDZ sized, copy invariant ref. Okay, so it's clone and copy. Then, um, since an invariant reference, reference doesn't hold any um, data, we can mark it as send and sync for when it is referring to data, which is send and sync. And we'll do this. Bam, send this, sync this. Oh, we're going to overflow here. Send. Text with 79. Uh, yep. So if Z unsized is send and sync, we implement send. If it's send and sync, then we implement sync as well. This prevents us from accidentally implementing send and sync on types that don't really make sense to reference. Okay, then next is Numapool. So I'm kind of going in order if, if you like Im included all these files together. Implementation of a shared insert only NUMA duplicated pool of objects. Um, the top level pool allocator, which contains data for every NUMA node. Size, okay, index. Um, and how do we want to do this? I think this, um, what's the best way to do this uh, layout? How do we, uh, what's the best markdown syntax for this? Cargo doc open. Documents, private items. Oh, uh, no, I can see. This is a NUMA pool. Hmm. I kind of want to align all of these things nicely. Is there a good way of doing that? Should I? Can I do a table? Uh, Rust markdown docu comments. And compose the fucking bones and demon limbs. Index is directly related with the order of execution. Correct. Um, how to write documentation. Delight. Rustock uses a common mark. In addition, it su supports strike through footnotes and tables.
and task lists and smart punctuation. It's all so permanent. Eh, eh, eh. Um, game of chickens. Post the fucking bones and demon. Um, type to use for uh, references. Um, e.g., the pointer type. Let's see if that renders. Dum, bum, bum, ba, dum, bum. Size, number of bytes this pool can hold. Nodes, uh, this is Numa size. Numa nodes. Number of Numa nodes this pool supports. Woo! Index. Uh, okay. Numa TDB. A uh, type database to use for the um for storing a uh, a uh, type uh. Uh, I don't know, collections of types. Index, Numa TDB, shift. Oh, we didn't implement shift yet. Um, uh, number of bits are like shift amounts for index. Uh, indicating minimum alignments. That makes sense. Uh, Numa size, Numa nodes. Uh, okay. And here we go. Here's what it looks like. Top level pool allocator, index, Numa TDB, shift, Numa size, Numa nodes. Um, nice. Nice. The raw memory contents for each NUMA node. The memory is duplicated across uh, all nodes. Uh, maybe uninit because uh, we don't initialize the data until objects are allocated. Uh, until data until objects are allocated and initialized. Um, unsafe cell because we will be mutating this data via a shared reference. Perfect. And it's a box, and it's a slice for Numa nodes. Number of used bytes allocated from the pool. That's the type database, and then indexer to use for references. Indexer type to use for references. Uh, can you add a layer of verifica uh, verifiability? Of the timestamp gener there's not timestamps or a pipe. I'm really confused. <laughs> I don't I don't understand what you mean by that. There might be a, a slight language barrier here. I'm not sure. Or I'm missing something big. <laughs> Indexer type uh, to use for references. Um, uh, just held in a phantom. Data to uh, ensure we, uh, or to uh, hold the generic. I'm thinking out loud, don't worry. No, it's all good. Our API, is, uh, our API is designed such that the data structure, that shouldn't be a docu comment, I don't think. Um, I guess I can docu comment this impl of sync, which means that I can actually docu comments in invariant ref. These can be document comments. 
which then means you see these instead of the default implementations for those. Okay, the or the default comments for those. All right. Are APIs designed such that the data structure can be accessed across multiple NUMA threads with a shared reference? The only location where mutable access occurs to the to the unsafe cell is during adding an object, during initializing an object. Uh, is during initializing of an object, init initialization. Uh, and the in-use atomic prevents shared access to this region during the allocation and initialization. All other accesses are immutable within this data structure, making it sync. So then we implement sync unsafely for the, uh, for the NUMA pool itself, allowing us to share the NUMA pool between threads. May I ask what your user used the same type for local refs and global refs? Could they be distinguished by the type instead of a bit? No. Um, and I'll have to think about why, but it's very concretely no. It, it's not like there. It's not like there's some perf or some. Uh, it, it is fundamentally required uh, due to this design. Something something to do with the lifetimes. Um, oh, it's because like I can't I. I need to be able to have a data structure that has references to both global objects and to local objects with the same lifetime, right? And there, that is literally impossible to do unless you do this like overloading thing I'm doing. Um, that's, that's why. Like you can do an enum where you have like a local ref and a numa ref, and that's actually how I started out designing it. But that doesn't work. Like lifetime wise, that is impossible to express. Okay. Um, I spent days trying to get that to work. That was the initial goal was to use like a proper enum. Um, but it was it was inexpressible, like hard inexpressible. I can't remember what the very specific situation was where it was inexpressible but it was like it was it's not something where i gave up on it because i couldn't get it to work i remember concretely thoroughly understanding that it is not possible is there a logic loop i can't remember uh, create a new NUMA pool, validate some of the assumptions. So we make sure that the size of the node data is identical to the NUMA size. And this is something that I think I'm going to change because if this is not, if this is like 256, um, this will fail to run. And the reason this will fail to run is because the size of that is actually going to be 4096 because it's going to get aligned up. So what we're going to do is we're going to say uh, assert that the size of node data is greater than or equal to NUMA size. Now this is okay and this will run. Well, it will fail on the local allocator side where it does the same check in the local pool. But yeah, it was failing on NUMA pool. Now it's failing on local pool. Um, so yeah, we make sure that the node data, so the aligned copy of the data, exceeds the size of the NUMA size. So it's at least that. Um, no data does not match the expected size. Um, then we check the alignment of no data NUMA size, and we make sure that it's identical to max align. Um, and then no data alignment does not match max align. Self, uh, for each element of the array, create a new uninitialized box. So it will just, it allocates all the things right away, but it doesn't actually fill them in or initialize them or anything. In use is zero by default. Uh, this calls NUMA TDB, which uses the type database you provide to set up the type database. And then we make that phantom data to hold the index information. Create an accessor to this NUMA pool. This will create a token, which can be used to access the NUMA pool. This, the anonymous token ID, is created in this closure, which is used to make sure references are used with their associated uh, pools at compile time. Um, 
Okay. Uh, there we go. Uh, so it's a function. That's where it creates the lifetime. That is the lifetime that's used for the ID. This is the lifetime that's used for references we give out. The index, the type database, the shift, the numa size, the number of nodes. This can fail. The reason this can fail is because you request the node that you want an accessor to. Um, uh, and uh, node specifies the index of the node that you want this accessor to return references to when using uh, uh, get and get slice functions, right? So you set that up ahead of time and you say, I want an accessor for Numa node 37. And if that's out of bounds, you get invalid node. This will return an error. So this can fail. It can fail because you can access a node that's not valid. Uh, then it stores the reference to that data for that specific node such that it gets sort of a layer of indirection. And then a reference to the pool itself so you can access the pool itself. This is a light wrapper around a Numa pool, which simply picks a specific node to use for accessing objects. This exists to reduce the level of indirection and allow a node to be picked once rather than every time a value is accessed. So this now adds all the fields, ID, lifetime, uh, the indexer, the type database, the shift, the Numa size, and the number of nodes. Uh, this is a reference to, that, to the node data that we selected. This is a reference to the pool. Maybe uninit, unsafe cell, no data, numa size. Um, and then a marker which defines the invariant lifetime. This is what makes this invari or makes ID invariant. Um, is the accessor unique for a numa node? No, there can be multiple accessors on the same numa node. Then here we start implementing it. Get references to types of a given type in the pool. Types uh, T is poolable or unsized. Um, it yields a slice of numerefs of ID to Ts uh, with the given index, and it just does self.pooltypedatabase.types, and it just calls that helper function, uh, I index and T. This is going to allocate raw memory based on the layout, based on the layout from the pool, returning an index to the allocated memory. Uh, we expect the alignment to be a power of two and to be less than or equal to max align. This is because our base heap allocations for each Noma node have to be the same alignment since our references are offsets from a base address, which have, may have different alignments for each Numa node. Yep. So uh, make sure that there's only one bit set in count once or in the layout alignment. And make sure that it is not greater than max align. Otherwise, it's a failure. Then we subtract one here. Subtracting one is always safe here. This can never underflow because there's at least one bit set. And if there's one bit set, th you can always subtract one. So that computes the mask for the alignments. Uh, perform the allocation. Relax as we don't care about anything other than uniquely allocating an index here. We can more strictly control ordering when we actually pass references across threads. And that's true. Um, we, all we need to do is atomically update in use. We do not need, we do not need memory barriers. The memory barriers will happen when you get these from the type database. So this is where we need a, a barrier is when we share objects, right? But there's no way to pass a numeref across, uh, you can't pass a numeref across uh, threads. So. Okay. Uh, mask used to get alignments of uh, values, blah, blah, blah. So even though we mark numerefs as send and sync, I'm pretty sure we mark them as send and sync, right? Oh, maybe not. No, we don't mark them send and sync, which I think, uh, well, I think they will be send and sync anyways by default. Um, but it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Um, okay. Then, yeah, I don't think there's a way to send that with that lifetime to another thread. I don't think that's possible. I feel like I thought about that and I, I, I realized that the only place that you could get types is from this type database. 
Uh, fetch updates. So align up the base of the allocation to the nearest alignment boundary. So get the old value. Check to add the align mask, looking for overflows. And then mask it with the align mask. So this will round it up. Compute the end by adding from that base, adding the size of the allocation. Make sure that end fits inside of an index. Um, if it doesn't, that will return failure. Make sure that is the end is less than or equal to the size of the NUMA pool. It can be equal. That's okay. Um, set the end of the allocator to the end of the allocation. Um, boom. That returns end, which will then update that. That's all in the atomic uh, window. And then outer room for the allocation in this situation. Uh, if we failed to atomically increment that value, then we get an allocation failure. That means that we return none or return none from these locations. Um, if NUMA size is a const generic, can you validate the accessor node ID at compile time? Um, yes. Do you take do you take care into account that fetch update lambda can be called multi first of all it's not fucking lambda desu but yeah that that's fine you just get the old value every time right so every time this gets called i take the old value i realign it i recheck the end i recheck that it fits in an index i recheck that it's inbounds and then i return it but yeah i that that's just inherently like that's not something i really have to consider each time this runs, elk base gets updated, but the only way that I ever get to this point where I use elk base is if it was successful and I return some. So yeah, no, this is actually a great primitive. I love it, but this should be sound. Um, and then return the allocation base uh, index from U size. So we can directly convert from a U size to that base because here we validated that the end of the allocation fits in an index, let alone the start of it. So every index fits in, every index fits inside of an index type, including one byte past the end of the allocation, which is the similar rules that Rust has for, for pointer arithmetic. Initially, that means we lose one byte. We lose one byte of addressable memory, not losing sleep over it. Initialize a T at offset index in all nodes with val. The caller must ensure that index is a validly aligned and exclusive allocation to T in the pool. Um, it must be a uh, it must be a NUMA uh, reference. Top uh, bit of the index is clear. Okay, index is going to be positive as it's a NUMA ref, not a local one. Uh, so this is just um, uh, convert the index into a U size. Then go through each node. For each node, we get a pointer to that node's unsafe cell. Uh, we get a pointer to the node data mutably because that's now using the unsafe cell. Once again, we haven't created a reference. We cannot create a reference until it's initialized. Um, then we get a pointer to the slice of bytes. Then we get a, a pointer to a slice that is specifically from index to the index plus the size of the T that we're going to initialize. Then we get a pointer to the first elements of the slice data. Um, then we convert it to a mute T and then we write the value in there and the value is copy. So we write it in multiple times for each of the nodes and that's fine. So this index is always going to be positive because it's just what we have here. It's literally just... We're atomically incrementing this value. That's what the index is. New uninit, create storage for an object in the pool. This returns an uninit numa ref, uh, where t is poolable. So we allocate the memory that can hold a t. So we do the raw allocation for the layout that holds a t. And then we just return an uninit numa ref, where that is the base. Initialize the value in the pool, consuming the uninit numa ref. So this will uh, take the uninit numa ref which is, um, that will be consumed, which is good and important. Uh, then the value, the value has to be copy and poolable. Um, not one byte, D colon. Uh, so initialize the data. So we know that we can do init unchecked because 
init numerous can only be created by us, and since they only can be created by us, we know that that's a valid uh, numeref in this pool, and we know that it hasn't been initialized. We know that no one has any references to it. This is a write-only exclusive access token, right? This basically says you own a region of memory at index that can hold a T in this pool. So we just forcibly initialize it. We then create the real numeref, which is what you can use to shareably access it. We register that numeref in the database, and then we return the numeref itself. Now, at this point, we need to assume that it's shared, and thus we can't write to it anymore. New, move an object to the pool and get a reference to it. Uh, this returns a uh, numeref, so this will new uninit, so it will allocate memory. If the allocation was successful, then it will initialize that uninit numeref, it will move it into here um, and initialize it with the value, and then that will return OK if it was successful. If anything failed, uh, that will just get discarded. Then we have get a reference to an object in the pool at index. The color must ensure that index is properly aligned, allocated, and initialized to T in the pool. Um, yep, this is where it has to be initialized now. Um, so for unsafety, this is unsafe because it's you literally pass it the index. This is not unsafe because it just allows you to blow things out of the pool. So this anything with a raw index is unsafe. Um, this is once again working with a raw index. It also it must also assure, ensure there are no mutable reference that exists to the same storage. Um, index uh, must be a numa index. Top bit of index uh, must be clear. Okay. Um, this doesn't require copy anymore. This is going to return an ARFT, which is the same lifetime as the uh, NUMA pool or the accessor when we created it, which is fair because you can't, you can't keep these references past a closure. Index is going to be positive as it's a NUMA ref, so this is a convert index into a uh, usize. Get a pointer to the data. Get a pointer to the unsafe cell data. Same thing, get that slice, slice it up for index to the end of the slice, get a pointer to the first thing, cast it, and then create the reference. So that's fantastic. Get a reference to the value in the pool. Uh, that's a numeref that returns that. This just calls get unchecked. We know safely at compile time that this is a valid reference in this pool. Uh, it's impossible to have a numeref uh, uh, otherwise. So we just called get unchecked on that. And that just calls into this and returns that reference. So this is literally just like an add. Like all of this, even though this looks complex, literally it, it upcasts, it zero extends the index, and then it takes that zero extended index and um, it takes the zero extended index and uh, adds it to the base for your node and it returns you a reference to T in your node. Right? And this is why selecting your node is really important. Now we get into slices. Uh, create storage for a slice with elements on the pool. Uh, so it takes elements, which is a number of elements. Uh, it returns an uninit numeref. So this is like the raw creation of a slice. T has to be poolable, and a slice of T has to be poolable. This will determine the layout. So it will compute the header, uh, which is just a U size, the number of elements. It will, then t it will then compute an array of elements of T that could fail due to like overflows and stuff. So then we um, extend that header. And I'm just checking for a couple things up here real quick. But yeah, I think everything in here is really, really, really good. Okay, sweet. I was looking for a code pattern. Um, uh, we make sure that that doesn't overflow when we do the multiply. We then add the uh, we extend the header uh with x which is the layout of the array itself and that makes sure that none of that overflows there's no multiply overflows there's no add overflows it makes sure that it correctly computes that there might be padding bytes because it might be a u size length and then you end up having data which is aligned to a stricter uh, or a bigger alignment than a u size this will compute all that padding bytes and stuff for us. We don't have to worry about it. 
We allocate memory for the whole thing, the header and all of the data. We then initialize only the size. So we do init unchecked for alloc base, which is pointing to the start of the allocation, which is where that, uh, that header goes. And we write in elements, and elements is a U size. So this writes in a U size to the start of that. Then we return an uninit numeref to the alloc base. Um, so the size is already initialized, even though it's an uninit numa uh, slice. The number of elements is initialized. The contents of the slice are not initialized. Do you have experience with uh, symbolic execution? Not relevant. I, I worked with symbolic execution like 10 years ago, but I wouldn't say I have any relevant knowledge anymore. Initialize a slice. Um, uh, initialize a slice. So this is going to... The closure is invoked on each element of the slice, passing the index of the element. The elements will always be initialized in order, if that helps. <laughs> I don't know if that really matters, but I, I specify that. Then um, we take the uninit numeref. Uh, we have our closure that we invoke, and then this will return a numeref. So this will get the number of elements for the slice by doing a get unchecked, uh, which is going to give a reference. So we deref that. So this is the, the number of elements in the slice by literally just Derefing that first field, which is what we set here. That is the number of elements. We determine the layout. So once again, we compute the same thing we did above. And we say unwrap is okay here be as getting an uninit, getting an uninit numeref for a slice requires calling new uninit slice, which does the same arithmetic but is error checked. Which means that here we can now say unsafe um, and we will say unwrap unchecked. Right? That will make that theoretically faster. Um, okay. So, um, then for each element, initialize it. So we get the um, index to, we'll say like the array. No, we'll leave it as a value index. So this is the index. We convert val, which is the numeref. This gives us uh, the base of it as a u-size. We know we can convert it to a u-size here because it's an up conversion. For each element, we then uh, compute the pool index. So we take the val index. We take the array offset, which is past the header. It's the, it's the offset to the first element in the array, the index, and then the size of a t to indicate where in that array uh, we are initializing. We call the closure and we request, hey, uh, we want to know what you want to initialize the field at index with. If that fails, that returns an error. That bubbles up. So this returns an error all the way up to the top. Uh, this will then call init unchecked, um, which will create an index from a U size, which is the pool index, which is the location of this specific element in the slice. And then uh, it'll pass in that temp value, and that's it. And it will loop for each element, get the accessor to the uh, initialized data. So at this point, everything is initialized, so we can create this numeref. Once we've created the numeref, you can get a reference to it. Um, and then we insert that into the database. Uh, create a slice of elements in the pool and initialize it with the provided closure. Uh, self elements and then F. Uh, this is just a helper. It's a convenience function. So it will create a new uninitialized slice of elements. If the allocation was successful, it will initialize that slice using the closure provided here. Uh, and in this case, T has to be poolable and copy. T has to be poolable, same as up here. F is uh, FN mute, because uh, it's called multiple times and with immutable context. We pass in a reference to self and the index. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, header's just a U size at the start. Yep. Um, get a reference to a slice of T's in the pool at index. The caller must ensure that index is properly aligned, allocated, and initialized to slice T in the pool. It must also ensure that no mutable references exist to the same sh storage. Um, index must be a numa reference um, top bit clear. 
Okay. So get on check slice. We take the index. We're going to return a slice unconditionally. We know this cannot fail. So only allocation can fail. This cannot fail. Get the number of elements. Uh, convert the index into a U size. Do the header conversion again. Um, the header computation again. Uh, once again, unwrap is okay. So say unwrap unchecked. Uh, uh, array of T elements, header extend X, unwrap unchecked. Get a pointer to the data uh, for the node. Uh, raw get the pointer, get that. Then we access at index, which is where this slices, plus the array offset. And then uh, we got a slice from index to the layout size. And you might be thinking, don't I need to add a uh, array off here? And I don't. Um, because layout is the size of the entire thing, the slice and the metadata. Uh, in which case, this is actually wrong. I actually need to subtract off that then, don't I? Um, not that this is unsafe. <laughs> This is totally fine. Miri would be okay with this, but um, technically, uh, index plus array off. No, 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 because that's an end. That's not a size, it's an end. So this is okay. That is the end of the data. Nope, this is actually okay. Uh, then get a pointer to the first element, and then from raw parts for that as const t for elements. Get a reference to ourself in a given pool. So this is get slice, which is a wrapper around get on check slice uh, for a given numa ref, where t is poolable and ref uh, slice of t is poolable. We get that slice by doing get on check slice on that index. And that's pub. Then we have the numa ref, a reference to initialized data, which is read only. Um, Then we have uh, the index in the pool where this object can be found. This is uh, checked at compile time to be a reference to the pool uh, which is being used uh, to access this via the ID tag. This is checked at compile time to be um, to. This is checked at compile time to match the pool it came from via the uh, ID tag. Unwrap unchecked is like unwrap or maybe uninit, assuming it. Oh, interesting. The index is greater than or equal to zero. Um, and here we can say, uh, s when the top bit of an index is set, it refers to an allocation in the uh, local pool. If the top bit is clear, it refers to an allocation in the uh, NUMA pool. Marker which defines the invariant lifetime, uh, which provides compile time verification that we don't cross references across pools. Uh, implement our own clone as all NUMA refs are clone. Uh, Bink, 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 regardless of T, uh, since it's simply an index. And that's true. So clone just allows us to copy it. Implement copy since a numeref is just an index. In the code, it uses hint unreachable unchecked. Oh, fuck yeah. Um, a reference to uninitialized data, which is write only. It is written, uh, once it is written to, it will be consumed and converted into a numeref. These cannot be cloned or copied as they are keys that allow for safe initialization of reverse reserved storage in the pool. Only one is given out and all operations operating on an uninit numeref, on uninit numerefs consume the uninit numeref to prevent reuse. So this is wrapper transparent as is this. Uh, pub crate for index. Um, the index into the pool uh, where this object can be found is checked at compile time, blah, blah, blah. Uh, we can just yoink the exact same comments. Means the same thing here. Bam. And then we'll make sure that this is the same wording as well by just copying that. Done. 
Uh, 390, uh, 408. Doesn't need to be unsafe because we're already in very unsafe territories. Okay. Now, uh, we had some document issues in here. Numa pool 451. Local pool. Okay, let's just pull in a local pool here. We're just pulling it in just so we can document it. Um, and then local pool has the same problem. Cargo watch. Unused import. Yeah, that's kind of tough. How do we want to do that then? Um, so we'll go to 451. Local pool. And this is this syntax. Let's see if that works. Uh, what we're looking for is uh, numeref. So documentation on a numeref and local pool. Yes, it shows up as local pool. And when we go to it, it goes to the local pool. Fuck yeah. Nice and nice. Okay. So. Any comments, questions, concerns about that code? I'm really happy with it. I really don't see any issues in it. Twitch doesn't quite fit last miles, yeah. What uses the repper transparent on the numeref structures? It, it basically prevents me from accidentally adding a field to it, is mainly what it does. Um, if you're not familiar with what repper transparent does, it means that this is identical to a single field in it. Um, and I have another field in here, but this other field is a zero size type, so it doesn't actually affect the, the layout or the shape or the alignment of the structure. Um, Repper transparent basically means this structure as a whole has the same alignment, layout, and size, and everything as the only field inside of it. Adding another field that has size or alignment properties causes this to compile time fail by saying we can't make this transparent. So it it solidifies the fact that an uninit numeref is identical to an just a raw index. Okay. Then uh so we did that. I'm really happy with that. Get status, get commit am reviewed uh numa pool code. Uh all right, and let's do one last look through here on wrap. So that's unwrap unchecked, unwrap unchecked. We have no expects. And we have no panics. We no, have no, uh, we have some asserts, just these two. Okay. So nothing in here causes uh, a panic, right? Uh, the only other thing that could cause a panic would be DREFs, um, which would be anywhere where we have these. And those can't panic. Uh, or not DREFs, but indexing yeah that's what russ calls it so literally nothing in here can panic the only thing that can panic in here are those assertions but there's no drefs there's nothing everything in here is checked this is, these are the only sources of panics um which is nice because that fits into my model of moving stuff to uh not having panics okay then we have, after Numa pool, we have local pool. So local pool is the next big one. So a uh, local implementation of a Numa pool, which doesn't require locks or cache coherency pollution. Um, okay. So local pool allocator, which cannot be shared between threads and is used for quick temporary allocations. And there's one thing I forgot to add this to... Uh, um... The accessor. Index. Numa TDB. Shift. Numa size. Numa nodes. Perfect. Done. Done. Numa pool. Here we go. Uh, we have index. Numa, uh, local TDB. Uh, shift and local size. Um, 
local pool, raw memory contents, blah, 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 because blah, 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 because blah, blah, blah. Uh, in use, this is a cell you size, type database, uh, and an indexer. Create a new local pool. This will check. Uh, this will fail to build right now. This will. Well, it will build, but it will fail to run. This needs to be greater than or equal to. No data does not match this size. Blah. Um, no data does not match expected size. Now it will build. Or now it will run. Uh, allocation failure. And that is okay, maybe. I'm not sure yet. Oh, yeah, because we set a really small size. <laughs> yeah. Woo! It's literally an allocation failure. Uh, so this, make sure that the size of this is greater than or equal to local size. Uh, make sure the alignment is identical to max align. Create the uninitialized data. Create the in-use. Create the uh, database. Create an accessor to this local pool, which will create a token, which can be used to access the local pool. The anonymous token ID is created in this closure, which is used to make sure references are used with their associated sources at compile time. Uh, only one accessor can exist at a time to a local pool. This is gated by the mute self this function takes. So the accessor takes a mute self, which means that it is impossible to have two accessors to the same local pool. You can have multiple accessors to the same NUMA pool, right? Because um, this takes a, a ref self, but a, a, a local pool only ever has one accessor at a given time. Having docs for generics, yeah. Uh, okay. So this has, uh, this now adds, when you create the accessor, now you're adding generics, you're adding information, you're adding the NUMA type database, you're adding the NUMA size and the NUMA nodes because you're now joining, uh, you're connecting the local accessor to the NUMA accessor. And you're making a NUMA accessor, uh, you're taking in a NUMA accessor that uses the NUMA ID, uh, that lifetime doesn't matter. Index, the NUMA type database, the shift, the NUMA size, and the NUMA nodes. Then, here's the closure where we create the new uh, lifetime for the local accessor. And the local accessor is ID, NUMA ID, that uh, index, local type database, NUMA type database, the shift, the local size, the NUMA size, and the NUMA nodes. Uh, so when you create an accessor, it wipes the type database clear, so you no longer can access the type database. Um, well, you can, but it's empty. And then it resets the allocator state to zero, so that we'll start uh, overwriting. Um, we'll start overwriting data again. This cannot fail. Uh, we create the local accessor pool, NUMA, and the invariant references here. A light wrapper around a local pool. This assigns the invariant ID lifetime to the pool, which attaches the local pool to a specific NUMA pool, which can be pushed to for permanent object storage when needed. So we have a local accessor ID, NUMA ID, A, indexer, local DB, uh, DB NUMA DB, uh, type and atomics, uh, shift, local size, NUMA size, NUMA nodes. This is the pool that this accesses. We have a mutable reference here. Um, to the pool itself. Then we have a reference to the uh, NUMA pool. Um, and there's multiple reference to that. And that uses different typing, which makes sense. Different sizes, different nodes, that sort of stuff. Invariant lifetimes here for the NUMA pools and the local pools uh, for the ID and the NUMA ID. Then we have the implementations of the local accessor. So let's add documentation now um, to this. Many generic arguments make sad, maybe make struct. Nope, it's not possible. Not expressible in Rust. Sorry. Local TDB. Uh, then we have a NUMA TDB. Uh, we have a shift, we have a local size, we have a NUMA size. It's expressible in traits and types? No, it's not. No, you can't. <laughs> we did it earlier today. It breaks rust. It fundament fundamentally breaks rust. 
it causes the compiler to catastrophically fail. It cannot be done. Yep. 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 Well, you have to use like new bleeding ed edge features and they don't work with lifetimes. They ended up just break t uh, breaking uh, Rust borrow checker. It was imp like it literally broke Rust. I'll try it anyways. I mean, it will work in your case. I'm sure it will. In the simple case, it will absolutely work. It's like the first thing you did on stream. Yeah, we spent about two hours on it. Doesn't work. We tried, but uh, yeah. It it literally cannot be done. Um, local size, NUMA size, NUMA nodes. Da, 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 da. You need to use the like con. What do you need to use? You need to use like the con generic thing, and you need to use the other generic thing, and one of them's like a work in progress feature. And we implemented it all out, and it was really cool, and we were really excited, and then it broke lifetimes. It fundamentally, the borrow checker stopped working. <laughs> it just stopped working. Things that were completely valid before stopped being valid. <laughs> it's very sad. We tried. Um... Can combine all the const generics into one? You can, but then you break lifetimes. <laughs> you can do it. You can write it. My code compiled just fine. But then when I went to use my code from another library, it could not reason about lifetimes, and it literally broke. I, I literally could build this crate. We shifted everything to that, where everything had associated types and associated constants on another trait, you would implement that uh, structure that has all of the generics you want to use. You would pass in that uh, structure, um, which would then fill in all the generic fields, and then it breaks. <laughs> and then lifetimes no longer are possible in Rust. It's great. But it's also a work in pro uh, progress feature, so I think they literally just like can't handle the way I was using it. Then it's a bug. No, it's not a bug. It's not a bug when you have to do bang feature and then you have to do bang allow like partially implemented features. <laughs> I would imagine their partially implemented feature might not perfectly reason about invariant lifetimes <laughs> as I'm using them. <laughs> you cannot do it without like in like uh, what is the fucking name of that thing? I'm not even gonna use un unstable features. You have to. You can't do it with un without unstable features. Good luck. I wish you luck, good sire. Cause it's literally impossible. <laughs> Give code, nope. It's a bug, just an alpha one, yeah. <laughs> you, you can't, you literally cannot do it. <laughs> You can't have constants, like you, you literally cannot do it. Even in the most naive, simple case, you cannot do it. <laughs> right? Can I undo this? Do I have history? Is there history in here? Uh, uh, struct, foo, this requires a T that implements params, right? Then in here, I want to do a foo is a T, uh, a T index, right? Something like that. Uh, traits, params, uh, type index, uh, let's just say type index uh, is copy, right? Fn main. Uh, okay, and then let's go and do a foo of, uh, okay, now we have to do a 
struct uh, r params and then impl params for r params where we define a specific uh, parameter. So we'll say type index is equal to u size, right? Uh, then we'll make a foo is equal to a foo of r params, right? So we're making a specific implementation using r parameters. And uh, what is this? Foo, 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 foo. Is it equal to foo, um, foo this is equal to foo? Uh, let's see. What am I doing? Uh, foo, foo, foo. No, uh, I don't want foo. I need, how is this expressed? How is this expressed? Um, well, we can, we can do this. We can say this requires defaults. Uh, we don't have to do that. We can just do this. Uh, foo. Um, and then we have a foo, which is a five. Right. There we go. Then, um, we need a constant. Um, we need a constant nodes which is a u size. So right, we can do it for indexes. That's probably what you're thinking. That's fine. Now, uh, let's try this. Uh, now I want to do a bar, where a bar is a u8 of slice of t of nodes. Uh, or nodes, right? Um, and then here we'll do a uh, no, uh, const nodes u size is 69, right? Oh, generic parameters cannot be used in const operations. Oh. Oh, interesting. Okay. Well, what if I use nightly? What does nightly say? Oh, it says I can use this new feature that's coming out. Let's try it. Let's try using generic constant expressions so that we can express this. Okay. Okay. Now this works. Uh, oh, wait. We need... Uh, Oh, this is an incomplete feature, and it may not be safe and or can cause compiler crashes. Okay, uh, we also have to include this where clause on this structure. <laughs> Trade params constf and nodes? I don't think that works. But yeah, this is the path we went down. Okay, so let's, let's try your example. Let's try it. Let's see. Maybe it is possible. Const fn nodes u size. Then uh, that's r param, so five. We didn't try this, so maybe this works. You just can't do the const things, but I'm skeptical. Nodes, uh, this yields a u size. Oh, functions and traits can't be defined as constants? Oh, interesting. That's not very good. Huh. Oh, I guess we can't have that be constant. Oh. Well, then I guess that fundamentally doesn't work. <laughs> you can't have const on traits. You cannot do this. <laughs> Like, you, you just can't, you can't have const fns and traits. <laughs> Sorry, Desu. <laughs> we tried. We tried. We tried. <laughs> I know. You got my hopes up a little bit. Because maybe Desu knew better than I did. But, uh, yeah. I'm ditching Rust now. Yeah. Yeah, but we literally ported this entire code base to that const using that uh, new thing, and it broke on the accessors. Like, it, we could not express the lifetimes. We used the exact, we went to explicit lifetimes in the old version where it has all these generics, and we used the exact same lifetimes, and Rust could not validate the lifetimes. It, it just broke the borrow checker. I don't know if it's due to the invariant references or something. I mean, we are doing 
very, 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 very unique stuff with lifetimes, and that is an incomplete feature. <laughs> Back to define nodes. Okay. So, index, local TDB, NUMA TDB, uh, nu uh, shift, local size, NUMA size, NUMA nodes. Uh, the pool, this is an accessor too. Yep, mutable reference to the pool. That owns the only reference to the pool. Reference to the NUMA pool, and then the markers. Get references to a type. So, for all these types, look it up based on the ID of the local accessor. Um, Alec Raw. This will check the alignment. It'll make sure that the alignment doesn't exceed max align and there's only one bit set. Subtraction is safe here. We get the in use. We do a checked add here, um, which uh, that is all checked. Everything's good there and not align mask. Same thing here. We add the size to compute the end. We then make sure that the end fits in an index. We then check if the allocation is in bounds. If it is, then we update the allocator. So we update in use, we set it to the end, which is the, the next byte. After this, we return the base, which we convert from a use size, which we know we can do safely. And then we convert it, adjusted, uh, return the allocation base, um, uh, adjusted to a local index, right? So before we return that index, we convert it by setting local. Setting local will set that top bit. Add a room for allocation. That's a failure. Um, initialize uh, T at offset index. The color must ensure this. Um, An exclusive in the pool. It must be a local index. Top bit is set in the index. Okay, so we convert it to non-negative by clearing the top bit. We then convert that to a U size. We know that it will fit in a U size because that's an up conversion. Get a pointer, slice it down, slice it down. Get unchecked, get the slice that we own. Get that, convert to a mute T, initialize the value. New uninit, create storage for an object in the pool. Uh, uninit numeref here, where T is poolable. Allocate the memory that can hold a T. Uh, return a reference to the object. Easy. Initialize, uh, initialize data, um, consuming the uninit numeref. Um, we pass that in here. We know that that is a valid um, local reference. So that clears local. Um, get the accessor, because now that it's initialized, we can get an accessor, register the type, return. Move an object to the pool, get a reference to it. So this new uninit creates it. If it was successful, it initializes it in the pool. Get a reference to an object in the pool at index. The color must ensure it's this. It also must ensure that. Index must be um, a local index. Uh, top bit is clear in index. Okay, so we clear the top bit, convert it to a U size, convert the index to uh, a U size. Get a pointer, blah, 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 go all the way through, create a reference, uh, an A ref. Get a reference to a value in the pool, so we check local. If it's local, we do self get unchecked. Otherwise, if it's a numa ref, we do self numa get unchecked. And we basically convert all of the numa IDs into local IDs because that works. All right. Um, then, new uh, on an slice elements. We compute that. Once again, we're checking all of these for overflow and problems. Allocate room for everything, including the header. Initialize the header with the number of elements. Initialize a slice here. Um, um, get the number of elements by getting unchecked val index. Determine the size. This is unwrap unchecked. That's okay here. Um, for each element, initialize it. So here we are manually doing uh, um, indexing. So clear that local, uh, clear the local bit, convert it to a U size, um, take that base, add the array offset to the start of the array, add the index, the byte offset for that index, get the value we want to initialize it with, Get the temporary index here. Uh, now we can just do um, index 
from Usai's pool index. And we know that that's safe. Um, it's impossible for that to overflow. Once again, before we ever create an index, we make sure that the end of it is always valid, which means that all of the end elements and bytes can make, you can make indices to all those elements as well. So from Usai's on a pool index, um, which converts it back into an index, then we set the local bit because init unchecked expects that local bit. We actually don't have to set the local bit, but that will get optimized out pretty easily by the uh, compiler. Get the accessor to it because now the whole thing is initialized. Register the type. Create a new slice, new uninit, allocate it, initialize the slice. T has to be poolable. Um, get unchecked. Index must be a local index a uh, top bit must be clear in index okay uh so we get the number of elements by reading at index we then convert that into a u size um convert index to a u size we determine the length here we can do unsafe again this function is unsafe unwrap unchecked uh so we compute that we get a pointer to the uninitialized data. We get the slice, which is array off, layout size. Create the slice of t's and get that slice of t's as the return. Get the slice. If it's local, it's a local. If it's a numa, it's a numa. And then localize. This converts a numa reference from the numa pool into a local pool reference. This is effectively zero cost. It just changes the lifetime. Local pool values can refer to either the NUMA pool or the local pool. Yeah, so this just basically converts a NUMA ID, uh, which is associated with this, into an ID. Because that NUMA pool lives for longer than the local pool, so that's actually safe to do. Um, and that just does a conversion by creating a new NUMA ref, uh, NUMA ref out of nowhere. Um, okay. Um... Now, that's really good. So that code's fine. Then we have prefix slice. A simple wrapper for parsing slices of data prefixed by a length. A slice of PT is which is prefixed by a length T in elements. For example, if T is a U16 and PT is a U8, then the following binary representation is expected. Length U16 followed by U8 times len elements. Uh, prefix slice, so this is just like a little helper. That's the slice itself, which is a numeref. Uh, slices, since it's a unsized type, that has to be stored in behind a reference, similar to a box. This is the type uh, used when deserializing it, not actually used in the structure, just during deserialization, so it's a marker. Um, we implement deref for it, such that we can deref a prefix slice, and it will target the internal numeref. Uh, DRF, we just do ref self.val. Uh, create prefix slice. So then we have these little macro helpers here. So this is a uh, macro to create uh, prefixed slice implementations for various um, uh, length prefixes. Right? So for each of these length prefixes, we create these. Uh, Behave as if this is internal uh, val. Um, yep, so it's a slice of PTs is the internal type for this. We implement poolable for a prefix slice on an LTY PT, where PT is poolable and, uh, and you can deserialize them because we need to be able to deserialize the individual things, the individual fields. Um, and it lives for ID. I can't remember if this was necessary. It probably was. I don't know. I think it might be. Um, so those elements only contain things with ID lifetimes. Uh, PT, that's poolable. Numeref, ID index PT, poolable. Uh, const pool type. That looks good. Uh, yeah, the numeref itself has to be poolable as well. That makes sense. Um, that's implied by this being poolable, but I'm just being very, very, very verbose and strict here. Um, implement deserialize for prefix slices. 
where the fields, uh, where the individual things can be deserialized, all our generics, the accessors, all of this gross shit. Um, I kind of don't like how I'm doing this. Um, uh, hmm. I think we want to tab this in. Probably this. Stream. That returns a self. Jesus Christ. Uh, I don't like this. There we go. Um, get the length as an LTY. So we deserialize an LTY from the stream. We don't actually deserialize it into the pool. We cast it into a U size safely, um, which could be a downsize for a U128. So that we do, and we return an error if that fails. Then we deserialize a slice of len elements uh, with that accessor, and then we deserialize a PT from the stream. This is the index, we're not using it. Uh, and then the length type, phantom data, so this returns the actual prefix slice. So that looks all good. Okay. Then we have a type database, uh, which we don't use that. And then we have parameters, defines the trait. Nope, that doesn't exist anymore. Defines um, traits uh, used to constrain uh, generics. Okay. Converts a, a val uh, usize um, into a uh, self. Um, Making sure the uh, use, uh, making sure the value fits in the uh, self uh, without setting the top bits or overflowing. Uh, clear the top bits from the uh, from the self. Okay. Set the top bit. Um, set the top bits in the self, uh, check the top bits, convert, uh, via truncation from, uh, you size to, uh, self, uh, convert via truncation from a uh, self to a U size. Um, implement implement uh, support for using a given a given type as an indexer. Okay. Uh, yep, so if it's less than this, uh, then it fits, otherwise it doesn't. Clear the top bit, or in the top bit, check the top bit, uh, convert, uh, through truncation, through, convert through truncation, uh, implements, uh, indexer for, um, use sizes and sizes below. Type database used for the local pool, which does not have to be send or sync, allowing for simpler data structures and resizing. Uh, so type database has to implement default. Clear the database of all entries. Insert a given numeref into the database of a given type. Um, and that's any numeref because anything with that constraint. Uh, return indices, yup, of a given T in the database. Type database for a numa pool. Default send and sync. Insert, return. Type database that doesn't store any information and is used to disable type storage, the null type database. Um, clear does nothing, insert does nothing, types returns an empty slice. We also implement atomic for that. Uh, insert does nothing and types returns an empty slice. Should the indexer functions be inline always? They shouldn't have to be. Um, traits should basically always be uh, illegible for... Um, inlining so it shouldn't matter re-export the prefix slice 
Re-expert the procedural macros. Wraparound error. Error types for this module. Node index was not a valid node ID. For example, you created a NUMA pool with support for eight nodes, yet you attempted to get an accessor to the 10th node. Failed to allocate memory, either due to an overflow or an out-of-memory condition. In initializing a member of a slice in a pool returned none, causing the slice allocation to fail. Maximum allowed alignment for allocations. This is required since we are syncing multiple NUMA allocations uh, which have different base addresses. A normal allocator would just align the resulting adders from the allocator, but since we have to sync multiple different bases with the same index, we have to set a maximum allocation and allocate all node memory regions with this alignment such that all offsets across Newman nodes will have the same alignment. Yep. Uh, the holder of node data. This handles our base alignment of max align, which we chose as a reasonable maximum alignment. Anything beyond this cannot be allocated as we cannot ensure alignment beyond our maximum since we're syncing, syncing multiple Newman nodes uh, allocations to have the same alignments. Must be rep or C, so we can assume that the array starts at the zeroth index, which is what will be aligned. The alignment must be kept in sync with max align. 4096, 4096. And, yep, it's just a rep C align 4096 around uh, an array of U8s. The core unsafe trait of the NUMA pool library. Uh, this is unsafe to implement because it requires the user satisfies, satisfies some assumptions. The pool type, type ID, must be unique for all types stored in a given NUMA pool with a given ID. Any type marked poolable must only contain plain old data and or NUMA refs to data stored in the same pool. Poolable types may also be composed of other poolable structures, a la derive. Um, and this is the uh, unique um, identifier for a pool type. For a type. For a given pool. Okay, Desu's got some dumb shit now. What? What is this? <laughs> like that's that's useless. Uh generic const expressions. Yeah, yeah, this is what this is what we did. This is what we did, and it doesn't work. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I'm very aware that you can do that. I mean, it crashes for you? No, it, no, this, no, no, this is just, you can't, you can't do this with, like, invariant lifetimes or something. It breaks the borrow checker. Um, we literally converted our code base to this. We built our entire code base successfully. We got an, a library out of it. We then went to use that library, and there was no way of using that library because all uses of the library caused the borrow checker to fail, regardless of lifetimes. That's the problem. I know this exists. I know it works. I know you can compile things. <laughs> but it doesn't work. I don't know why. It doesn't work with the exact same lifetimes as what works with explicit generics. Like, some, it's an incomplete feature. I'm assuming that it probably means that something is not handled correctly. Um, uh, implements, implements poolable, uh, poolable for slices of poolable data. You can watch those two hours and see if there's something we did wrong. <laughs> um, you can watch that. The, like two or three hours where we fucked around and we rewrote it 50 times. And we compared it apples to apples using explicit lifetiming between two implementations. And one worked and one didn't work. And the one that didn't work was identical for all of its generics, all of its lifetimes, everything. The only difference is we use that like trait. I don't know why. <laughs> um, this is implement uh, poolable for references to poolable data. 
Um, implement poolable for basic types as well as slices and references to those types. Oh, that's not true anymore. Uh, implement poolable uh, for a uh, type. Um, which I don't really need this anymore, do I? Technically, I used it in two places. Okay, so it saves some. Um, implement uh, poolable for a type. Okay. Type ident. Yep, poolable for that. Pool type is the type. Yep. Uh, implement poolable. Implement deserialize. Uh, correct. Uh, got a slice to that data. Uh, if we had enough, update the pointer, get the value as little endian bytes. Implement poolable for all of the base types. Uh, introduce the deserialize trait. Uh, if T implements poolable, deserialize and copy, we can deserialize it directly into a numeref. Um, yes. Okay. Numa ID, local access or that. Access or new, T deserialize that. Yep. I don't think it needs to be copy, actually. Um, then this is, a uh, implementation for, uh, the derive, uh, derive deserialize, uh, procedural macro. Procedural macro. Uh, implement poolable for a given type if all members of it implement poolable themselves. So if every single field is poolable, then we can impl poolable. Nice. Um, so, uh, let's, uh, let's see what Clippy says. Uh, clear and then Clippy. Oh, uh, and let's do this. What do we got? Couple clippies. Redundant field name. Yeah, I... I mean, if Clippy's gonna be a bitch, then sure. But I don't like this, because then I can't have all these things nice and aligned. And it looks shittier. It looks worse. You should add a default on Numa Pool 61. Sure. Um Sure, Clippy. Gotta do the same thing for Numa Pool. We can actually go this way. It's easier. Uh, default for default. My best friend Clippy. Ooh. ooh. Uh, default for this. Yep. Yep. What else we got here? 92, passing a unit value to a function.
That's a stupid one, Clippy. I mean, sure, we can do that. Like, what? Well, that one's fine. Um, God, Clippy, that's, that's a bit much, okay? Yeah, okay, we'll call the function, and then we'll just do okay. All right, fuck off. You know, if that makes you happy, Clippy, you can go eat a bag of dicks. Asshole. Pedantic piece of shit. Uh, self. Methods called new usually don't take a self. I can call it Alec. <laughs> Fucking asshole. Uh, okay, we'll just call that on an it. We'll call this on an it slice. On an it slice. On an it slice. Is Clippy gonna complain about this now? You little bitch. Piece of shit. I hope Clippy drowns of clippiness. Lib. I guess I should call it Alex Slice to be consistent. Alex Slice, an it slice, on an it slice. Sure. Alex Slice. Okay, Clippy, you fucking happy now, you dumb, you dumb piece of shit? Oh, oh, what do you want now, Clippy? <laughs> yeah, it doesn't need to be returned, okay? Yeah, you're right, okay? That's just, that's just objectively correct, okay? Piece of shit. Oh, I don't have a safety section. Woo! Fucking asshole, dude. Um. Safety marked unsafe as, uh, uh, indexers are created internally. Um, for users to use. There you go. Uh, uh, you should never define your own indexer. Okay? Okay, Clippy? You fucking happy now? 39. Okay, there's U8 bits. That's cool. I didn't know that. Okay? Okay, that's kind of cool, Clippy. I still don't like you. I still think you're a little bitch. What now, Clippy? What now? What now are you gonna... Bitch and moan about. Eighty one. Explicit lifetimes given in parameter types where they could be elided. Fuck off. Clippy, fuck off. Yeah, no, you know what, Clippy? In this case, no. Fuck you. Sorry. No. 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 <laughs> yeah, no. This is gonna, we're gonna just allow this. Yeah. Clippy, uh, that's gonna be a no from me, dog. 
because uh, th this clarity is pretty fucking important in this case. Uh... Oh, I have to do it on the implementations? Yeah, that one's better off as is. Yeah, I agree. A fucking cargo clippy. <laughs> uh, safety? Is that the only other thing that's unsafe in here? There you go. Ready? We already had one. Okay. Wow. That pass is missing. We have, everything is documented. Every single item is documented. Fuck yeah. Uh, check or watch. Beautiful. Does this still build? No. Uh, 30. Uh, new. This is Alec. Does changing the name to Alec make me lose all my perf now? Uh, we need, like, I don't know, just a Meg's fine here. Uh, allocation failure. How, though? How, though? Happy Clippy, happy life. Clippy, I don't like Clippy, man. Uh, why does this not work now? <laughs> Alignment stuff could be fucked. That could be fucked. That could be fucked. It could not fit in an index potentially. And we could run out of space. What did I do wrong? Why can't I use a U16? Why can't I use a U16? U8 bits? That is the only thing we changed, isn't it? 